right, welcome back to French Quarter Fest. We are at Spanish Plaza. This is the WWL Love Louisiana tent, and we are so happy to be here. We were with Bon Bon Vivant, Abigo, Abigail, excuse me, Cosio, and Jeremy Kelly, of course, right. with us. Thank you guys so much for being here. Yeah. Because I know it's such a busy day. You play later this afternoon on Esplanade yep. on that stage, which is an amazing stage. Kind of take me through your day leading up to a big fi uh, festival performance because it's such like a buildup. It is. It's a lot of fun. Today was kind of fun because we got a chance to walk all the way across. We live just outside of Esplanade. Perfect. And so just walking through here and seeing everybody like sparking up and having fun. Yeah. And yeah. yeah, it's really, there's a great crowd out there today and the weather's awesome. I mean, the traffic getting here was incredible. Was I was like, oh, it's a pain for people trying to get around the city, but that means great news. That's I think good. last year almost 900,000 people came out wow. for the four days. This is 100% local talent. How important is that to you guys? Yeah, that's a big deal for us, especially the local and the free. It's, it's kind of a really beautifully curated uh, lineup of bands that live and work in New Orleans, in the French Quarter, all around here. So I love that. And so many people come from out of town to see this homegrown talent and then they remember and then they kind of follow you guys around yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. we have a lot of people who say I, first time i saw you was at french quarter fest and it's been years that we've been playing it maybe about 10 years and so that's that's awesome i mean you can't beat that 10 years yeah wow so yeah we started at the little stage by the boat and kind of you know we ping pong around different stages every year so what's your favorite thing in 10 years first of all it's just been incredible to see the attendance grow but what's your favorite part of this festival I think just just uh, a lot of festivals change over time, mm -hmm. and we go and play a lot of festivals and watch that happen. And I love that this festival is staying kind of homegrown. Yeah. And you know, it's like local indie bands that we play with on Friday night at BJ's or whatever yeah. are legends. here on the stages. Yeah, next to legends and big and the hot Irma eight. Thomas. You know, all of these people are wow. Thomas. Yeah, it's, it's awesome. It's a really good collection of music, New Orleans musicians, I think. It really is, and yeah. it's cool to see how many artists are in different bands, too. I'm like, wait, I just saw you on yeah. that stage, now you're over here, and they're kind of bouncing around, so yeah. you can see them in all their elements. That's I, true. We, uh, we, we play a little bit with Charlie Halloran, the Tropicalis, and, or Tropicalis, and looking at his schedule. Oh, yeah. Oh, he played in, like, ten bands, I think, over the next <laughs> three days. He, he's never We're working. That We're working, down. Yeah, which it's is amazing. good. Everybody's working. When you... When you walk to and from stages you see your friends on all the stages it's, yeah. it's very very local in that way yeah that's what i was gonna ask do you get along with most other bands oh and yeah musicians? we oh, yeah. all kind of um you know share players and it's a really uh it's actually a very small community when you when you get down to it especially yeah. we're a frenchman street band we played last night and you know you know each other and you see each other across the street at tba spotted cat you think oh hi guys nice. so yeah let's start from the beginning if people haven't seen you play here for 10 years start with how you got the name well i i knew the word bon vivant it's french it means to live well and it kind of uh, refers to a person who likes to enjoy a luxurious lifestyle. They like to drink and eat and dance and be merry. And I thought for an ethos, that's a really good idea as a band. It's essentially just living well. And uh, we added the extra bone. It means good, good time. So <laughs> double down. Perfect. Commitment. Yeah. <laughs> and you guys are actually married. How does that work out? Great. It's a wild Perfect. time. It's a wild huh, time. <laughs> we, we get, we got, we've gotten really good at spending lots of time in small places. That's it. Yeah. 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 Tell me about your other bandmates that are already out there getting the sound check in and ready. Yes, we got Deacon Marquin, is an incredible drummer. He's going to be on the drum kit today. Uh, we call him our little Buddha. He's very, you know, quiet, soft spoken. Unshakable. But yeah, just like look to, look to Deacon to see what's going on. And we got Jason Jerzok on the sousaphone and electric bass. Okay. A lot of energy from that guy. He's a kid kaboom. And on a trombone today, we have Ellis Cyberling, just a lovely tall drink of water. Great dude. <laughs> nice. <laughs> <laughs> and you're the saxophonist. Yeah, yes. I, I play saxophone. And we're going to have a special guest uh, out, uh, an MC called uh, Black Soul, that's coming to, up right. for a couple of tunes, which right. we're really excited about. Yeah. Yeah. Any, can you give us any more than that? Or We've been kind of playing with him for years at Negril. Uh, he, si he sips up and does these incredible off-the-cuff rhymes that are just, I have to 
try not to stare at him while he does it because I gotta look cool, but <laughs> he's just riffing. Act like you've been there before, yeah. but you're really like, oh my god. And I think I sat down and wrote this, but he's just going off the cuff, and it's just an incredible art form to watch on stage. Yeah, we were playing, we were playing with him a little. He was jamming with us a little bit last night, and so we were like. You should come tomorrow. Yeah. We'll do the, do this again. See, so, I love so he's how coming that and works hanging out with here. us. That yeah. is so amazing. Yeah. And you, of course, write the songs. Yeah. But yeah. you kind of explain to me the process. Like you write it, but then you come together as a band to put it all together. That's right. It's kind of like bare, bare bones. I sort of think of it like I I put the bones together mm -hmm. of a skeleton, and then as a band we sort of put the skin and the hair and the whole. We build it up from there. As a, we're definitely a a little democracy of musicians, so, it's yeah. So cool, though. It's really fun because uh, Abby will come with an idea, uh, the chords and lyrics, and kind of a story, you know, something that she's wanted to express. Yeah. And, you know, sometimes it comes out of the music room as a ballad, mm. and it's this beautiful ballad, and then we start to kind of play through it, it becomes this up-tempo dance song. Yeah. <laughs> but still, all the words and the yeah. melodies are, are ballad-like. I don't know, it's really fun, it's the fun to of, see how, what they end up to yeah, be. Yeah, I mean, that's collaboration. Is it, And you, I like to, to think I know what the song is and then give it over to the band and watch it become an entirely different thing. Oh. So it's, but sometimes you could probably get two songs out of it. Yeah. Though. You're like, yeah. this is what it really meant and this is what it turned into and they're both beautiful. And we actually, <laughs> over the years, we play some of these songs entirely differently. Huh. Uh, we'll say, oh, tonight is this version or tonight's gonna be this version of that song. So it's it's a, it's a really a, a joy. Yeah. <laughs> Do you, uh, you know, I'm sure you get that feeling like, oh, this is gonna be a big hit. Is it normally, is your feeling normally right? Hmm. I've been wrong every time. I've been. <laughs> no, that's every like when time. somebody tries to predict the football game. I'm like, I don't know. Yeah, yeah. I mean, sometimes I, you know, I have to say, being that he's my husband, he gets, he hears them all. And sometimes I'll be on the, you know, the living room floor, and I'll say, hey, what about this one? And one time he did say, that is, that's an incredible song. And then it is one of our headlines. You know, our, our hits. So you were right, baby. I got one you got time. There. You and this is on tape, so that's fantastic. There we go. It's proof. Yeah, it's funny. Sometimes um, we'll get in the sp studio, especially, you get really attached to a song and really excited about it. And then, you know, you kind of, once you record it and release it to the universe, you don't get a say on who likes what and yeah. what people would like to hear and what people respond to. And it's fun. Some, some of the ones that kind of fall off a little bit and then unexpected songs that work for you really well and people yeah. want to hear them and they, I mean, like man I didn't see that one coming on how that resonates with a fan that That's you right. have no idea like yeah. maybe they're going through that like, yeah. you have yeah. no idea and it just really hits them yeah, yeah. Ta talk to us about your genre because you are so unique your sound I feel like it's rooted in storytelling it's so New Orleans but it's got so many other things too. oh I love that Leslie yeah the, uh, I, I think we kind of early on I love to write songs I love to tell stories and it's a little bit harder to find um, a song that isn't isn't my narrative necessarily I'm just I'm, I'm inspired by a story and I want to tell someone else's iteration of their life and sure. so that's kind of where the bones is it's just what's a good story and then um, we build it together and sometimes it'll be you know Deacon goes what about four on the floor and then it goes to a different direction and so but genre's a hard one these days yeah um, I feel like and it's you probably so, don't want to be in one. And that's kind of, as I've grown up, I've been like, you know what? Instead of being able to rattle off my three-minute elevator pitch, I just want people to listen to the music. <laughs> and yeah. instead of telling them a genre that they might say, I don't like that. Uh -huh. I mean, I think the music speaks for itself. But, sure. you know, some of the fun ones we've got is a cabaret. Creep cabaret was one. <laughs> I, I like that. Yeah. So I don't know. What, I mean, what do you... Yeah, um, I, think, I think with the all the different kinds of instruments that exist here that you can pull from, like yeah. sousaphone instead of bass guitar, all the horns, uh, accordion, all of these, or, or washboard, all of those sounds are normal here. And so when you leave here and go on tour with all those things, even though we're kind of just a rock band, I think, folk rock, folk indie, folk rock, whatever all those things it. are, um, <laughs> <laughs> with the with the cool colors that you can paint with here musically, yeah. you just I get to transform into whatever you want. Speaking and that's fun. Of, speaking of which, because everybody in New Orleans loves you, but you tour all over. What's going on right now? Like, are you coming out with an album? Are you yes. touring? What? Yes, we're actually putting uh, some. We're putting singles out right now. We're building up a to, to release a single in the springtime, maybe the end of the month, maybe. Nice. Yeah, there yeah, I soon. say okay. it on air, okay. and uh, we'll be doing that 
every month or so until we release our full album this summer. Okay. So wow. yeah, we uh, it's a new game, it's a new day for music. It's everybody's you know doing it differently these days, and so we thought well singles are lovely because I like to work on the song right then and there and build it to completion. Right. So that instead you're doing a little bit all over. I like to sort of present this song as as its entirety and say, here we go, this is that one, so. It's yeah. so interesting getting in your brain for a minute. <laughs> okay, I know you said you've been doing French Quarter Fest for 10 years. How long have you guys been together and how did this band even form? I mean, did was the relationship first and then? Yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah. We, we uh, had a musical relationship for two days and then it became a regular relationship <laughs> pretty, pretty quickly. Um, I think both of us really respected each other's musicians. I mean, the first time I heard Abby sing her own songs. I was just like, I can't believe what's coming out of this person. It, it's, it's really, so it's really sweet. incredible. And so, I ran up there and bought her a drink <laughs> and, fu and, and fussed a lot. What kind of drink? <laughs> it was a rum and coke. A rum and I was coke. a younger nice lady. Classic. Okay. <laughs> okay. Yeah. And then we started playing music together and writing songs. We made an album pretty early on. And yeah. Um, Nearly 20 years. So. Yeah, then wow. with this new iteration. You guys look so young. Oh, thank you, baby. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, with this iteration, it's been fun to just kind of, it went from folk Americana into funky horn bands. Yeah. And kind of now, it, whatever she writes, we play. And yeah. it turns out whatever it is, which is fun. Jason so you like, say, oh, what yeah. genre do you like? Okay, we can do something with that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just yeah. Whatever. yeah she's I mean, like, I want to do a country tune. Cool. It gets to be limited by genre when you're writing songs. I feel like I I, I don't necessarily want that that Not boundary. Sure. Yeah, sure. and uh, you know, uh, answering your question, Jason always says, "Well, it's New Orleans music. It's about the lives we're living as New Orleans. A lot of these songs are literally about our lives as New Orleanians, and then it's got instrumentation that's known locally, a sousaphone and horn. So we say New Orleans music. Yeah." <laughs> We got a boat coming through. I love it. Oh wow, all kinds of boats. This is just such a great atmosphere. I'm glad we. Yeah. Uh, Spanish Plaza is Field now trip. part of the French Quarter Fest. Yeah. So you guys are playing tonight at 4:30 to 5, Esplanade Stage. I do want to talk real quick. You're making your own outfit. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I she up so <laughs> many hats, and you do it all well. True. I, uh, you know, as 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 New Orleans, we costume, and uh, I started getting better on the sewing machine. So I, nice. I thought, well, of all things. I couldn't find clothes I really loved in the stores necessarily, so I tear them up or make them all. And so, yeah, I made a little something for today. What's the color palette? It's silver sparkles, nice. <laughs> some sequins. Okay. Yeah. It's going to be beautiful. I can't wait Thank to see you, it. Leslie. Anything else you want people to know? We will see you at 4.30 at the Esplanade in the Definitely. Shade till 5.30, babies. Come out and dance in that grass. Abby and Jeremy, thank you so very much. Thank, thank you. you. It's good to see thank you. Thank you for hanging out with us before you perform. We really appreciate yeah. it. Absolutely. Hi, I'm John Boutte, here with my friends Greg Rowe from and Mia X. We're getting ready for French Quarter Festival, which features over 300 musical performances on more than 20 stages. Chevron is proud to support the festival, a celebration of New Orleans music, culture, and cuisine. It all takes place April 11th through 14th. Get the schedule at FrenchQuarterFest.org and download the free app today. Don't miss French Quarter Festival from WWL. Sharice Gibson coming to you live from the Love Louisiana stage, right next to the Jack over here at Spanish Plaza, and it is a French Quarter Fest 2024, and it is a gorgeous day. The weather is perfect, complete opposite to what it was yesterday. I am here with one of my favorite DJs. Well, he really is my favorite DJ, DJ Raj Smooth, and I know that a lot of y'all know who DJ Raj Smooth is. How you doing today? I'm doing great. Okay, so now you're not just out here enjoying the festival. Oh, no. We were just having a conversation about the DJ uh, stage that they the have Posigen now. The Posigen DJ stage going yeah. on right in the Spanish Plaza. Yeah, you got that. You were involved with that. Yeah. I helped it out, you know, helped to uh, curate some of the DJs and, you know, put the whole idea together. So, you know, I'm, I'm just happy to be a part of it with French Quarter Fest that we could bring some hip hop to the uh, to the scene out here. You know what? And if, if guys don't know you, the younger people may only see you at Ace. Younger people may see you DJing, mm -hmm. whether it's at the Pelicans games, whether it's at the Saints games. You are literally the DJ of New Orleans. You are everywhere. But you have a storied history. I mean, we go all the way back to Cash Money. 
I mean, even before that, like right. that was that was a decade in. You right. know, like I started in junior high school. Shout out to all the Livingston Seagulls <laughs> out there. Uh, you know, but through junior high school, high school, college at Dillard, right. um, it's, it's, it's been my life, it's been my career. Like I've, I've never had a day job. Right. So, you know, it's, it's been uh, an amazing experience and, you know, 30 plus years doing it. And, you know, I'm just happy that I can still get on stages and talk to people, you know, yeah. like this. Well, so. you know, I love the fact that I can see you everywhere. I mean, my, you know, I always give you a hug when I see you at A's. I always recognize when, you know, when Raj Smoove is playing. Trust me, he always gets the room turned up, whether it's a game or anything, you know, just you have a particular touch. What is your secret? Is there like a Raj Smooth sort of DJ secret you have? It's just, just paying attention. That distinguishes you? Paying attention to the room and, and making sure, you know, you play the right song at the right time. Right. You know, like there's a, a lot of different, you know, vibes, genres, energies, um, and just, you know, trying to find that, that middle ground and get everybody in there having a good time and just loosened up. Well, I know that right now there's a big demand for different genres of music. So you have Afrobeats that's really getting hot right now. Hot. It's getting a lot of people out there on the scene and on the dance floor. How do you keep up with all of it? Do you just kind of pay attention to what's on the charts? Um, I don't really pay attention to the charts. Like, I, again, I pay attention to the people. You right. know, like, what might I hear somebody playing when they're driving down the street? You know, what is it that... Uh, folks come and request, like, what are the people that I'm around listening to? You know, what are some things that I happen to come across that I like? You know, because right. a lot of times the songs on the radio are not the records that go all the way up. Really? So, you know, just finding those, you know, the little niche songs that you play and people like, yo, like, I didn't know anybody else knew about that. Like, right. I appreciate you for playing that for me. Right. So, you know, being able to make those personal connections even within a larger crowd I think it's very important. I have to say, as a person who sometimes is on the club scene in New Orleans, the club scene in New Orleans is typically different uh, mm -hmm. than the club scene in other cities. Mm -hmm. So what is it different for you? Like when you play and you DJ here, what gets the crowd moving here versus someone in Dallas or someone in New York City? I mean, every region kind of has its own style of music. Right. You know, like we have bounce music and once you kind of get like 30 miles outside New Orleans, you got like ratchet, you know what I'm saying, right, music right, and, right. Uh, you know, the jig stuff, you know, Texas has their own style, Atlanta has their own style. So, you know, a lot of that just comes from the culture and from the experience. Like a lot of the music we rock to down here with the bounce music has a lot of, you know, jazz and brass band right. influences in it with the rhythms and all the second line stuff. So, you know, playing music that speaks to the audience that you're in front of. So even when I would travel and you know be out of town doing stuff, what's hot in those cities? You know right. what I'm saying? And knowing what those people react to, because it's not uh, like I'm there to play what people want to hear, right? So that they can have a good time. Do you typically find yourself now? You're how many how many years in the game? Oh my goodness. Thirty four. Thirty four years in the game. Do you feel like you have served now as a mentor to other younger DJs that are coming up? Because I I've, see a lot I've, of people in your way. I've definitely tried to uh, reach back. You know, saying like my dad um, is a is a jazz musician and composer and uh, an educator. You know, what I'm saying so. It's like when when I was little, little, and people would be coming to the house and he would be like schooling them and teaching them. And you know, if, if there's nothing else I've tried to do to father, follow in my father's footsteps was, right. you know, to, uh, to be a mentor in that regard and pass on the knowledge and the things that I've learned to the next generation. Well, you told me earlier today that you had some involvement with the, for the DJs mm -hmm. now. Um, you are also on the for yes. Prince Quarter Fest. So how did this conversation come about? Why did you think having your own support? I mean, you know, I, I've been doing my thing um, in for a while, and uh, French Quarter Fest has always, my experience from dealing with them for the short amount of time, are very interested in expanding experience and, right. and catering to different audiences to be more inclusive. Right. So, um, you know, definitely try to reach a, a younger generation and trying to figure out some cool ways to do that. And, uh, you know, I guess the idea had been floating around for a while so you know me coming to the mix it was like yo let's let's bounce this off a ride i was right. like we definitely need to do that and it's, it's came to fruition now i think the conversation about inclusivity and all activities within jazz fest whether it's french quarter fest jazz fest armstrong festival whatever it is i think that's something that's been at the forefront and so having people like you at the table on the planning stages of this it seems like it came to fruition what it is wanted 
I'm, I'm just happy I get to help put my people on. Right. You know what I'm saying? Like, yo, like, cut my people a check. Like, right. let's go. You know, put them on the platform. Uh, let's get every chance to shine. And, you know, that helps to expand the whole experience year right. year after year. Is there something this year that you're looking forward to? I know that you are DJing everywhere and you're consistently busy all the time. You just, he just ran down his schedule to me for this weekend, and I don't even see how he's going to give room for sleep. What do you look forward to this year? Um, I don't know. Like, I, I think what, what I was excited to see has already happened. Like, everybody is in place. You know, like, the opportunity has been given um, and people whose names are on the schedule that haven't had a chance to, you know, like, they might have been out here as a fan or a customer, kind of, like, see what was going on. Right. But now, you know, they have a chance to officially involved as a part of the weekend, um, deliver that experience you know, to the fans out here. So, you know, having, you know, like my homie DJ Hallaback sent me a text earlier today, he was you know, like, I'm done, you up next. Like, <laughs> I feel good, you know what I'm saying? Like, I feel like I played a part in, you know, making sure he got an opportunity to be on the stage and do his thing. You know, yeah. I'm doing it tonight. Tomorrow, um, I, the artist is gonna be out here, Dan, you know what I'm saying? I help get her plugged in. And right. uh, Hot Sizzle's gonna be out here with TV Brass Band. Everybody get your zone. Sunday. <laughs> Bible for Icy Girl and Poppy will be out here on the Gumbo um, little set. Yeah. Uh, Flag Boy Gives and the Brett Hollis is going to be playing. Oh. Water Sea is going to be out here doing their thing. So it's like being able to be involved with all of my people out here and help to contribute. Like, that's that's what I look forward to and that's right. what I'm happy about. And that is why we need people like you at the table so that we can get more of our people on the scene. Yeah, we, we need to be here. You know, we represent. Okay, so tell me this. You're going to get on the stage. You're getting on the stage this weekend. I'm, I'm going on in like 10 minutes. Oh, he's no, no, he's going on in 10 minutes. Clock. You, <laughs> you have 30 more minutes. Okay, it's 5 o'clock. Okay. He's going into 30 minutes. But when you get up there, when you typically play a festival, obviously different from playing a club, give me the DJ seek because I, uh, my friend DJ Vintage, I love him very much, uh -oh. but I always like joke with him when he's playing, like, I can easily miss. And he said, you wish. How do you develop the skills? I don't even know how to play the next song on my playlist. It's just just the practice and experimentation. Like Is every there anything time, that went bad for you? My first gig. Your first gig? What my, was that my like? First, my first DJ gig, um, it was a 13-year-old birthday party uh -huh. for my friend Carmen. who used to live across the, uh, the, the, the apartment from me um, when I used to live in Georgetown in the east. Oh, yeah. So yeah. she moved. Uh, you know, they moved on up. They got a crib out of east over. Yeah. And, you know, I was a partner, so it's like I DJ'd her 13th birthday party. She went to Fantasy Williams. Right. And, you know, I'm young. I'm four years old. And I think everybody likes the same music I like. <laughs> when I go on this party, like, I'm playing Tribe Called Quest and yeah. Brand New V, all of this backpack, hip-hop, New right. York, East Coast stuff. Um, you know, I thought it went well. But then the, the next year, this girl, we just happened to be talking um, at 35, you know, begins a couple of days back to school. She was like, um, oh, you DJ Carmen Party. And I was like, yeah. She was like, I heard you can't DJ. Oh, and I was no. Like, <laughs> like, oh. like just, ah. <laughs> so that was kind of, you know, the, the early dawn on me that everybody does not like what I like. Right. And I need to find out what the people here so that they could be like, yo, we had the greatest time ever. Right. So like for that, you know, I was off to the races. Like, let me see what, you know, then, I, then it was kind of like a science thing for me. Like, let me check this out. Let me right, see right. if this works and find out what I wanted. And then, um, you know, when I was at Dillard University, uh, like second freshman year, I started doing like all the events. So the basketball games, the parties, the banks, like, oh, we just need some music in the cafeteria. Raj, come set up. Right. So I really kind of had a laboratory to figure out uh, people wanted to hear, how they wanted to hear it. Um, you know, figuring it out now, like every every gig is practice for the next one. Right, all right, so be you on which stage? The Posigen stage in 30 minutes, five right. o'clock. So if you're drive fast, get here, we, we're gonna do it. All right, good crowd out here, but it's not too, too packed, so people can still get out here today, so you can Dave Ross move. There should be some always. parking on the street somewhere. Yeah, I'm Possibly. sure there is. I love you so much. I've I appreciate always appreciated it. you. And appreciate what you're doing, not only what you're bringing in the culture, into places where we don't typically see it. That's excited. All right, so we know that you got to go. DJ Rosmoo, thank you so much.
Hi, I'm John Bucci, here with my friends Greg Rolfram and Mia X. We're getting ready for French Quarter Festival. Features over 300 musical performances on more than 20 years. Chevron is proud to support the festival, a celebration of New Orleans music, culture, and cuisine. It all takes place April 11 through 14. Get the schedule at FrenchQuarterFest.org and download the free app today. Don't miss French Quarter Festival from WWL. Today it's the first year Lou Fu and will be a food vendor at French Quarter Fest. Being there is a really big honor. They're coming out the gate swinging. This is going to be the key. This is Indian Chinese influence to our cuisine. This is something we are doing out of the box, not in our regular menu. This is our Kima Samosa. This is the ghost, is what gave us our trademark. This is the butter chicken. We have fed a lot of people around the city. So I think this is going to be a different experience, but we are definitely strong, definitely ready for this, yeah. It's, it's insane. It's the fourth year at the Festival Force, so they already know what to expect. Like, we literally have a line the end time we're open, and that's the award-winning chicken sandwich. That chicken's top of mind for many, but they're bringing back a crowd favorite, too. That fish sandwich. We slice these cucumbers ourselves, marinate them, everything made fresh. We made more than enough pies for anybody who wants to enjoy any century-old recipe. Seasoned French Quarter Fest veterans, Mrs. Meat Pies will be back again for the 40th year in a row. They'll have some festival exclusives, too. Crab and artist, and then the shrimp and I do is kind of like a Cajun gumbo roux. Food is out of everything they do, but it's the people that keep them going. Seeing my fam, uh, fest family and friends that I've built relationships with. It's kind of like a reunion every time we do this. To meet more new people, that is the most biggest excitement for me. Leah McNeil, UWL, Louisiana. Welcome to WWL Plus, where you are streets to happy French Quarter Fest, the kickoff of French Quarter Fest. You can hear the music here behind us. We're in the Spanish Plaza at the Love Louisiana WWL stage. We're having so much fun today. We've had a ton of people already come out with some grizzes, but we get to be the very first of the interview here at the brand new Love Louisiana stage. So want to welcome Zita here. Thank you so much. Thanks, thanks for joining us. Absolutely. We're really excited to have you. Just go around and just introduce yourself. Sure. Um, I'm Michael Mullins. I'm the lead singer and trombone player. I do weird things with the trombone, and I'll leave it at that. <laughs> I'm Bradford Lewis. I'm lead and only guitar, I guess. Michael plinks away at the guitar. Yeah. <laughs> Um, Dylan Cayuet, bass, also the loudest guy on stage, predominantly. Nice, nice. I'm Kai Malanson. I play drums, and I don't do weird things with my trombone. It's good to know. Thank you for sharing, even oversharing. Excited to have you guys here. I want to start for the first question that I asked you earlier, because the way we got the name is very interesting. I'm always intrigued when we find out how a band decided to choose what they're going to go by. That's everything, right? That's your that's your logo, it's your brand, it's how identity, people know yeah. you, it's your yeah. identity. And y'all's is very fun. So who wants to share that story? So we started off as Next Gen 5 uh, with a Roman numeral. Okay, wait, you didn't tell me that part. <laughs> yeah, so there was a lot of that confusion there because everyone thought we were Next Gen V. And okay. we, we, were look, we were looking for a name change, and there was this shop in Mandeville where we were going to high school, Zetas, that sold like a bunch of crystals and cool t-shirts and jewelry and stuff really like that. Really earthy and holistic. Yeah, we okay. used to go there all the time, and we just decided to name the band after that. We eventually got the blessing, and now Zeta, Hurst, the owner of the shop, is like renting her one of her houses too, man. We've been writing the record there and doing all that stuff, so yeah. I love it. Very, very homegrown, very local. Yeah. Oh, Grassroots roots roots there. Full yeah. circle thing, yeah. Shout I love out that. Next to V. Shout out. Mega shout <laughs> That's out. the throwback. Uh -huh. yeah. that's, that's your throwback Sir. Thursday. That's cool. <laughs> and so when we all meet, how did you guys get together? Um, I guess we, it kind of, everybody trickled in, but it was, um, I guess Dylan and I are the are oldest original members to the Next okay. Gen 5 sort of uh, family there. But uh, we, we, a friend of mine, I went to NOCA for high school, and a friend of mine 
from there introduced me to Bradford, and he was like, this guy did Master of Puppets by Metallica at lunch today, and it sounded identical <laughs> to the record. Like, I gotta hear it, so... At lunch, we brought okay. Him in we brought him in to jam. <laughs> Dylan's had met Kai at a restaurant he was working at, actually, and was like, you know, he was like, yeah, I found this drummer from Japan, and I was like, screw it, yeah, you know. Yeah. And then and then he blew me away the first time I heard him, yeah. so... Yeah, and then the rest is history. Next gen quality. Next gen quality. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Next gen quality. V. There you go. So we have the the origin stories. I like the dad joke. It's good. We have the origin stories here, and how you guys met. Your sound is also. We're talking about this homegrown, very local. It's very, very, uh, almost like throwback New Orleans because it has that like deep brought also some funk bluesy and I would say it's something that a lot of people feel maybe that sound has kind of faded away and you guys are bringing it back in a really cool way yeah yeah I'd say that it also helps when you have George Porter as a mentor that's uh, been helping you out for years yeah, there you go. yeah, yeah. I think people like that we've been in the scene our whole life like all of us have been in the scene Kai mm -hmm. grew up in Japan and he's lived there until he was 18 but he's coming here for jazz fest every year doing stuff like that like all of us cool. were bred in this environment of like like you said george porter you know, i grew up down the street from mike lemler his keyboard player uh ivan neville the neville like they've been very nice to us like you also have it in your family i have it yeah, yeah. my dad's obviously a new orleans musician himself and so and his as well his, yeah. are, his are new orleans musicians as well so it's like we took those influences, but we grew up listening to classic rock music, all of us, and so that is like unequivocally the sound, but all of the influences that span our entire lives sort of inform that. And so, uh, and then it culminates in whatever the heck we do, so it's well, fun. It's weird too, because like I, I did a lot of stuff with Harrison and you did know because so we like have jazz yeah. background mixed in too a little bit. Yeah, that has funk, blues, I mean that's kind of where the roots come from. Like I listened to a lot of Alan Tucson when I was younger as well, he's like a blues master, like Dylan, like you said, like doing jazz and funk stuff with a lot of people and then Kai just being in music his whole life, I mean that's, it, yeah, so it kind of, it spans everybody and yeah, all, our, all of our influences we wear them on our sleeve. That's really cool. And this is, is this the second year you guys are performing at Jazz? Or yes. French yes. Quarter Fest? Second? Okay. Yes. So I'm jumping ahead here. Different uh, different <laughs> yeah. festival. So, yeah. <laughs> well, I have been up since very early. Yeah. So you guys are performing a second year. Um, you know, somebody who we're saying from Japan and then, you know, coming all the way to New Orleans to attend all these different festivals. What does it mean to be able to then be on the stage performing and doing what you love? Oh, it's definitely an honor and a privilege. Uh, well, my dad is orig originally from this area, so I wasn't full foreigner to this land. Military uh, family? No, is actually that? not. My okay. dad just kind of met a Japanese, my mom, in the West Coast, actually, and then moved over there. Grew cool. up there, but we would visit here. Uh, every time he would come down, it's usually either jazz season or festival season or Saints, like just fall season. So just growing up, I was already immersed in this. Be able to play like French Quarter Fest, uh, mm -hmm. it's, it's a great feeling. So. Yeah, and to, to come back for year two, obviously like the first year is always like really exciting. Something new, you get the jitters out, you get the excitement, you get to be on the stage, but you, everybody always wants to come back and do it bigger and better. Yes. And how are you and guys going to do it? it's not rain this year. We were on yeah. Saturday yeah, last sure, year, yeah. we got oh. rained out, our wind was flooded ankle. Today is gorgeous. Yeah, it's yeah. beautiful. It's a cool day. Yeah, and so I mean, last year the other thing was like, it was just very nerve-wracking, I think, because this festival means a lot to us. And like, like all like, this was my first gig ever as a musician. Wow. It was French Quarter Fest. Get up here. Yeah. That's a pretty big first gig. Yeah, it was. I was terrified. I didn't sound very good, but uh, you know, I, <laughs> that was my first I love gig. Honesty. Still don't sound very good. Nobody Working should ever look up my first anchoring reel. Yeah, I get it. I <laughs> yeah. get it. Oh well, yeah, yeah. I'm just hoping I don't rip my pants this year. Yeah, that did happen too. That did happen, yeah. Wow, last year it was eventful. It was eventful. Okay. I think it would be, but... And yeah. so and so you didn't feel like maybe it was your best ever. Yeah. But yeah. now you've had a ton of gigs and you've had a ton of practice. And I'm sure you guys now feel way more gelled and ready for this year. Yes. Yeah. Because yeah. if you don't, I'm so. hyping you up either way right now. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> now you want to do a good well, job. Hopefully we're going to sound better and have the right amount of holes in all of our pants. There you go. <laughs> how did we? How did you rip your pants? Uh, excited? It was. It was like this full corduroy purple suit that I. Okay. And it was a little too tight for me to be wearing. And we got off the stage and I realized that my bright blue underwear was showing from under the purple. It's rocking, baby. It's yeah. Okay. It's We're good. good. I, I was like, mm, I, I was getting a nice. I was like wondering where okay. it was coming from. You know? Suddenly it's figured it out. It was all planned. <laughs> 
Right. He it says it like it's an accident. Okay. He's, that's it was a publicity stunt. Yeah. Okay. Deal. And so, are we doing a wardrobe change before you get the stage? A little bit. I think we're kind of kind of in stage clothes. Mostly, I'm mostly changing my though. shirt. They were okay. getting on me earlier, but yeah, I'm gonna change my shirt to go. I think. Because yeah. you will sweat to death in that. I will. Yeah, I'll have to take this shit off. It's not sure. too hot right now, which is nice. Yeah, actually, I'm. Su I was surprised how cool it turned out to be today. This morning it was freezing. Right now, sun when it comes out and the wind kind of stops, it's great. So yeah, it's, it's, you know, it's day. festival season. Yep. We'll put up with anything, but it's yep. always nice when the weather cooperates. Yep. So what are you guys looking forward to this year, being back on that stage? Well, we have Evan on sound this year. We, yeah. we had Evan on sound last year. We did? Oh, I didn't realize that. I'm sorry. <laughs> Yeah, last year was quite a doozy. As a lot of twins. I, um, I think I think l this year we're most looking forward to debuting a lot of new material we've written for this next album. Yeah, let's talk about that because it's a nine-track album. Well, the next, the, the first one was this next one. I don't even, I don't even know. Oh, you guys have one a one that I'm we're, not even aware of. We're writing, yeah, yeah. Oh, we're, we're working on it now. Okay. Yes. Yeah. And there's a live record that we're going to be releasing our first single from, on 420. And, Very cool. Uh, from the Maple Leaf. From the Maple Leaf. We're doing. It. Show there. Wow, so that's right around the corner, okay? Yes, and so uh, we'll shout that out on stage today and, and sort of uh, make some posts on it and everything. But, like, yeah, that's all this stuff that all this new material that we've got kind of stocked because our last record was 2021 at this yeah. point. Yeah, wow. so we've been sitting on this for a minute and we've been writing a lot of new stuff very recently as well. So it's like fresh. collaborative when it comes to writing, or does somebody very, sort of take lead? Very, yeah? yeah, someone will bring like an idea or something. Uh, it's nine times out of ten it doesn't start with a full song written by no. one person or yeah. someone's idea then we'll bring it into the room and uh, by the end of hopefully we walk out with a song you know most of the time we do but then the time starts like we keep adding more and more and then it ends up being like a fifth minute song or something like that <laughs> which we do have and we got to remember it you know yeah, yeah. that's fair and uh, yeah yeah you put it well <laughs> yeah. The one thing I, we are probably looking forward to is this. last year, because it got rained out, we had a shorter set, so we actually get yeah, to true. play a full is going to be very cool. A 70 minute set, too. It's it's last year like, we did 30. We did 35, yeah. Half yeah. Minutes, so. so we get double set. a lot set. of time. Yeah. To, to, will you have some of that new music today, or are you guys still in the process of putting that together? Oh, we definitely have A little have bit. It. Of, yeah. A little bit, okay. It's a mixture. I think we got two or three brands that, um, yeah. Yeah, mm -hmm. that aren't released anywhere. And then some old stuff, and then we have some cool covers planned as well. Some blues stuff, some um, classic rock stuff, so it'll be cool. That's awesome. Yeah. Are you guys looking forward to checking anybody else out for French Quarter Fest? Oh, yeah. We're going to we're gonna walk around. Yeah, Rebirth's playing after us, yeah. so that'll be a fun one to catch. Ivan's playing. I'm going to check him out. Yeah, yeah, we're going to go, to, yeah, we're gonna yeah, go yeah, check Michael out with his band. Yeah. I'll be over at Abita stage with Bonaram at 450 after we finish, so okay. sprint that way. So you gotta run from one to the yeah. other, okay? And um, when it comes to anybody who's trying to connect with you guys or check you out, I know you have another person tonight too, yes. mm -hmm. and so you can shout that out. And then also just you know how people if they want some more of your music or you know connect with you guys. What's the best way to do that? Well, everything is stockpiled on ZetaBand.com. <laughs> uh, but you can find us. Our our Zeta most band. active is probably Instagram, which is Zeta.Band. Yeah. So Zeta, if you look up Zeta Band, Zeta Band New Orleans online, you'll and uh, yeah, like you said, the landing page for all our show dates, in the website, you'll see it on the front page. Uh, tonight at 8 p.m. is the time. Doors open at 8 p.m. at Santos Bar on Decatur. Um, it'll be the after show, the after party for French Quarter Fest tonight. Um, we're gonna be doing two sets. They're gonna be going pretty late. Uh, we'll see. We'll be going yeah. until we we feel on over. Go <laughs> until we drop. Yeah, that's it. That's awesome. Well, thank you guys. We appreciate you, you taking you. the time because I know you, you guys got to get ready. Yeah, we do got to get running. <laughs> Go ahead and check the time now. I got yes. you. Oh, so, cool, cool. yeah, yeah still right. time, but I know you guys are getting ready to hit the stage. If you guys want to check them out, at the chin, check them out on Instagram and, you know, come by WWE Show. We'll have you guys anytime. Wake, wake all of great. our viewers up, but it was great having you guys today. Yeah, Break the leg. This year's going to be even better than next year, Pam and all. Louisiana. What can you see where else like it? Brimming with history, overflowing with culture, a the beautiful people. Some generations deep, others used to the humidity. It's waterways bustling with industry, it's street artistic expression, and the food, oh, the food. Louisiana great is its people, its wonderful people. Still first.
persevering, still fighting. Thing. We got problems too, and we own up to them. We're not suspicious. We don't back down from tough questions, and we aren't going to run away from hard. Sure, we got problems, but WWL, we're here. We uncover lies and find the truth, accept it, and get people what they deserve. Keep people informed and paid. We dig deep, find solutions, solve problems, and stuff done. We tell stories and stations. We celebrate the good and try to fix the bad. We support Liz and help them thrive. We work hard, do good, have fun doing it. From Laplace to St. Bernard, Homa to Metairie to New Orleans, WWL TV is now WWL Louisiana. We Louisiana and fight for it. Happy Friday, everybody. Colleen Seeley here at French Quarter Fest here at Spanish Plaza. We are at the WL Love Louisiana stage here with Sax Kicks M. Yes, What's up? Yes. All right, tell everybody your names. What's happening, man? You go first. I'm Albert. Albert? I'm, I'm Alfred. And Alfred. Yeah. It's easy to get mixed up, people. Yeah, be careful. Right? Yeah, we look different. My dad does it, which is weird because there's some cosmetic differences. Yeah, it's two? the bun. The bun, right? Yeah, it's, yeah. it's just the bun. Yeah, and the glasses. Yep. <laughs> That's the biggest difference between us. Exactly. Like societally. And I would say the bun, too. But, um, yeah, you guys are performing today. What time, where? Uh, two o'clock at the Jack Day. It's gonna be right super, there. super. If you dope. can see that behind us, there's a band up there right now. On the Jack, that's where we'll be at two ten. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. If you're on the couch right now, watching this on your book, on your IG or whatever, come on out here for two ten. Yes. And this is where we're at. Just left of the French Quarter, looking at Jackson Square. Now tell me about how you got together. Indeed. Good. Where were we? We were on the road, right? We were on the road. Specifically, there's a city that I remember where we really like kind of locked in and started chopping game. Um, he normally in uh, Tank of the Bangers. I opened one of those tours, got to got to know my man. We started chopping game. I actually have the very first picture we ever took together. Aww. Um, and after that, you know, we just kind of started talking and we got in the studio, made some music, started laughing. Sax Kicks Ave was born. You just hit it off. So you guys met on tour, two yes. separate tours. Yeah, and we were like cool together. We were like made the same jokes, kind of like enjoyed the same stuff, and just kind of gravitated towards each other. For sure. And then uh, our manager, Tavia, was y'all should get together in the studio. So we get together in the studio and we make one song for like three hours, but we also laugh for like two and a half hours. True indeed. And made like 30 music. So it was really cool and it was a good fit. The manager obviously saw the chemistry between you two. Now we've had you both on the morning show before. Yes. What makes your shindig unique? You go. Ooh. What makes our shindig unique? Sh uh, unique shindig. Um, hmm, Can I have one. an alternate pronunciation for hey, shindig? Yo. Uh, Language of origin. Your duo. <laughs> oh yeah. Okay. Okay. Our duo. Really, really. I don't know, man. I think uh, sense of humor is very important to us, but we got music extremely serious. You know what I mean? Like we're we're, we're uh, musicians first, and uh, kind of use sense of humor as a way to kind of like translate it. Um, and so I think that's what kind of differentiates us from a lot of different bands. The I mean, I'll just say it, we're like really, really good. High level of crap. And Alfred is one of the best rappers in the city and the world. And I'm a very good instrumentalist. So we bring that together in a way that is like, you know, a lot of hip right now is very programmed and it's very excellent. And it's actually probably never been better because more excellent people can share this stuff because of the criticization of distributing music on the internet. Um, but like we have something to contribute because we have what a combined like 40 years of live performance Pretty much. experience. So we just have like a unique thing with being funny, but also, hey, let's be funny, but kind of with a point and with this like elite level of craft and just like goofing around. And it's like, maybe we say something um, and you know, entertainment at all costs. That's what it's about. Yeah, and what's funny is that because you guys are sneaking, and have, for those who have not watched them perform before, do so because they're not like any other band and you have original music as well. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And I actually saw saxophone videos in my Facebook feed. I'm like, how do we become friends? This is before like, the morning show. We actually were in a saxophone workshop years ago at Tipitina's and Snug Harbor and actually through somebody else and then what 15 years later yes I was like this guy looks familiar you know, this, this is a mutual friend and then we just met at the studio are. yeah we were yeah. we were at WW I was like that's Colleen yeah. yeah I think you hit me up on Facebook afterwards and I was like the last one was from like 2012 <laughs> it's a different timeline man oh, <laughs> oh yeah uh, so with Tank and the Bangas, have you been with her too, or was um, you did? That was Albert. Yeah, yeah, I was in okay. that band for uh, almost 10 years, like nine years, yeah. 
met, we were he was opening for us, and we were on the road, and that's where we all met. Exactly. Okay, got you. And I heard that you got mixed up with one of her saxophone players. It's funny, my good buddy, Etienne Stuple, like, uh, you know, he's uh, he's got his own thing going on now, and he's a. Uh, He's, uh, you know, I don't want to put him on blast or make any statements He's about, putting you on blast. about his relationship status. But back in the day when he was uh, a young buck, coming wild and free, so to speak, uh, he would be on the dating app and get confused with me for whatever reason. And this actually led to a hilarious incident where somebody messaged him. It was like talking to somebody on Tinder or somebody. And then they went to my profile. And I have a girlfriend. And, and make it known and have for a long time, like six years. Are you still together? Yeah, N not like six years, it is six years. Uh -huh. Love you, babe. And he got hit up because they went saw his, they saw my profile based on his Tinder profile. They were like, why are you lying to me? Why do you have a girlfriend? You told me you were single. And they were like, and he was just like, ha, that's a different person. And they were like, no, bro. Uh -huh. why, are you, why are you trying to game on me? And he was like, this is ridiculous. Like, so I don't know how we get mixed up, but a lot. He would walk out on stage um, when I wasn't on tour with the band. People would be like, Albert, <laughs> what's up? I don't look anything it's alike. It's so funny. I don't look anything alike. Beautiful man. Yeah. But we don't look guys. anything alike. You know? That's how he figured it out was, okay, I'm associated with him because you were intertwined together. And, oh, I, that's how I must be getting mixed up with. I like to think maybe I helped him sometimes, not just hurt him, but it sounds like a mostly prospect. Yes, yeah, it's, it's a little crazy. <laughs> From this angle, it's like, what? Man, you hate me. Yeah, I know. I saw, I'm really no hate. Just, just trying to relate facts. That's what it's, it's called. Facts kicks ass. Facts kicks right? ass. Yeah. We're about facts. facts. We're, yes, we're changing. And speaking of April fifteenth, it's tax kicks ass. Right. Well, well. <laughs> like we all know that. Okay, so how did you get involved in the music industry? Did you grow up? Singing, performing. Yeah, um, for me personally, uh, I started rhyming around six years old. My oldest brother, uh, Landis Bangs, rest in peace. He um, started rhyming and kind of had a little bit of a buzz around the city. So he inspired me to kind of rhyme. My middle brother James, he also freestyled a lot. So that's kind of why for those skills from. He flashed forward a few years. I started writing, kind of created my own style. And uh, at June 6, 2009, at the age of 17, I performed at the Dragons Den for the very first time. And uh, it was addictive. That live aspect is just my favorite things. And you flash forward a few years, and we are on the cup off the beat. Oh! All sooky, sooky now. This is incredible, yeah. guys. And I had to laminate it and print it myself because offbeat isn't physical. Boy. Offbeat's fully digital. So Alfred Banks went to a print shop. Oh, you best believe. Took screenshots. Yes, and we I did. didn't bring the collated booklet he made as if it was a master's. That is incredible. But he did binding. make his own magazine because he said, no, no, Pradia. I'm bringing you back. 100%, man. So this is a very, very big honor. It's super cool. Absolutely. Was that a dream of yours to be on yes. current magazine? So this is why it's a big deal. Yeah. Get it laminated and be like, I'm going to be of course, on the day cover. Of course. The thing is, this is our first cover together. And so I'm super excited about that because we're working very hard for the past like year uh, specifically to kind of get things going. And some of the love and energy we've been getting is just so cool. So to see it reverberate through the city and start to really make a uh, make an impact, beautiful, man. Because me and this man work very hard on our music and on our craft. So really, really cool. Was it your dream to be making this face? No. On, I will say, on, first out of the picture, I was like, what? But I love it, man. Can you make man. that face for us? Yeah. I... <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and that's and, actually how you look in some of your videos that I've watched the music videos that you guys do. So we have we have a weird dynamic. It's like he's the guy that will go there, and I'm more the straight guy that's like, I don't really. Know I'm trying right. to drag him along. Most of our relationship, maybe what makes us unique for the earlier question, is um, me testing Alfred's boundaries and testing them. <laughs> a good push pull balance. Yeah, it's big a There's big a narrative fact. built in. Take us for rela relationships, people. All right, so at point do you feel you really became successful? That you're like, I'm making it. Um, has that happened yet? <laughs> I mean, we're here. I mean, we're WWL. We're in the WWL. I mean, I feel like right yeah. now we made it right here at French Quarter Fest, baby, on, on Friday on the Jack Daniel stage at 210 in Spanish Plaza with Colleen on, in the WWL 10 on it's the river. Up. So, so we made it, and it's stuck, stuck and it won't come down. It yeah, and we're part of like we made it. I feel like I've arrived now. Yeah. So tell us about what instruments do you play? You're diverse. I play saxophone and flute and piano and bass and drums and guitar. I tuba in the eighth grade. I play bassoon in the ninth grade. And uh, I've clarinet in my mouth before. Okay. Any, right. you, what? No, I, right. I didn't hear anything. I mean, did you actually? I tried. Notice? It didn't sound good. Okay. No. <laughs> you said what I, not what I was good at. Ah, so what are you actually good at? Saxophone and flute. Okay, just sax. Yeah. No, the other ones are pretty bad. But. Make it till you make it, right? Absolutely. 
Absolutely. And I saw a montage that you posted recently too, where you actually incorporated multiple instruments, but it was all you playing. Yeah, I learned how to um, I learned how to get myself in, so I was playing like bass and drums and piano and sax and flute. Yeah. It's amazing. It, it's it was really, really cool. Amazing. And I've been loving. I've been like really practicing instruments. That's what I love to do. I've learned a lot about myself, especially last year, um, doing this project with Alfred about. What's actually for me as an artist? What do I actually like? And it's playing the instruments. Like I live in Breeze, like play along to records of people I love, learn stuff, and then pose music and record it in myself. I just love that, and it's like what makes me happy, and it's it's what I do. And so like I don't know. I just I can't describe it. It's kind of new to me to feel like I was so focused on like honestly like when I was in sixth grade. I saw a great saxophone and Kirk Whalen play for the first time. And I was like, I just want to play saxophone or something and like tour the world and stuff. And I and I did that at 23. And then after that, it was like, oh shit, like what do I do? Oh crap, what do I do now? And then I like, I just was like, well, I got to focus on the instruments. I got it down on what makes me happy. And that's the instruments. And, uh, you know, not using profanity on uh, WWL. <laughs> Thank you for that. That's what makes me happy. That's what me happy, you know? Yeah. I, I, so yep. What are some of the places that both of you have pulled separately together? Oh, man. The world? Um, we recently just kind of touring. So things kind of changed for us this past August of 2020 is when the social media kind of started making some noise, going viral, as it were. And uh, so we just started touring. We just did our first Texas together. I mean, you know, let's some, some. We're, we're 30 year olds talking about virality on social media. It's normal. <laughs> uh, but we for, did our first uh, Texas run. Uh, Dallas, sorry, Fort Worth, uh, Austin, Houston, all those shows are really cool. We hit the Midwest, we did uh, Chicago, Milwaukee, and Grand Rapids, Michigan. Those shows are incredible. Uh, we did Charlotte, North Carolina on a Wednesday night, and it was really, really cool. Um, an experience I'm sure me and you both would never forget uh, as it pertains to some of the people in the crowd. It was fun. Uh, but now nah, we're really starting to road together, and, but separately, I mean, this man is Romania, right? You well, going all over the world. And we're now a song every month. Every single month. And that's yeah. going to actually increase be able to go out on the road. And you, maybe you can just make a lot of rotations around the world. We are so looking forward to both of your success together. We appreciate you taking time to be with us today. And check them out 2 o'clock at the Jack Daniels Day. Sax kicks out, baby. Thank you, Colleen. It's the UWL TV app. Breaking news. We're following this out of Jefferson Parish. Local weather. We are expecting an active weather day, so make our weather aware. Original stories. It's a story you'll only see on UL TV. Impactful investigations. Changes are happening after a WWE investigation. The latest from the field. We are live in Covington with home. And it was a high drama day in the Superdome. Download the WL TV app. And speaking of food, one of my favorites, one of my favorites, Robert Harrison is me. Yes, and I'm does. saying he's my favorite. Malik knows why I'm saying my favorite, right? Yes, he does. He does. It's so awesome to be out here with you. You, you know what? If you don't know Robert, you need to get to know him. He is of Loretta's authentic problem. Let me tell you, Miss Loretta, thank you. Um, you know, thinking of her, obviously. I've now taken the helm and you're moving this forward. Yes. I have to say, you have some of the unique pralines in the city of New Orleans and the unique beignets, by the way. We have our crab beignet. We have our famous pro beignet, and this was all a, a legacy. My mom, we wanted to continue it, and took two things that were so New Orleans, right. and she mashed them together. You have the proline filling, proline ice, and then the nerve to do powdered sugar on top. Oh, yes. It's yeah. so amazing. You know, one of my favorite things is sweet potato cookies. Oh, yes. Yes, and we have that out here. We also have our shoe sole, our proline cookie, and our original proline. I like this. Now that you guys are moving forward, I know that you're very busy, staying really busy. Major changes that are happening right now, something new you introduced to the menu that we'll see at Fest. So we also have our proline shoe sole, which is a flat pastry made of cinnamon, a little bit of pecans and cinnamon on it. We also bought out our world famous pictured here Ooh. stuffed crab meat okay and we do that with lump jumbo crab a uh -huh. little bit of awesome sauce okay and we just throw the holy trend there it's just you know so what? awesome you make sure you stop by and you get you some robert tomatra seeker yes. joining us and taking a picture over at the wwl yes, love louisiana yes. tell everybody to come on out oh please come on out first quarter fest 2024 <laughs>
Kathleen, thank you very much. We're talking about the STEM Zone. You know, the, the French Quarter Fest is a very family-friendly event, and they have lots of things for the kids to do. We have stuff over on our Love Louisiana stage, but the STEM Zone is great. Uh, Leah Brown with Chevron, uh, the, one of the big sponsors for uh, French Quarter Fest, and Jamie from the Audubon, Audubon Nature Institute. W what is the STEM Zone all about? So this year, actually, <laughs> I think they wrecked uh, the STEM zone. <laughs> we actually have a scavenger hunt. Um, we have several you. partners who are going to join us, Audubon Nature Institute being one of them. Um, parents can bring their kids out. There are a lot of science, technology, engineering, and math, hands-on activities for students to do. So Which is make fun sure. and educational. Yes, that's right. And, and you guys are always trying to, to, to stress that, that STEM can be fun and it really does help kids, you know, nurture that educational side. And tell me about these experiments you've got here. Sure. Uh, what we have here is an easy um, activity that you can make at home with your kids. It demonstrates some superpowers of Louisiana's wetlands. Um, so what I have here is um, a coastline and our waterways that has no wetlands. And here, because one of their superpowers is they act like a sponge to help protect our water and our land. A very elaborate setup here. So Absolutely. You, got, you guys, Easy you guys spared no expense. <laughs> Easy to make at home. We're, we wanted to create something that that kids would be able to go back and make themselves. And that's that's really good. And, and um, uh, what kind of lesson are you trying to teach kids here? Sure. So here, wetlands act like sponges, and they help protect our coastline during hurricanes. They help protect our waterways from um, pollutants going in there, like plastic debris. And um, so here, it's it's what happens if we have no coastline or no wetlands and what it is like if we do. That's Super good. simple. Good lesson there. Thank you very much. And Leah, why is it so important for Chevron to help sponsor the French Quarter Fest? Because without big sponsors, it'd be hard to put on a big free fest like this. Yeah, so French Quarter Festival, um, it's about music, people, culture. It's also about economic development. So last year, the festival brought in more than $300 million in economic dollars for the city of New Orleans. And so that's an extremely important factor. We want to ensure that we're contributing to the areas that we live and work. Um, so that means sponsoring events like this festival. It also means that ensuring that when we have these types of events, we're finding opportunities to educate kids. And it also helps the, the French Quarter Fest expand and grow because all this on the riverfront we're seeing is new. Yes, this year we do. they do have some youth stages, so we're really excited about that, that there will be some younger performances that are going to happen down on this side. Um, they also have a culinary stage, um, so those are two new things, as well as the DJ stage. So there's something for everyone out here. And Jamie, how long has the Audubon Institute been involved with French Quarter Fest? I think for as long as, long as we've had the STEM zone, as far yes. as I'm aware. Yes. Yeah. So a very yeah. long time. And, and uh, now you'll have a lot more stuff at the, at the STEM Absolutely. zone at, at the fest Absolutely. than we're seeing here. Yes, we'll have, <laughs> <that's all right. laughs> we'll have um, a lot of information about some of Audubon's conservation programs. We'll have um, some hands-on, uh, we call them biofacts, but some hands-on um, activities and things uh, about native, uh, native wildlife that live in wetlands, um, as well as this activity that kids will be able to interact with. And Audubon's such a big part of the riverfront with the aquarium and the insectarium over there, so we're just glad to have you guys here. And Leah, thank you for, uh, for, for uh, you know, all the things you do for uh, French Quarter Fest. Jamie, thanks for coming in. Thank you. All right, Angela, where are we going? I think that in our crime, Coverage, the way that we're approaching crime now, we look at things on the surface level. And when you look at things on the surface level, you tend to think, oh, well, if we just need, if we arrested the carjacker, then, you know, the crime would go down. If we would simply put people in jail or give stiffer penalties, then crime will go down. Well, obviously, that has happened in the past in New Orleans, and crime did go down for some time, but again, it shot right back up again. So at some point, our responses to things have to be superficial and we have to ask the question, what is the root cause of this? What's the nucleus of the problem? What's the thing that's right at the center of it that we are just missing? You know, we have to take a look back at what we're doing wrong, at why communities were disinvested from, at statistically why more crimes happen in this particular community versus that one. Um, we have to take a look at what is pushing people to do crime? Is it a poverty rate? You know, is it income? How do we level the playing field so no one would want to commit a robbery? 
There are so many different answers we can give to this. And I think that we've tried all of the ways, or at least law enforcement has tried all of the ways that give you an immediate response, which is let's arrest our way through this, let's lock people up, let's put them um, away or give harder penalties or charging teenagers as adults. I think WWL and our crime focuses on while this is happening and while we do understand why some of those penalties are issued, we ask why it's happening and why particularly is it happening to or with rather one demographic. Let's take a look at the overall issue and not just address what are, you know, quick concerns. Well, first of all, Katie, Mike, and I have a combined 90 years of reporting experience. So we know what it is to be in New Orleans. We know what it is to cover this town. And we have the most experience of any station in this area. As I've worked at WWL over the years, one of the things that I'm most proud of in the investigative unit is the fact that my stories have been able to make a change. That comes in the form of changing laws, that comes in the form of changing elected officials that ended up in jail because of the stories that we did. Um, that goes for myself, David Hammer, Mike Pearlstein, all three of us have done stories that have really made an impact in the community. And I think that that is one of the things that WWL's legacy is a big part of. It's being a part of the community, it's making a difference, it's being a voice for people who can't use theirs or don't have one. Trust me. Uh, these stories that appear on TV, when it really has deep personal impact, we stick with those people, those families, those institutions, sometimes for years, and in my case, I can honestly say a lifetime in New Orleans. Well, I'm from New Orleans, I grew up in New Orleans, and I want to see this community do better. I want it to always be improving. So that's what motivates me at the end of the day. That's what gets me going every day to try to expose the inequities in our community, to expose the problems with our government and hopefully fix them. That presence is a backstop for so many things that could be going wrong. Sure, some things slip our attention momentarily, but there's a track record and we're the ones who followed those facts. We really want to make sure, first of all, of course, that we're accurate. That is huge for us as meteorologists. We want to do a really good job with that. Um, and of course, we want to get the information to viewers in a way that's really clear and understandable and in a way that can really help you decide what to do. What we do here as a team at WWL, we try to make sense of all that uncertainty so you can make the decision to uh, stay safe or do what you need to do for approaching storms or whatever the active weather may be. There are folks out there that have that instilled fear of severe storms, the unknown of um, pop-up thunderstorms, tornadoes, as well as probably one of the biggest events in Southeast Louisiana being hurricane. And so I try and quell those fears by answering all the questions that the public may have about these events. The, you know, there's, there's no way to avoid them usually, but if I can kind of answer those questions and put folks' mind at ease, I've done my job. Really what motivates me to get up every single day is knowing people are safe and they know exactly what to do when the weather strikes. Everything has a story. My father once shared a recipe with me. And outside of the actual recipe, it was for stuffed bell peppers. He shares the story of being taught how to make stuffed bell peppers, talking about the family that connects back to St. John the Baptist Parish, you know, to my grandmother growing up in Edgar, Louisiana my grandfather growing up in the seventh ward and, and just I think that everything connects us back to family and it connects us back to community that's through the music you know whether that connects us back to Tremaine that's through the food that's through the architecture and that is even through the clothing that we wear our slang where you at you know um, 
and being to share all of those kind of New Orleans colloquialisms, those things that we say, the fact that we say Burgundy and not Burgundy, you know? The fact that we could give you words like Chapatulas, we can connect all of those things uh, back to community and back to family. So I think that in, in celebrating like the Black Masking Indians and celebrating food and culture, it is also honoring those that came before us and honoring the people who gave us these things either out of necessity or gave us these things Day two is the best day. We're at the WWL TV Love Louisiana stage at Spanish Plaza, which the French Quarter Fest has expanded to Spanish Plaza this year. It just keeps getting bigger and bigger. Oh, and I'm joined by People Museum. You guys, the first time you came on the morning show, we were like blown away. We weren't sure what to expect. <laughs> and then it was like, they are so good. So first of all, introduce yourself and then we'll talk about how this came about. Hi, I'm Charles Umar. I'm playing bass in Tuba. Awesome. I'm Jeremy Phipps, and I play trombone for the People Museum. I'm Aaron Boudreaux. I'm playing drums and making my conducting debut today. Oh, yeah. And I cannot believe this is your first year for French Quarter Fest. Yeah, excited. What took us so long to get you guys? That's a great question. I wish I knew the answer. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Who knows how the industry works sometimes, you know, but we're, but we're here. So, yeah. And you guys are going to be playing right behind us at the Jack Daniels stage coming up at 3.30. Cannot wait for that. You guys are so unique. You're so electro pop, and I had never even heard of that, but it just stops you in your tracks. Like, that is so cool. There's no bands like that around here, probably not a ton in the world. So, how did you guys even get into this? Um, I think that we just, I, we kind of like all collectively love pop music, and then we're just from Louisiana. So, like, okay. the things that we have access to are like tubas and trombones and like just like all, all types of influences so okay. that's that's what I think yeah and I mean there is definitely like a community in the city that makes this type of music for sure but um, I think just the addition of the horns and like you know yeah. th especially when Charles entered with the tuba and all this stuff I think that that's sort of what solidified our identity in that sort of electropop with horns Jeremy calls it future New Orleans okay that's his that. like you know his coins <laughs> term which I, I love I think it's perfect so yeah. how did you guys all get together though and how do you I always want to know like where did the name come from oh they, I, I I came up with the name okay no no okay. big deal <laughs> <laughs> no um once I was in I was living in LA for like a year okay and then out there they have the VMAs mm -hmm. and at the VMAs um a bunch of people stand outside the like the big stadium window and watch the stars like go from their dressing rooms and it's like a thing out there that I like I'd never seen before but I, I made a joke to a friend of mine I was like it's like a people museum because you're like <laughs> behind this glass or whatever and yeah. um, I don't know I just, just I thought stuck. it was funny yeah and I was like oh that could be a band name at some point but then like years later we um, we started the band I love it yeah and do you guys are you best of friends or you kind of like brothers where it's like all right dude i just need the day yeah i, I hate these know. guys it's the worst <laughs> they're the worst no we're, we're we're pretty tight yeah for sure you know everybody is cool i i look up to everybody in the band oh, i feel nice. like i learn from them yeah you know constantly it just it, it keeps it keeps us all just engaged and it keeps me young as the elder of the band <laughs> the elder charles you is look, the elder from boutique young too? Oh my charles gosh. is ageless let everybody he know is, charles yeah. has no age that is true he's, he's 80 even. and 14 at the same time yeah, for sure yeah. <laughs> oh so you're an old soul but you're also fun and i love your glasses too i love the blue 
Just He's got the style. You gotta tell me about the mustache too. Because it's there to so say? impressive. I, I mean, look. No, I'm asking like, is it like a playoff mustache or this is all the time? Oh, oh my gosh. Yeah, Whoa. I mean we're okay, playing the jazz let it's it the be the playoffs, known. baby. Let it be known. This is I come from a long lineage of proud Cajun and Mexican men. Okay. This is genetics. This is not this is not a costume. This is my a part of my identity. It's a way of life. I so. love it. I love it. And talk a little bit about Claire, who's not here right now because she's getting ready for y'all's performances pretty soon. Oh, yeah. Claire is the singer. Also, she writes all the lyrics, and she also helps produce. And she is an amazing singer, amazing person. And she's from Monroe, Louisiana. Upstate? Yeah. We're all from <laughs> Louisiana in some way. I'm from New Orleans, Boutte, yeah. Lafayette, respectiv respectively. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. So, yeah. And um, you and Claire actually got together originally. You were writing together, and then the whole group kind of came about. Yeah, um, okay. it, it started off with me and Claire. It was like in the Treme neighborhood. We uh, I met through a, like a friend of mine, and like yeah, we just started writing songs the same day that we okay. met. Um, and then we started the project like immediately. And so like we kind of like grown as friends awesome. as as doing it. And then yeah, and all of us have grown as friends like doing this really. Um, and at what point? I mean, you guys are such a big deal now. Like, when did that happen? Because we'll have people on the show, um, and it's like, oh, my God, we just blew up last night. Like, yeah. what was that moment for y'all that people – you were like, oh, people know who we are now, you know? I, I don't – I mean, it, it would be really nice to say that there was, like, this thing that happened, but I don't know. It's just being a part of a scene, being a part of community, and yeah. playing shows with other bands. and. Sure kind of sticking to what you do and growing and and I mean Jeremy and Claire had other iterations of this band before we were in it so there was a lot of morphing and I don't know it'd be cool if there was like one singular like oh we were in a Amazon commercial yeah. but I don't know we're just we're still growing and and um, if you stick with something that you believe is is great and you stay true to your Believe art the then then it's gonna eventually people will take notice of that and, and we we're lucky to have a good crowd of people who support us so yeah of course we're at the french quarter fest but what was it like last year getting that call to play jazz fest for the first time oh that was amazing because yeah. jazz fest Incredible. is like i've been watching jazz fest my whole life so it, it was a bucket list thing for me personally awesome. um, yeah it was cool because we also were on a little kind of northeast and then west coast tour and jazz okay. fest fell right in the middle nice. so we've been like gone perfect. yeah we've been gone for weeks and we came home played jazz fest and then took off again the next day wow and you guys are going to start touring again late summer tell me a little bit more about relic i know this is something you took your time on you had been working on it since after hurricane ida was that sort of the whole inspiration behind it or it was just like the timing you had some downtime yeah i would say that was definitely a part of um a, a part of the inspiration because the whole album the theme of it is like flood and like rebuilding and re rejuvenating um and yeah so i would say yeah yeah i mean right yeah that 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 whole time of being like split up and sort of i mean every, everybody went through it you know it was crazy um that was definitely a big inspiration claire always says it's kind of a love letter to new orleans and we always we always talk about new orleans as being this place that we like love so much but it's like it's challenging it's it's like an uncle that you have that's like you love him you know but but he shows up to some of the functions maybe maybe it's a little chaotic you know but, okay. but you can't help but love you know that's the relationship people tend to have in south louisiana where they're from because of the weather and um but yeah so that was ida was the big start of, of that whole process and then coming back together and finishing it was really fun. So, and you yeah. told me that's the fun part, actually, writing. I mean, yeah, for making music and performing music is, I know that probably sounds obvious, I don't know, to people who are musicians, but... Well, we know there's so much behind the scenes, and yeah. it's got to be so hard to, like, turn it on every night, because, you know, everybody's got a bad day, but you can't have a bad day. Like, this might be the only time this fan comes to your concert, so you have to give it 110% every time. Yeah, Thank you for wrong. saying that. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it must be like, Thank you. Hey, tell me, like, give me the lowdown. Like, who's the class clown? Who's the person who's gonna show up after? Aaron's the, first the class day? clown. Okay. Who's be there it is not. Oh, that. Yes. Oh, wait. You got it. You already. Got oh it. my God. You you just figured us all out so fast. You did your research. Yeah. Yeah. Claire will be. We'll, we will beat the sound engineer at to the venue 
loading in. And stuff, which, by the way, out. is way better than being late. So we, that is not that is not a flaw. That's a feature, and we love it. And it's it's great. It's all about time. But Claire's always punctual. I guess I'm a bit of a clown. Charles is the goblin. Charles will just start. We call him. He has goblin energy. When he's in the van on tour, we'll just get on some crazy discussions. And yeah. He, he's yeah. the, he's the, the energy. energy. Yeah. 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 We do. I really yeah. feel like the genuine care and the yeah. um, And I did want to mention, you you do some in the Relic um, on your album, The Voice of Your Father. What is that? Explain that to me. Oh, yeah. So it w that was that was Claire's idea. Um, okay. But I just recorded my dad talking. I asked him, and she had a list of questions I asked him. And, um, yeah, and it was just like, it, it was funny because like my my dad we we don't the things that she asked it was stuff that I had never even asked him so it was why she why he was explaining to him, I was like wow I've never heard you talk about that so it was it was a very interesting like beautiful experience for me as well um, I felt like closer to my dad in some ways but then um, yeah we we chopped that conversation up and yeah and we put it on out and he's also like a really big people museum supporter oh, um, he, he comments on all the uh, social media posts so he loved it just as much as you did yeah I mean, well he at, well, and he, i do think we have a reporter position open if claire's interested oh, you know, she can do oh, both yeah, i mean okay. she sounds like she really pulled it out of it oh yeah I mean, that's yeah, the magic yeah. of claire yeah. Yeah, yeah there's a funny story though about jeremy's we'll dad we'll with hear. the with Oh yeah, no. So I, it, I was like, I'm not gonna tell him till we release the album. And then we released it. And then I was like, Dad, you heard of, you heard the album? And he was like, Oh yeah, I heard it. And I was like, Did you notice anything? Like, and I was just like, He was like, Wait, what? It was like, That's you talking. And he was like, That's me. And, and like, he, he probably like he never heard his voice. Okay. Yeah, he never heard like he, he hasn't had heard no any clue. like recordings of his voice, so he didn't even know it was him. <laughs> and then so he was like, "Oh, I gotta go listen again." And then you know he was like bragging to his um, to his friends and stuff like you know he was like on the album. But yeah, it was funny. <laughs> I did not expect that out of all the. We were on tour at a Mexican restaurant in the middle of like Tennessee or something, yeah. and Jeremy goes on the phone. He was like, "Y'all never believe this. My dad did not know that was him. He was listening to." That's so funny you remember exactly where you were at. Yeah. These are those moments when you guys are in the Hall of Fame, you're going to be like, remember that time? Yeah. <laughs> Behind the music, baby. Yeah, there we go. Speaking of which, like, where do you see, you, you've grown just so fast. Where do you see you guys in a year and 10 years? Ooh, that's such a good question. Actually, it was two. I, I have an answer. <laughs> so, let's say next year this time. Uh-huh. We'll still be, we'll do Prince Quarter Fest, we'll do Jazz Fest, but maybe we all do Bonnaroo, Coachella. Oh, hey! You know, maybe we pop over to Europe, do a couple of those festivals. Okay. You know, we'll have a couple of pockets, like in LA, where we can kind of fill some big rooms in New York. You know, handpick some cities and grow, sure. grow some communities. Because it's such a, you, you guys are so talented and it's so unique. I think that would definitely, you need to hire somebody full time to be doing that for y'all. Oh, we, yeah, have. we have a great team. We do have a great team okay. of people okay. working with us. That yeah, <laughs> definitely with UTA and, and um, our whole crew is really great. Yeah. Um, but yeah, Los Angeles, those city, we, we've kind of like built up some some audiences outside of Louisiana, and we're gonna try to just like you know cater to those cities, the people who who've showed up on tour and, and awesome. do that. And yeah, Europe would be great. I mean, we've always wanted to. You know, our Take former, show over the pond. former co anchor, she was in LA. I'm sure she would have you guys on the morning oh, show. Yeah. Come on. Yeah, we need to set that up. We need you guys set that up. But Sheba. we need you always coming back. Of course. That's one thing about this festival, French Quarter Press, over 300 performances, 1,800 different artists, all local, 100%. Yeah. That's insane. That's so awesome that they make it a priority to do that. Yeah, yeah. that's awesome. I agree. You know? Yeah, that's incredible. Yeah, um, yeah it's so unique to New Orleans. I mean, we have so yeah. much. Talented. It's like and, uh, insane. Sometimes when you think about it, it's like, man, it is like. But there's so many different venues. Yeah. I mean, we should have that much talent. There's so many awesome places to play yeah. here. Yeah. Yeah. What do you want people to know coming out 3:30 this afternoon? Um, Which is pretty quick. Oh, Thank yeah. you guys so much for your time. About to have to go, yeah. <laughs> I want you to know that we all had coffee. We <laughs> all ate. We are ready to We're ready. give you a show. Yes. One thousand percent. Yeah. You're at home watching this. You, you got time. You yeah, can make it out. Definitely have plenty of time. Yeah. I think we have we played outdoors since last year's Jazz Fest. Oh yeah, no, it's been oh, a while. Wait, yeah. it's so been sorry, a I didn't bit. think to ask you about the challenges of the venue. Oh no, <laughs> it's, it's such a beautiful day. It's it like is a gorgeous pretty much day. indoors. And people yeah. can hear the music from afar and come up and sure. discover. You know, that's I know you're gonna be fun. pulling people from the French Quarter. Yeah, everybody coming over here to Spanish Plaza. Just so you know, it has expanded to Spanish Plaza this year. Jack Daniels stage, it's an amazing, amazing stage. 
Thank you guys so much for your yeah, time. Thank People's thank Museum, they are fantastic. If you don't know anything about them, crawl out of that hole you're living in and definitely yeah. stream their music because they are amazing. All right, and we're going to send it back to you guys. To say it's the first year, Lu Fu India will be a food vendor at French Quarter Fest. Being there is a uh, for us. They're coming out the gates swinging. This is going to be the kima. Is Indian Chinese influence to our cuisine? This is something we are doing out of the box regular menu. This is our kima samosa. Since this is the is what gave us our trademark. This is the butter chip fed a lot of people around the city. So I think going to be a different experience but we are definitely strong we are definitely yeah. it's it's insane it's the fourth year at the festival for southern so what to expect like we literally have a line the entire time we're the award-winning chicken sandwich that chicken sandwich is top of mind for they're bringing back a crowd favorite too and that is our fish sandwich we slice these cucumbers ourselves marinate them everything we made more than enough pies or anybody who wants their family century old recipe. Seasoned French Quarter Fest Vest Wheats Meat Pies will be back again for the 40th year and we'll have some festival exclusives too. Crab and artichoke. But I do is kind of like a Cajun gumbo roux. Food is at the heart thing they do, but it's the people that keep them going. Sick fam, uh, fest family and friends that I've built relationships with. A reunion every time we do this. To meet more new people, you know, that is excitement for me. Leah McNeil, WWL, Anna. Everybody, Colleen Seeley here out at French Quarter Fest here at Spanish Plaza. We are at the WWL Love Louisiana stage here with Sax Kicks M. Yes, What's sir. Up? Yes, sir. All right, tell everybody your names. What's happening, man? You go first. I'm Albert. Albert? I'm, I'm Alfred. And Alfred. Yeah. It's easy to get mixed up, people. Yeah, right? yeah we look just alike. My dad good. does it, which is weird because there's some cosmetic differences. Yeah, you it's the bun. The bun, right? Yeah. It's, it's just the bun. Yeah, and the glasses. <laughs> yep. That's the biggest difference. Exactly. Like societally. And I was in the bun too. But um, yeah, so you guys are performing today. What time, where? Uh, two o'clock at the Jack Daniel stage. It's gonna be right super, there. super. If dope. you can see that behind us, there's a band up there right now on the Jack Daniel stage. That's where we'll be at 210. So yeah, come on out. Yeah, yeah. If you're on the couch right now, watching this on your Facebook, on your IG, or whatever, come out here for 210. Yes. And Spanish Plaza, this is where we're at. Just left of the French Quarter looking at Jackson Square. Now tell me about how you guys got together. Indeed. Good. Where were we? We were on the road, right? We were on the road. Specifically, Detroit is a city that I remember where we really like kind of locked in and started chopping game. Um, he was formerly in uh, Tank of the Bangers. I opened one of those tours, got to, got to know my man. We started like chopping game. I actually have the very first picture we ever took together. Um, and after that, you know, we just kind of started talking and we got in the studio, made some music, started laughing and Sax Kicks Ave was born. You just hit it off. So you guys met on tour, two yes. separate tours. Yeah, and we were like cool together. We were like made the same jokes, kind of like enjoyed the same stuff and just kind of gravitated towards each other. For sure. And then uh, our manager, Tavia, was like, Y'all should get together in the studio. So we get together in the studio and we make one song for like three hours, but we also laughed for like two and a half hours. True indeed. And made like 30 minutes of music. So it was really cool and it was a good fit. The manager obviously saw the chemistry there between you two. Now we've had you both on the morning show before. Yes. What makes your shindig unique? You go. Ooh, what makes our shindig unique? Sh uh, unique shindig. Um, hmm, Can I have point. an alternate pronunciation for hey, shindig? Yo. Uh, Language of origin. Your duo. <laughs> oh yeah. Okay. Okay. Our duo. It's actually really. I don't know, man. I think uh, sense of humor is very important to us, but we take our music extremely serious. You know what I mean? Like we're we're, we're uh, musicians first, and uh, we kind of use sense of humor as a way to kind of like translate it. Um, and so I think that's what kind of differentiates us from a lot of different bands. And uh, I mean, I'll just say it. We're like really, really good. High level of craft. And Alfred is one of the best rappers in the city and the world. And I'm a very good instrumentalist, so we bring that together in a way that is like, you know, a lot of hip hop right now is very programmed and it's very excellent. And it's actually probably never been better because more excellent people can share this stuff because of the democratization of distributing music on the internet. Um, but like, we have something unique to contribute because we have what a combined like 40 years of live performance Pretty much. experience. <laughs> so we just have like a unique thing with being funny, but also we're like, hey, let's be funny, but kind of with a point at this like elite level of craft and just like 
goofing around and it's like maybe say something. Um, and you know what? Entertainment at all costs. That's 100%. what it's about. Yeah, and what's funny is that because you guys are so unique, and have, for those who have not watched them perform before, do so because they are not like any other band. And you have original music as well. Without oh yeah. Yeah, and I actually saw your saxophone videos in my Facebook feed. I'm like, how did we become friends? This is before they came on the morning show. We actually were in a saxophone jazz workshop years ago at Tipitina's and Snug Harbor, and met mutually somebody else. And then what? 15 years later. Yes. I was like, this guy looks familiar. How do we know that this is a mutual friend? And then we just met at the studio, are. yeah. We were, yeah. we were at WWO, and I was like, that's Colleen. Yeah. yeah. I think you hit me up on Facebook afterwards, and I was like, the last message was from, like, 2012. <laughs> it's a different timeline, man. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, so, what's the Bangas? Have you performed with her, too, or was um, who did? That was Albert. Oh, Together? yeah, yeah. I was in okay. that band for uh, almost 10 years, like, nine years. That's where we met. We were He was opening for us, and we were on the road, and that's where we all met. Exactly. Okay, and I heard that you got mixed up with one of her saxophone players. He's so funny. My good buddy, at and Stufle, like, uh, you know, he's he's uh, he's got his own thing going on now, and he's, uh, he's uh, you know, I don't want to put him on blast or make any statements he's about, putting you on blast. about his relationship status. But back in the day, when he was uh, a young buck, roaming wild and free, so to speak, uh, he would be on the dating apps and get confused with me for whatever reason. And this actually led to a hilarious incident where somebody messaged him. He was like talking to somebody on Tinder or somebody. And then they went to my profile and I have a girlfriend and, and make it known and have for a long time, like six years. Are you still together? Yeah, N not like six years. It is six years. <laughs> Love you, babe. And he got hit up because they went saw his... They saw my profile based on his Tinder profile, and they were like, you lying to me? Why do you have a girlfriend? You told me you were single, and they were like, and he was just, ha, 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 that's a different person, and they were like, no, bro, why are you, why are you trying to run on me? And he was like, this is ridiculous. Like, so I don't know how we get makeup, but it's happened a lot. He would walk out on stage um, when I wasn't on tour with the band, and people would be like, Albert, <laughs> what's up? I don't look anything it's alike. It's so funny. We don't look anything alike. Beautiful man, yeah, but we don't look anything alike. You know? So that's how he figured it out was, okay, I'm associated with him because you two were intertwined together. And, oh, I, that's how I must be getting mixed up with. I like to think maybe I helped him sometimes, not just hurt him, but it sounds like I mostly hurt his prospects. Yeah, it's, just a little, it's a little crazy <laughs> from this angle. Like, what? Hey, man, you hate me. Yeah, I know. I saw, I'm really no hate. Just just trying to relate facts, okay? That's what it's, it's called. Facts kicks that. Facts kicks right? that. Yeah. We're about facts. We're from facts to facts. Yes, we're changing. And speaking of. April 15th, it's tax kicks that. Right? Oh, well, <laughs> like we all know that. Okay, well, how did you get involved in the music industry? Did you grow up singing, performing? Yeah, um, for me personally, uh, I started rhyming around six years old. My oldest brother, uh, Landis Bangs, rest in peace, he uh, started rhyming and kind of had a little bit of a buzz around the city. And so he inspired me to kind of rhyme. My middle brother, James, he also freestyled a lot. So that's kind of where I got both of those skills from. You flash forward a few years, I started writing, kind of created my own style. And uh, at June 6, 2009, at the age of 17, I performed at the Dragon's Den for the very first time. And uh, it was addictive. That live aspect is just one of my favorite things. And you flash forward a few years, and we are on the cover of Offbeat. Oh! All sooky sooky now. This is incredible, yeah. guys. And I had to laminate it and print it myself because Offbeat isn't school anymore. Offbeat's fully digital. So Alfred Banks went to a print shop oh, himself. Yes, yeah, believe. Took screenshots. Yes, and we I did. didn't bring the collated booklet he made as if it was a master's thesis. Yeah, it's incredible. But he binding. did make his own magazine because he said, no, no, print media. I'm bringing you back. 100%, man. So this is a very, very big honor right here. It's super cool. Absolutely. Was that a dream of yours to be on yes. print magazine? So this is a big deal to go yeah. get it laminated and be like, I'm going to be of course, on the of day course, cover. Of course. The thing is, this is our first cup together. And so I'm super excited about that because we've been working very hard for the past like year uh, specifically to kind of get things going. And some of the love and energy we've been getting is just so cool. So to see it kind of reverberate through the city and start to really make a uh, make an impact is beautiful, man, because me and this man work very hard on our music and on our craft. So this is really, really cool. Was it your dream to be making this face? No. On, I will say when I first saw the picture, I was like, what? But I love Can you it, make man. make that face for us? <laughs> yeah. I... <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and that's and actually how you look in some of your videos that I've watched from the music videos that you guys do. So we have we have a weird dynamic. It's like he's the guy that will go there, and I'm more the straight guy that's like, I don't really want to. Do I'm trying that. to drag him along. Most of our relationship, maybe what makes us unique, back to the earlier question, is um, me testing Alfred's boundaries and him resisting them. <laughs> a good push pull back. Yeah, it's Big a tension. Facts. There's Big a narrative facts. built in.
Take without notes for rela relationships, people. All right, so at what point do you feel you really became successful that you're like, I'm making it? Um, has that happened yet? <laughs> I mean, we're I here. We're in the WWL. We're in the WWL. I mean, I feel like right yeah. now, we made it right here because we're French Group Fest, baby. On, man. on Friday on the Jack Daniels stage at 210 Spanish Plaza with Colleen. Come on, the WWL 10 on it's the up. river. So, so we made it. And it's stuck. You're it's stuck. And it won't come. Yeah, and we're part of it. I feel like we made it. I feel like I've arrived now. Yeah. So tell us about what instruments you play. You're diverse with I your play life. saxophone and flute and piano and bass and drums and guitar. I played tuba in the eighth grade. I played bassoon in the ninth grade. And uh, I've stuck a clarinet in my mouth before. Okay. Any, All right. That, you, what? No, I, right. didn't, I didn't hear anything. I mean, did you actually? I tried. It didn't sound good. Okay. No. <laughs> you said what I play, not what I was good at. Ah, so what are you actually good at? Saxophone All of the above. and flute. Okay, just sax yeah, no, the other ones are pretty bad. But make it to make it, right? Absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> and I saw what? a montage that you posted recently, too, where you actually incorporated multiple instruments, but all you playing. Yeah, I learned how to um, I learned how to edit myself in, so I was playing like bass and drums and piano and sax and flute. Yeah. It's amazing. It, it was it's really, really cool. And I've been loving, I've been like really practicing the instruments. That's what I love to do. I've learned a lot about myself, especially over the past year, um, doing this project with Alfred about what's actually sustainable for me as an artist, who I actually like, and it's playing the instruments. Like I live and breathe to just like play along to records of people I love learn stuff and then compose music and record it in myself I, I just love that and it's like it makes me happy and it's it's what i do and so like i don't know i just i can't even describe it it's kind of new to me to feel like i was so focused on like honestly like when i was in sixth grade i saw a great saxophonist named kirk whalen play for the first time and i was like i just want to play saxophone or something and like tour the world and stuff like, and i did that at 23 and then after that, it was like, oh shit, like, what do I do? Oh crap, what do I do now? And then I like, I just was like, well, I gotta focus on the instruments. I gotta double down on what makes me happy. And that's the instruments. And, uh, you know, not using profanity on uh, WWL. <laughs> Thank you for that's that. That's what makes me happy. That's what makes me happy, you know? I, yeah. I, so yep. Where are some of the places that both of you have traveled separately together around oh, man. the world? Um, we recently just started kind of touring. So things kind of changed for us this past August of 2023 is when the social media kind of started making some noise, uh, going viral, as it were. And uh, so we just started touring. We just did our first Texas run together. I mean, you know, some, some, some. We're, we're 30 year olds talking about morality on social media. It's pretty normal. <laughs> uh, but we for, did our first uh, Texas run. Uh, Dallas, I'm sorry, Fort Worth, uh, Austin, Houston, all those shows are really cool. We did Midwest, we did uh, Chicago, Milwaukee, and Grand Rapids, Michigan. Those shows are incredible. Uh, we did Charlotte, North Carolina on a Wednesday night, and it was really cool. Um, an experience I'm sure me and you both would never forget uh, as it pertains to some people in the crowd. It was fun. Uh, but now nah, we're really starting to hit the road together, and but separately, I mean, this man is Romania, right? Well, going all over the world. And we're putting out a song every month. Every single month. And that's yeah. going to actually increase us to be able to go out on the road. And you, maybe you can just make a lot of rotations around the world. We are so looking forward to both of your success together. We appreciate you taking the time to be with us today. And check them out 2 o'clock at the Jack Daniels stage. Sax kicks out, baby. Thank you, Colleen. Louise, what can you say? There's nowhere else like it. Brimming dream, overflowing with culture, a melting pot of beautiful people. Some generations deep, others still getting used to the humidity. It's waterways bustling with industry. It's streets alive with artistic... And the food? Oh, the food. But what makes Louisiana is its people. It's wonderful people. Still stand, still persevering, still fighting. Because here's the thing. We got problems too, and we own up to them. We're not scared of tough fish. We don't back down from tough questions, and we aren't going to run away when things get hard. Sure, we got problems, but WWL, that's why we're here. We uncover lies and find the truth, excuse injustice, and get people what they deserve, keep people in front, and keep them safe. We dig deep, find solutions, solve problems, and get stuff done. <gasps> We tell stories and start conversations. We celebrate the good and try to fix the bad. Support local businesses and help them thrive. We work hard, good, and have fun doing it. From Laplace to St. Bernard, Mark to Covington, Metairie to New Orleans, WLTV is now WWL Louisiana. We love Louisiana and for it.
Hey, good. Yes, we are a little off to the side here because I'm hanging out with the Kissing Disease uh, Loyola students who are going to be performing. Very excited because it is your first festival performance. Yes. That's very exciting. So you guys are going to be on Friday. I want to talk a little bit about how you guys got together. You guys are obviously all students at Loyola. Yeah. What was that process like? Um, basically, we were all in class together. I was in class with these two, and I just really wanted to form a band, so I kind of just went up to them and was like, hey, <laughs> let's do something. I love it. Now you guys are creating uh, beautiful music, and you guys perform um, some covers, but mostly your own original music. Yes. Okay. Yeah. And so what would you describe your music as if no one's, well, they've been listening this morning, of course, tuning in, but how would you guys describe your musical sound? Yeah, well, um, we're doing like an acoustic vibe right now, but we're mostly like a pop rock ensemble, I'd say. Yeah. And I didn't even introduce anyone. Your name? Oh, I'm Eddie. Eddie, okay. And you want to introduce everyone? Oh, I'm Maddie. And then um, who else do we have here? And then here? this is Dylan and this is Spencer. Hi, guys. You guys sound great this morning. And so first, first festival, I want to ask, how does it feel? Uh, it feels really awesome. It's super exciting. I gotta say thank you to our school, Loyola, because they, they're really helping us set this thing up, you know? It's awesome. Super excited. We don't have to go into detail, but we learned that you came up with the band name? Um, yeah. A little bit? Okay, I won't put him on the spot here. Are you excited to performing at your first festival? Very excited. Yeah. yeah. French Quarter Fest is huge. Yeah. 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 You guys are going to be uh, performing on um, the... Tell me again, the, the Loyola stage. Well, what did we call it? Esplanade in the Shade stage. There we go. Okay, well, it was great talking with you guys, but we really want to listen to you. So I'm going to let you guys take it away, the kissing disease. Like a dead lover at night, I lie awake in the bed cold. Let the wood grow grass and the sheep. Sharice Gibson coming to you live from the Louisiana stage right next to the Jack over here at Spanish Plaza and it is a French Quarter Fest 2024 and it is a gorgeous day the weather is perfect complete opposite to what it was yesterday I am here with one of my favorite DJs well he really is my favorite DJ DJ Raj Smooth and I know that a lot of y'all know who DJ Raj Smooth is how you doing today I'm doing great okay so now you're not just out here enjoying the festival oh no we were just having a conversation about the DJ uh, stage that they the have Posigen now the DJ stage going yeah. on right in Spanish Plaza yeah you got that you were involved with that yeah I helped it out, you know, helped uh, curate some of the DJs and, you know, put the whole idea together. So, you know, I'm, I'm just happy to be a part of it with French Quarter Fest that we could bring some hip hop to the uh, to the scene out here. You know what? And if, if guys don't know you, the younger people may only see you at Ace. Younger people may see you DJing, whether it's at the Pelicans games, whether it's at the Saints games. You are literally the DJ of New Orleans. You are everywhere. But you have a storied history. I mean, we go all the way back to Cash Money. I mean, even before that, like right. that was that was a decade in, you right. know, like I started in junior high school. Shout out to all the Livingston Seagulls <laughs> out there, uh, you know, but through junior high school, high school, college at Dillard. Right. Um, it's, it's, it's been my life. It's been my career. Like I've, I've never had a day job. Right. So, you know, it's, it's been uh, an amazing experience and, you know, 30 plus years doing it. And, you know, I'm just happy that I can still get on stages and talk to people, you know, like this. Well, so. you know, I love the fact that I can see you everywhere. I mean, my, you know, I always give you a hug when I see you at A's. I always recognize when, you know, when Raj Smoove is playing. Trust me, he always gets the room turned up, whether it's a game or anything, you know, just you have a particular touch. What is your secret? Is there like a Raj Smoove sort of DJ secret you have? It's just, just paying attention. That distinguishes you? Paying attention to the room and, and making sure, you know, you play the right song at the right time. Right. You know, like, there's a, a lot of different, you know, vibes, genres, energies, um, and just, you know, trying to find that, that middle ground and get everybody in there having a good time and just loosened up. Well, I know that right now there's a big demand for different genres of music. So you have Afrobeats that's really getting hot right now. Hot. It's getting a lot of people out there on the scene and on the dance floor. How do you keep up with all of it? Do you just kind of pay attention to what's on the charts? Um. I don't really pay attention to the charts. Like, I, again, I pay attention to the people. You right. know, like, what might I hear somebody playing when they're driving down the street? You know, what is it that uh, folks come and request? Like, what are people that I'm around listening to? You know, what are some things that I happen to come across that I like? You know, right. a lot of times, 
the songs on the radio are not the records that go all the way up. Really? So, you know, just finding those, you know, the little niche songs that you play and people like, yo, like, I didn't know anybody else knew about that. Like, right. I appreciate you for playing that for me. Right. So, you know, being able to make those personal connections even within a larger crowd, I think it's very important. I have to say, as a person who sometimes is on the club scene in New Orleans, the club scene in New Orleans is typically different mm -hmm. uh, than the club scene in the cities. Mm -hmm. So what is it different for you? Like when you play and you DJ here, what gets the crowd moving here versus someone in Dallas or someone in New York City? I mean, every region kind of has its own style of music. Right. You know, like we have bounce music and once you kind of get like 30 miles outside of New Orleans, you got like ratchet, you know what I'm saying, right, music right, and, right. Uh, you know, the jig stuff. You know, Texas has their own style. Atlanta has their own style. So, you know, a lot of that just comes from the culture and from the experience. Like, a lot of the music we rock down here with the bounce music has a lot of, you know, jazz and brass band right. influences in it with the rhythms and all the second line stuff. So, you know, playing music that speaks to the audience that you're in front of. So even when I would travel and, you know, be out of town doing stuff, what's hot in those cities? You know right. what I'm saying? And knowing what those people react to, because it's not... Uh, like I'm there to play what the people want to hear, right? So that they can have a time. Do you typically find yourself now? You're how many? How many years in the game? Oh my goodness. Thirty-four. Thirty-four years in the game. Do you feel like you have served now as a mentor to other younger DJs that are coming up? Because I I've, see you a I've, lot of people in your way. I've definitely tried to uh, reach back. You know, saying like my dad um, is a is a jazz musician and composer and uh, an educator. You know, saying so like when. When I was little, little, and people would be coming to the house, and he would be like schooling them and teaching them, and you know, if, if there's nothing else I've tried to do to father follow in my father's footsteps was right. you know to uh, to be a mentor in that regard and pass on the knowledge and the things that I've learned to the next generation. Well, you told me earlier today that you had some involvement with the stage for the DJs mm -hmm. now. Um, you were also on the board for yes. French Quarter Fest. So how did this conversation come about? Why did you think having your own stage was important? I mean, you know, I, I've been doing my thing um, in the city for a while, and uh, French Quarter Fest has always, from my experience from dealing with them for this short amount of time, are very interested in expanding the experience and, right. and caring to different audiences to be more inclusive. Right. So, um, you know, definitely try to reach a, a younger generation and trying to figure out some cool ways to do that. and. Uh, you know, I guess the DJ idea had been floating around for a while. So, you know, me coming into the mix, it was like, yo, let's, let's bounce this off a ride. I was right. like, we definitely need to do that. And it's, it's came to fruition now. I think the conversation about inclusivity and all activities within Jazz Fest, whether it's French Quarter Fest, Jazz Fest, Armstrong Festival, whatever it is, I think that's something that's been at the forefront. And so having people like you at the table on the planning stages of this, it seems like it came to fruition what it is that you wanted. I'm, I'm just happy I get to help put my people on. Right. You know what I'm saying? Like, yo, like, cut my people a check. Like, right. let's go. You know, put them on the platform. Uh, let's give everybody a chance to shine. And, you know, that has to expand the whole experience, you right. know, and make it greater year after year. Is there something this year that you're looking forward to? I know that you are DJing everywhere and you're consistently busy all the time. You just he just ran down his schedule to me for this weekend and I don't even see how he's gonna give up for sleep. What do you look forward to this year? Um I don't know. Like I, I think what what I was excited to see has already happened. Like everybody is in place. You know, like right. the opportunity has been given, um, and people whose names are on schedule that haven't had a chance to you know like they might have been out here as a fan or a customer to kind of like see what was going on right but now you know they have a chance to officially be involved as a part of the weekend um and deliver that experience you know to the fans out here so right. you know having you know like my homie dj hallibax sent me text earlier today he was yeah. like yo like i'm done you up next like <laughs> i feel good you know what I'm saying? i feel like i played a part in you know making sure he got an opportunity to be on the stage and do his thing you yeah. know i'm doing it tonight tomorrow um i the artist is gonna be out here djing you know what I'm saying i help get her plugged in and right. uh hot sis is gonna be out here with tbc brass band Everybody get his sunday <laughs> five for icy girl and poppy is gonna be out here on the gumbo um little set yeah uh flag boy gives and brass hall is gonna be playing oh. water sea is gonna be out here doing their thing so it's like being able to be involved with all of my people out here and help to contribute like 
That's, that's what I look forward to, and that's right. what I'm happy about. And that is why we need people like you at the table, though, so that we get more of our people on the scene. Yeah, we, we need to be here, you know, we represent. Okay, so tell me this. You're going to get on the stage. You're getting on the stage this weekend. I'm, I'm going on in like 10 minutes. Oh, he's going, no, he's going on in 10 minutes. What's the clock? You, I don't know. He said, time you have 30 more minutes. Okay, it's 5 o'clock, 5 okay. o'clock. He's going into 30 minutes. But when you get up there, when you typically play a festival, obviously different from playing a club, give me the DJ seats because I, uh, my friend DJ Vintage, I love him very That's much. My dog. But I always like joke with him when he's playing, like, I can easily do this. And he said, you win. How do you develop the skills? I don't even know how to play the next song on my playlist. It's just just years of practice and experimentation. Like Is everything that went bad for you? My first gig. Your first gig? What my, was that my like? First, my first DJ gig, um, it was a 13-year-old birthday party uh -huh. for my friend Carmen, who used to live across the, uh, the, the, the apartment from me in, uh, when I used to live in Georgetown in the east. Oh, yeah. So yeah. she moved. You know, they moved on up. They got a crib out of East over. Yeah. And, you know, the partner, so it's like I DJ'd her 13th birthday party. She went to Fantasy Williams. Right. And, you know, I'm young. I'm 14 years old. And I think everybody likes the same music I like. <laughs> so when I go on this party, like I'm playing Tribe Called Quest and yeah. Brand New being in like all of this backpack, hip hop, New right. York, East Coast stuff. Um, you know, I thought it went well. But then the, the next year, this girl, you know, we just happened to be talking um, at 35, you know, beginning the first couple of days back to school. She was like, um, oh, you DJ Carmen party. And I was like, yeah. She was like, I heard you can't DJ. Oh, and I was no. Like, <laughs> like, no. Like, just, yeah. <laughs> so that was kind of like, you know, the, the early dawn on me that everybody does not like what I like. Right. And I need to find out what the people want to hear so that they can be like, yo, we had the greatest time ever. Right. So like after that, you know, I was off to the races. Like, let me see what, you know, then, I, then it was kind of like a, a science thing for me. Like, let me check this out. Let me right, see if right. this works and finding out what goes on. And then, um, you know, when I was at Dillard University, uh, like second semester of my freshman year, I started doing like all of the events. So the basketball games, the parties, the poetry nights, like, oh, we just need some music in the cafeteria. Raj, come set up. Right. So, you know, I really kind of had a laboratory to figure out uh, what people wanted to hear, how they wanted to hear it, um, you know, and I'm still figuring it out now. Like every every gig is practice for the next one. Right. All right. So people can see you on which stage? The Posigen stage in 30 minutes, five right. o'clock. So if you're not minutes. here, drive fast, get here. We we gonna do it. All right, and it's pretty good crowd out here, but it's not too too packed, so people can still get out here today. So you can check out DJ Raj Smooth. There should uh, be some always. parking on the street somewhere. Yeah, yeah I'm positive. sure there is. Look, I love you so much. I've I always appreciate appreciated it. you, and appreciate what you're doing not only for the culture, but what you bring in in the culture into places where we don't typically see it. That thank makes you. me excited. All right, so we know that you gotta go, DJ Raj Smooth. Thank you so All good. much. Hi, I'm John Luce, here with my friends, Greg Rowe from and Mia Evans. We're getting ready for French Quarter Festival, which is over 300 musical performances on more than 20... Chevron is proud to support the festival, a celebration of New Orleans culture and cuisine. It all takes place April 11th through 14th. Head to at FrenchQuarterFest.org and download the free app today. The French Quarter Festival from WWL. Hey, welcome back to French. We are at Spanish Plaza. This is the WWL Love Louisianans, and we are so happy to be here. We were with Bon Bon Vivant, Abigo, Abigail, excuse me, Cosio, and Jeremy Kelly are with us. Thank you guys so much for being here. Yeah. Because I know it's such a busy day. You play later this afternoon on Esplanade. Yep. On that stage, which is an amazing stage. Kind of take me through your day leading up to a big uh, festival performance because it's such a like build up. It is, it's a lot of fun. Today was kind of fun because I had a chance to walk all the way across. We live just outside of Esplanade. Perfect. And so walking through here and seeing everybody like sparking up and having fun. Yeah. And, yeah, it's really, there's a great crowd out there today and the weather's awesome. I mean, the traffic getting was incredible. Was I was like, ah. Oh. It's a pain for people trying on the city, but that means great news. That's I think good. last year almost 900,000 people came out four days. This is 100% local talent. How important that to you guys? Yeah, that's a big deal for us, especially the local and the free. It's, it's kind of a really beautifully curated uh, line of bands that live and work in New Orleans, in the French Quarter, all around here. So I love that. And so 
so many people come from out of town to see this homegrown talent and member, and then they kind of follow you guys around. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 We have a lot of people who first time I saw you was at French Quarter Fest, and it's been years that we've been playing it, maybe about 10 years. So that's, that's awesome. I mean, you can't beat that. Yeah, wow. So, yeah, we started at the little stage by the boat. And, uh, you know, we ping pong around different stages every year. So What's saying in 10 years? First of all, it's just been incredible to see the attendance grow, but favorite part of this festival? I think just, just, uh, a lot of festivals change over time, mm -hmm. and we play a lot of festivals and watch that happen. And I love this festival is staying kind of homegrown. Yeah. And you cool indie bands that we play with on Friday night at BJ's or whatever are here on the stages. Yeah, next to legends and big and you know Thomas. all of these people are wow. Thomas. Yeah, it's, it's awesome. Really good collection of music, New Orleans musicians. It really is, and yeah. it's cool to how many artists are in different bands, too. I'm like, wait, I just saw you on yeah. that stage. Now you're kind of bouncing around, so yeah. you can see them in all their elements. That's I, true. We, we play a little bit with Charlie Halloran, the Tropicalis, and, or Tropicalis, and looking at his schedule. Oh, yeah. Oh, he played in, like, I think, over the next few <laughs> days. He, he's never going to play that trombone We're working, we're yeah, working, which is good. Everybody, when, you, when you walk to and from stages, you see your friends on all the yeah. Very, very local in that way. Yeah. That's what I was gonna ask. Do you get along with the bands? Oh and yeah. Oh, we yeah. all kind of, um, you know, share players, and yeah, uh, it's actually a very small community when you when you get down to it. Especially street band. We played last night, and you know, you know each other, and you see each other at TBA, spotted cat. You think, oh hi guys. So let's start from the beginning. If people haven't seen you play here for ten years, so you got the name. Well, I, I knew the word bon vivant, it's for live well, and it kind of uh, refers to a person who likes to enjoy his lifestyle, they like to drink and eat and dance and be merry. And I thought, for an ethos, that's a really good idea, it's essentially just living well, and uh, we added the extra bon, good, good time, so <laughs> double down. Perfect. Commitment. Yeah. <laughs> They're actually married, how does that work out? Great. It's a wild time. So we, <laughs> we, we get, we got, we've gotten really good at spending lots of time places. That's it. Yeah. 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 Tell me about your other bandmates that are already out the down check getting ready. Yes, we got Deacon Marquin is an incredible drummer. He's drum kit today. Uh, we call him our little Buddha. He's very, you know, quiet spoken. Unshakable. But yeah. Just like look to bo look to Deacon to see what's on. And we got Jason Jerzak on the sousaphone and electric. A lot of energy from that guy. He's Kid Kaboom. On a trombone today, we have Ellis Cyberling. Just a lovely tall drink of water. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> and you're the saxophonist. Yeah, yes. play saxophone. And we're going to have a special guest uh, out uh, an end called uh, Black Soul that's coming to, up for yeah. a couple of tunes, which we're really excited about. Yeah. Any, can you give us any more than that? or? We've been kind of playing with there's at Negril. Uh, he, he steps up and does these incredible off the rhymes that are just I have to try not to stay he does it because I gotta look cool but <laughs> he's just riffing act like you've been yeah. really like oh my god and I think I sat down and wrote this but he is just going off and it's just an incredible art form to watch on stage yeah, playing, we were playing with him a little he was jamming with us a little bit last night and so we were like just come tomorrow yeah. we'll do, the, do this again See, so, I love so he's coming and hanging out with here. us that's yeah. amazing and you, of course, write the songs. Yeah. But you yeah. kind of explain to me the process. Like, you write it, but then you come together as a band to put there. That's right. It's kind of like bare, bare bones. I sort of think of it like I, I put the bones there of a skeleton. And then as a band, we sort of put the skin there and the whole. We build it up from there. As a, We're definitely a little democracy of musicians. So, it's yeah. It's so cool, though. It's really fun. Uh, Abby will come with an idea. Uh, the chords and lyrics and kind of a, you know something that she's wanted to express yeah and you know sometimes it's out of the music room as a ballad mm. and it's this beautiful ballad you start to kind of play through it it becomes this up tempo dance song yeah still all the words and the melodies yeah. are are ballad know, it's really fun, it's the fun to see how what they end up to yeah be. i mean that's collaboration is you, i like to to think i know what the song is and then give it over to the band and watch it become an entirely different so it's but sometimes
sometimes you could probably get two songs out of it. Yeah. Though. You're like, yeah. this is what I, this is what it turned into, and they're both beautiful. And we actually, <laughs> over the years, we play some of these songs differently. Huh. Uh, we'll say, oh, tonight is this version, or tonight's going to be a version of that song. So it's it's a, it's a really a joy. Yeah. <laughs> Do you, uh, you know, I'm sure you get that feeling this is going to be a big hit. Is it normally, is your feeling normally right? Hmm. I've been wrong every time I've been. <laughs> no, that's what he tries to predict the football game. I'm like, I don't know. Yeah, yeah. I mean, sometimes, you know, I have to say, being that he's my husband, he gets, he hears them all. Sometimes I'll be on the, you know, the living room floor and I'll say, hey, what about this? And one time he did say, that is, that's an incredible song. And then it is one of our headlines, you know, our, our hits. So you were right. Got you one got time. There. <laughs> And this is on tape, so that's fantastic. Yeah, we're gonna prove. Yeah, it's funny. Sometimes um, we'll get in the sp studio, especially, get attached to a song and really excited about it. And then, you know, once you record it and release it to the universe, you don't get a say on who, yeah. what people would like to hear and what people respond to. And it's fun. Some some of them will fall off a little bit, and then unexpected songs that work for you really well. I want to hear them and. They, I mean, like, man, I didn't see that one coming. On how that resonates with a fan that you did. Like, yeah. maybe they're going through that. Like, yeah. You have yeah. no idea, and it just really hits them. Yeah. It's fun. Talk to us about your genre, because you're so unique. Your sound, I feel like, rooted in storytelling. It's so New Orleans, but it's got so many other things. Ooh, yeah. that. Leslie. Yeah, that, uh, I, I think we kind of, just early on, I love to write. I love to tell stories. And it's a little bit harder to find um, a song that isn't my narrative, necessarily. I'm just... I'm, I'm inspired by a story. I want to tell someone else's iteration of their life. and sure. So that's the bones is. It's just what's a good story. And then um, we build it together. Sometimes it'll be, you know, Deacon goes, what about four on the floor? And then it goes to a direction. And so, but the genre's a hard one these days. Yeah. Um, like and it's you probably so, don't want to be in one. And that's kind of, as I've grown up, I, you know what? Instead of being able to rattle off my three-minute elevator pitch, I just want people to listen to the music. <laughs> and yeah. instead of telling them a genre that they might say, I don't like that. Uh -huh. I mean, I think the music speaks for itself, but sure. some of the fun ones we've got is a cabaret. Creep cabaret was one like that. <laughs> yeah. So I don't know. What, I mean, what do you... Yeah, um, I, think, I think with the, all the different kinds of instruments here, that you can pull from, like yeah. sousaphone instead of bass, horns, uh, accordion, all of these, or washboard, those sounds are normal here. And so when you leave here and go on those things, even though we're kind of just a rock band, I think, folk, indie, folk rock, whatever those all things are, um, <laughs> with the cool colors that you can paint with here musically, yeah. you just come into whatever you want. Speaking and that's of, fun. Speaking of which, because everybody in New Orleans, you tour all over. What's going on right now? Like, are you coming out with an album? Or are you touring? We're actually putting uh, some, we're putting singles out right now. We're building to, to release a single in the springtime, maybe the end of the maybe, yeah, there yeah, I soon. say it on air. Okay. Yeah. And uh, we'll be doing that so until we release our full album this summer. Okay. So, wow. yeah, we, uh, it's a new day for music. It's everybody's doing it differently. We thought, well, singles are lovely because I like to work on right then and there and build it to completion. Right. So that when a little bit all over, I like to sort of present this song as its entirety and say, here we go. This is that one. So. Interesting getting in your brain for a minute. <laughs> okay. I know you said you've been for 10 years. How long have you guys been together and how did this band even form? Was the relationship first? Just kind of, it went from 
full Kamana into funky horn band yeah. and kind of but whatever she writes we play and yeah. it turns out whatever it is which is fun. So you say what genre do you like? Okay we can do something with that. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. She's I mean, like I want to do a country tune. Cool. Okay. It gets to be limited by genre winning songs I feel like I, I, I don't necessarily want that boundary. Oh, yeah sure. I know you know uh, answering your question Jay says well it's New Orleans music. It's about the lives we're living as New Orleans. A lot of these songs are literally about our lives as New Orleanians, yeah. and it's got instrumentation that's known local sousaphone and horn. So we say New Orleans music. Yeah. <laughs> we got a boat coming through. I love it. Wow, all kinds of boats. This is just such a great atmosphere. I'm glad. Yeah. Um, Spanish Plaza is Field now part of the French Quarter. Yeah. So you guys are playing tonight at 4:30 to 5. Esplanade stage. Talk real quick. You're making your own outfit. Yeah, yeah. I, 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 she you know, so <laughs> many hats. Do it all well. True. I, uh, you know, as as Orleans, we costume, and uh, I started getting better on the sewing. So I, nice. I thought, well, of all things, I couldn't find clothes I really loved in this necessarily. So I tear them up or make them all. And so yeah, I made them for today. What's the color palette? It's silver sparkles. <laughs> Sequence. Okay. Yeah. It's gonna be beautiful. I can't wait to see it. Anything else you want people to know? We will see you at 4:30 at the Esplanade in the Shade until 30, babies. Come out and dance in that grass. I mean, Jeremy, thank you so very much. Thank you. It's WLTV app. Breaking news. We're following breaking news out of Jefferson Parish. Local weather. We are expecting an active weather day, so make certain that you are weather aware. Original stories. It's a story you'll only see on WWLT. Impactful investigations. Changes are happening after a WWLT investigation. The latest from the field. We are live in Covington. And the Dome. And it was a high drama day in the Superdome. Download the WWLT app. We're at the WWL TV Love Louisiana stage at Spanish Plaza, which the French Quarter Fest has expanded to Spanish Plaza this year. It just keeps getting bigger and bigger. Go off. And I'm joined by People Museum. You guys, the first time you came on the morning show, we were like blown. We weren't sure what to expect, and then it was like, they are so good. So first of all, introduce yourself, and then we'll talk about how this came about. Hi, I'm Charles Umar. I'm playing bass in tuba. Awesome. I'm Jeremy Phipps and I play trombone for the People Museum. <laughs> I'm Aaron Boudreau. I'm playing drums and making my conducting debut oh, today. Oh, yeah. And I cannot believe this is your first year for French Quarter Fest. Yeah, excited. What took us so long to get you guys? That's a great question. I wish I knew the answer. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Who knows how the industry works sometimes, you know, but we're, but we're here. So, yeah. And you guys are going to be playing right behind us at the Jack Daniels stage coming up at 3.30. Cannot wait for that. You guys are so unique. You're so electro pop, and I had never even heard of that, but it just stops you in your tracks. Like, that is so cool. There's no bands like that around here, probably not a ton in the world. So, how did you guys even get into this? Um, I think that we just, I, we kind of like all collectively love pop music, and then we're just from Louisiana. So, like, okay. the things that we have access to are like tubas and trombones and like just like all, all types of influences so okay. that's that's what i think yeah and i mean there is definitely like a community in this city that makes this type of music for sure but um i think just the addition of the horns and like you know yeah. the, the, especially when charles entered with the tuba and all this stuff i think that that's sort of what solidified our identity in that sort of electro pop with horns jeremy calls it future new orleans okay that's his that. like you know his coins <laughs> term which I, I love i think it's perfect so yeah. how did you guys all get together though and how do you i always want to know like where did the name come from oh the, i i i came up with the name okay no no okay. big deal <laughs> <laughs> no um once i was in i was living in la for like a year okay and then out there they have the vmas mm -hmm. and at the vmas um a bunch of people stand outside the like the big stadium window and watch the stars like go from their dressing rooms and it's like a thing out there that I like I never seen before. But I, I made a joke to a friend of mine, I was like, It's like a people museum because you're like <laughs> behind this glass or whatever and yeah. um, <laughs> I don't know. I just, just I thought stuck. it was funny. Yeah, and I was like, oh, that could be a band name at some point. But then, like years later, we um, we started the band. I love it. Yeah. And do you guys are you best of friends? Are you kind of like brothers? Where it's like, 
All right, dude. I just need the day. Yeah, no, I hate these guys. It's the worst. <laughs> they're the worst. No, we're 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 pretty tight. Yeah, for sure. You know, everybody is cool. I I look up to everybody in the band. Oh, I feel nice. like I learn from them. Yeah. You know, constantly. It just it, it keeps it keeps us all just engaged. And it keeps me young as the elder of the band. <laughs> the elder. Charles you is look, the elder from Boutique. You look young too. Oh my god. Charles gosh. is ageless. Let everybody is, know. Yeah. Charles has no age. <laughs> it's true. He's, He's 80 <laughs> and 14 at the same time. For sure. Yeah. <laughs> oh, so you're an old soul, but you're also fun. And I love your glasses too. I love the blue. Mm-hmm. Just He's got the style. You got to tell me about the mustache too, because it's there to so say? impressive. I, I mean, look. No, I'm asking like, is it like a playoff mustache or this is all the time? Oh, oh my gosh! Yeah, Whoa. I mean, we're okay, first let it playoffs. playing the jazz fest. <laughs> let it be playoffs, known. baby. Let it be known. This is I come from a long lineage of proud Cajun and Mexican men. Okay. This is genetics. This is not. This is not a costume. This is my a part of my identity. It's a way of life. I so. love it. I love it. And talk a little bit about Claire, who's not here right now because she's getting ready for y'all's performance soon. Oh, yeah. Claire is the singer. Also, she writes all the lyrics, and she also helps produce. And she is an amazing singer, amazing person. And she's from Monroe, Louisiana. Upstate? Yeah. We're all from <laughs> Louisiana and somewhere. I'm from New Orleans, Boutte, yeah. Lafayette, respectiv- respectively. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, yeah. So, yeah. And um, you and Claire actually got together originally. You were writing together, and then the whole group kind of came about. Yeah, um, okay. it, it started off with me and Claire. It was like in the Treme neighborhood. We uh, I met through a, like a friend of mine, and like yeah, we just started writing songs the same day that okay. we met. Um, and then we started the project like immediately. And so like we kind of like grown as friends awesome. as as doing it. And then yeah, and all of us have grown as friends like doing this really. Um, and at what point? I mean, you guys are such a big deal now. Like, when did that happen? Because we'll have people on the show, um, and it's like, oh, my God, we just blew up last night. Like, yeah. what was that moment for y'all that people ri- – you were like, oh, people know who we are now, you know? I, I don't – I mean, it, it would be really nice to say that there was, like, this thing that happened, but I don't know. It's just being a part of a scene, being a part of community, and yeah. playing shows with other bands. and. Sure kind of sticking to what you do and growing and and I mean Jeremy and Claire had other iterations of this band before we were in it so there was a lot of morphing and I don't know it'd be cool if there was like one singular like oh we were in a Amazon commercial yeah. but I don't know we're just we're still growing and and um, if you stick with something that you believe is is great and you stay true to your heart then then it's gonna eventually people will take notice of that and, and we we're lucky to have a good proud of people who support us so yeah of course we're at the french quarter fest but what was it like last year getting that call to play jazz fest for the first time oh that was amazing because yeah. jazz fest Incredible. is like i've been watching jazz fest my whole life so it, it was a bucket list thing for me personally awesome. um, yeah it was cool because we also were on a little kind of northeast and then west coast tour and jazz okay. fest fell right in the middle nice. so we was been like gone. Perfect. yeah we've been gone for weeks and we came home play Jazz Fest, and then took off again the next day. Wow. And you guys are going to start touring again late summer. Tell me a little bit more about Relic. I know this is something you took your time on. You had been working on it since after Hurricane Ida. Was that sort of the whole inspiration behind it, or it was just like the timing you had some downtime? Yeah, I would say that was definitely a part of um, a, a part of the inspiration, because the whole album, the theme of it is like flood and like rebuilding and re- rejuvenating. Um, and yeah, so... I would say, yeah. yeah I mean, re- yeah, th- that that whole time of being, like, split up and sort of, I mean, ev- everybody went through it, you know, it was crazy. Um, that was definitely a big inspiration. Claire always says it's kind of a love letter to New Orleans, and we always, we always talk about New Orleans as being this place that we, like, love so much, but it's, like, it's challenging. It's, it's like an uncle that you have that's like, you love him, you know, but, but he shows up to some of the functions. Maybe maybe it's a little chaotic, you know, but, okay. but you can't help but love, you know, that's the relationship people tend to have in South Louisiana where they're from because of the weather. And, yeah. Um, but yeah, so that was, Ida was the big start of, of that whole process. And then coming back together and finishing it was really fun. So you told me that's the fun part, actually, writing. I mean, yeah, for making music and performing music is... I know that probably sounds obvious, I don't know, to people who are musicians, but... Well, we know there's so much behind the scenes, and yeah. it's got to be so hard to, like, turn it on every night. Because, you know, everybody's got a bad day, but you can't have a bad day. Like, this might be the only time this band comes to your concert, so you have to give it 110% every time. Yeah, Thank you for wrong. saying that. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it must be, like, physically exhausting, but also mentally exhausting, and you guys do such a good job, though. Yeah. Thank you. Hey, tell me, like... 
give me the lowdown. Like, who's the class clown? Who's the person who's gonna show up after? Aaron's the, the first class day? clown. Who's okay. Be it, it is not. Oh, that yes. Oh, oh wait, you got it. You already. Got oh it. my God, you you just figured us all out so fast. You did your research. Uh, yeah, yeah. Well, Claire will be. Well, we will beat the sound engineer at to the venue. Loading in it. itself, which, by the way, itself. is way better than being late. So we, that is sure. not that is not a flaw. That's a feature, and we love it, and it's it's great. It's all about time. But Claire's always punctual. I guess I'm a bit of a clown. Charles is the goblin. Charles will just start. We call him. He has goblin energy. When he's in the van on tour, we'll just get on some crazy discussions. And yeah. He's, he's, the, he's the energy. Yeah. Yeah. We do. Really yeah. feel like the genuine care and the um, And I did want to mention your. You do some in the relic um, on your album, the voice of your father. What is that? Explain that to me. Oh yeah, so it w that was that was Claire's idea, okay. um, but I just recorded my dad talking. I asked him, and she had a list of questions I asked him, and um, yeah, and it was just like. It, it was funny because like my my dad we we don't the things that she asked it was stuff that I had never even asked him so it was why she why he was explaining to him, I was like wow I've never heard you talk about that so it was it was a very interesting like beautiful experience for me as well um, I felt like closer to my dad in some ways but then um, yeah we we chopped that conversation up and yeah and we put it on out and he's also like a really big people museum supporter oh, um, he, he comments on all the uh, social media posts so he loved it just as much as you did yeah I mean, well he at, <laughs> and i do think we have a reporter position open if claire's interested oh. you know she can do oh. both yeah. i mean okay. she sounds like she really pulled it out of it oh yeah I mean, that's yeah. the magic yeah. of claire yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> there's a funny story though about jeremy's Go dad ahead. with the uh, with Oh yeah, no. So I, it, I was like, I'm not gonna tell him until we release the album. And then we released it. And then I was like, Dad, you heard a, you heard the album? And he was like, Oh yeah, I heard it. And I was like, Did you notice anything? Like, <laughs> and I was just like, He was like, Wait, what? And it was like, That's you talking. And he was like, That's me. And, and like, he, he probably, like, he never heard his voice. Okay. Yeah, he never heard like, oh, he, he hasn't heard no any clue. like recordings of his voice, so he didn't even know it was him. <laughs> and then so he was like, Oh, I gotta go listen again. And then you know, he was like bragging to his. Uh, to his friends and stuff like you know he's like on the album but yeah it was funny <laughs> i did not expect that out of all the we were on tour at a mexican restaurant in the middle of like tennessee or something and jeremy goes on the phone he was like y'all never believe this my dad did not know that was him he was listening to that's so funny you remember exactly where you were at yeah these are those moments when you guys are in the hall of fame you're gonna be like remember that time <laughs> behind the music baby yeah there we go speaking of which like where do you see you, you've grown just so fast where do you see you guys in a year and 10 years Ooh, that's such a good question actually it was two i, I have an answer <laughs> so let's say next year this time uh-huh we'll still be we'll do prince quarter fest we'll do jazz fest but maybe we all do bonnaroo coachella oh hey you know maybe we pop over to europe do a couple of those festivals okay you know we'll have a couple pockets like in la where we can kind of fill some big rooms in new york you know, handpick some cities and grow, sure. grow some community. Because it's such a, you, you guys are so talented and it's so unique. I think that definitely, you need to hire somebody full time to be doing that for y'all. Oh, we, yeah. have, we have a great, we do good. have a great team okay. of people okay. working with us that, yeah, <laughs> definitely with UTA and um, our whole crew is really great. Yeah. Um, but yeah, Los Angeles, those cities, we, we've kind of like built up some, some audiences outside of Louisiana and we're going to try to just like, you know, cater to those cities, the people who, who've showed up on tour and, and awesome. do that. And yeah, Europe would be great. I mean, we've always wanted to you know, our take former, the show over the pond. Former co-anchor, she was in LA. I'm sure she would have you guys on the morning oh, show. Yeah. Come on. Yeah, we need to Come set on. that up. We need to yeah. set that up. But Sheba. we need you always coming back. Of course. That's one thing about this festival, French Quarter Press, over 300 performances, 1,800 different artists, all local, 100%. That's insane. That's so awesome that they make it a priority to do that. Yeah, yeah that's awesome. I agree. You know? Yeah, that's incredible. Yeah, um, yeah, it's so unique to New Orleans. I mean, we have so yeah. much talent here. It's like I know. insane. Sometimes when you think about it, it's like, man, it is like. But there's so many different venues. Yeah. I mean, we should have that much talent. There's so many awesome places to play yeah. here. Yeah. Yeah. What do you want people to know coming out 3.30 this afternoon? Um, Which is pretty quick. Oh, Thank yeah. you guys so much for your time. Oh, yeah. I want you to know that we all had coffee. We <laughs> all ate. We are ready to We're ready. give you a show. Yes. 1,000%. Awesome. Yeah. If you're at home watching this, you, you got time. You can yeah. make you it out. You definitely have plenty of time. Yeah. I think we have we played outdoors since 
Last year, Jazz Fest? Oh, yeah, no, it's been oh, a while. Wait, yeah. it's so been sorry a I didn't bit. think to ask you about the challenges of the venue. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> it's such a beautiful day. It's it like is a gorgeous day. pretty much yeah. indoors. And people yeah. can hear the music from afar and come up and sure. discover, you know. That's I know you're going to be pulling people from the French Quarter. Yeah. Yeah, everybody coming over here to Spanish Plaza. Just so you know, it has expanded to Spanish Plaza this year. Jack Daniels stage, it's an amazing, amazing stage. Thank you guys so much for your yeah, time. Thank People's thank Museum, they are fantastic. If you don't know anything about them, crawl out of that hole you're living in and definitely yeah. stream their music because they are amazing. Hi, I'm John Lute, here with my friends, Greg Rowe and Mia X. We're getting ready for French Quarter Festival, which features 300 musical performances on more than 20 stages. Everyone is proud to support the festival a celebration of New Orleans music and cuisine. It all takes place April 11th through 14th. Get to scrunchquarterfest.org and download the free app today. Don't quarter festival from WWL. First year, Lufu Indian Restaurant will be a food vendor at French Quarter Fest. Being there is a really big honor for us. They're coming out swinging. This is going to be the Kima roll. This is Indian Chinese and to our cuisine. This is something we are doing out of the box, which is not in our regular menu. This is our Kima samosa. This is the goat. This is what gave us our trademark. This is the butter chicken. We fed a lot of people around the city. So I think this is going to be a different experience, but we are definitely strong, really ready for this, yeah. It's, it's insane. It's the fourth year at the Festival Force, so they already know what to expect. Like, we literally have a line the entire time open, and that's the award-winning chicken sandwich. That chicken sandwich is top of mind many, but they're bringing back a crowd favorite, too. And that is our fish sandwich. We slice these cucumbers ourselves, marinate them every day from scratch. We made more than enough pies for anybody to enjoy our family's century-old recipe. Seasoned French Quarter veterans Mrs. Wheat's Meat Pies will be back again for the 40 year in a row. They'll have some festival exclusives too. Crab and artichoke. And then the shrimp and I do is kind of like a gumbo roux. Food is at the heart of everything they do, but it's the people that keep them going. Seeing my fam, uh, family and friends that I've built relationships with. It's kind of like a reunion every time we do this. More new people, you know. That is the most biggest excitement for me. Leah McNeil, WWL, Louisiana. We're getting ready to celebrate French Quarter Festival. Presented by Chevron, it all takes place April 11th through 14th. Get the schedule at FrenchQuarterFest.org and download the free app today. From WWL, Louisiana. Many know him as Roger Dick. I'm a good 34 <laughs> years in playing these songs and trying to peep, make, make shake their butts. But most know him as DJ Raj Smooth. As a part of the French Quarter Fest board, played a major role in bringing the brand new DJ stage to life. I definitely think it's going to be a great addition to the French Quarter Fest lineup. Just, you know, it's, it's a party, and what's a party without the DJ? It's an idea that was easy to get behind for the stage for Postagen Solar. Hearing Raj Smoove and his plan for how he's curating this was really inspiring. And for DJs like Jessica S but you can call her DS. Performing as a solo act was a dream that she's now living. Seven years, is, it doesn't seem that long to me compared to some of the other DJs that I know. So I'm excited to just be um, considered for it. For both these DJs, putting this corner of New Orleans culture center stage is huge. There's more to the culture now. So, you know, it's, yeah, it's different people that you can, you can highlight. To get a, a spot in a festival that where traditionally hip hop hasn't necessarily been or invited, I think it's just to a, a testament to the art form. And in true New Orleans fashion, you can expect nothing less than a party. Just come prepared to dance and sing and have a good time. A parlories that will undoubtedly be made for all parties in Leah McNeil, WWL, Louisiana. It's all on the WWL-TV app. 
breaking news. We're following breaking news out of Jefferson Parish. Local weather. We are expecting an active weather day, so make certain that you are weather aware. Original stories. It's a story you'll only on WWL-TV. Impactful investigations. Changes are happening after a WWL-TV investigation. The latest from the field. We are live in Covington. With and the Dome. And it was a high drama day in the Superdome. Download the WWL-TV app. Let's do this. Fringe Corner Festival is this weekend and I have rock and do sing jingle. Yeah. New Link Round, Miss Louisiana, Cindy Taylor here. Tell us about what's happening for this weekend and any upcoming shows that you have going on. Well, this weekend, if I didn't know, it's Louisiana favorite free festival, French Quarter Fest. And I'm starting off my weekend. I'll be in Lafitte at the Seafood Festival on Saturday, 4 to 5.30. But then Sunday, French Quarter Fest, one of my favorite festivals. Everybody come down. We're going to have a good time. We're going to let on Roulette on the Chevron stage, 6.40. To, no better way to close French Quarter Fest than the Dupsy way because we can like a rock And if you know him, you know he goes, uh. So Dupsy the first stop. Do you ever get tired? I never get tired. I never get tired. I sleep for about three, then I get up, I work out, then I start partying. That's that's the life of the rock. That's the life. That's how I roll. Thank you. Thanks for having me. And look, Colleen didn't finish the split for y'all because there's splits on the concrete, but I'll do it for y'all on Sunday. Let's play Jambalaya. Not me, not me. I'm not musically inclined. Well, try this. I bet you got it. I bet you got it. Come on, Miss Louisiana. Well, good. That so, was so much fun. I like how you dubbed in your musical. Oh, yeah, because people know me for my music before I no, no, got on the news. No, no, dubbed in the music for No, that was I was playing. I, I'm kidding. Oh, see, he, he, he was he, being mean. We were ready to yeah. be nice and just talk about your great story. Oh. You know what? My Anyways. people will take me. So if you're watching, everybody email Eric Pulse and tell him your email. <laughs> what the odds? <laughs> but Doopsy, Doopsy is a lot of fun. Uh, and you should, you should disband. Yeah, I actually have played with him before. Have you? At Rock and Bowl. Yeah, oh, years cool. ago, or a decade ago, actually. Um, but you know, we all treat you like the king here, right? Okay. I mean, do you feel like we do? No. <laughs> uh, well, go ahead, let's take a look at what Doopsy has to say. So we have Mr. Lumina. Hey, 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 hey. Doopsy, so like. Hold on, just... Eric Colson might have a problem with that. Yeah, 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 we better not tell Eric. Eric think he's the Louisiana man, but I'm the Louisiana man, Eric, because I was born on the bayou. <laughs> 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 So now you get your Not rebuttal. me starting a little drama this morning with the boys. You know, I, I did a story on his dad, actually, when he had a big record out. So I, I've known uh, Doobsy for a long time. All right, and, and it was fun. I'm, I'm glad you're having fun with those pieces. Yeah, yeah. they're great. Looks like it was a good time. And so you're going to talk to Miss uh, Louisiana UA yeah. coming up. She was newly crowned just a couple of weeks ago. Yeah, so I'll sit down with her, her for next, it'll be next Friday segment. Good, looking forward Will to that. Will there be more saxophone on that one, too? Oh, good. I'm, I'm well, too bad. I would love to hear more, Colleen. Yes. And there's so much more that you can expect at this. Hi, I'm John Butte here with Greg Rowe from Chevron and Mia X. We're getting ready for the festival, which features over 300 musical performances in 20 stages. Chevron is proud to support the festival, a celebration of its music, culture, and cuisine. It all takes place April 11th to 10th. Get the schedule at FrenchQuarterFest.org and that free app today. Don't miss French Quarter Festival from WW. And speaking of food, one of my fav one of my favorites, Robert Harrison is joining me. Yes, and I'm does. saying he's my favorite. Malik knows why I'm saying he's my favorite, right? Yes, he does. He does. It's so awesome to be out here with you today. You, you know what? If you don't, Robert, you need to get to know him. He is of Loretta's authentic pralines. And let me tell you, Miss Loretta, thank you. Um, you know, thinking of her, obviously. And you've now taken the helm and you're moving this forward. Yes. I have to say, you have some of the most unique pralines in the city of New Orleans and the unique beignets, by the way. Yes, we have our crab beignet, we have our famous Pauline beignet, and this was all a, a legacy. My mom, we wanted to continue it, and she took two things that were so New Orleans, right. and she mashed them together. You have Pauline filling, Pauline icing, and then we have the nerve to do 
powdered sugar on top. Oh, yes. It's yeah. so amazing. Look, you know, one of my favorite things is sweet potato cookies. Oh, yes. Yes, and we have that out here. We also have our shoe sole, our proline cookie, and our original proline. I would tell you this. Now that you guys are moving forward, I know that you're very busy, staying really busy. Any major changes that are happening right now? Something new you introduce a menu that we'll see at French Quarter Fest? So we also have our proline shoe sole, which is a flat pastry made of cinnamon sugar, a little bit of pecans and cinnamon on it. We also bought out our world famous pictured here Ooh. stuffed crab meat beignet okay and we do that with lump jumbo crab meat a uh -huh. little bit of awesome sauce okay and we just throw the holy chitty in there it's just you know so what? awesome you make sure you stop by and you get you some robert thank you so much thank for you. joining us and taking a picture over at the wwl yes, love louisiana yes. tell everybody to come on out oh please come on out first quarter <laughs> fest 2024 uh we're getting ready to celebrate French Quarter Festival. For Chevron, it all takes place April 11th through 14th. Get the schedule at quarterfest.org and download the free app to WWL Louisiana. Thank you very much. STEM Zone, as you know, the, the French Quarter Fest is a very family event, and they have lots of things for the kids to do. We have stuff over on our love stage, but the STEM Zone is great. Uh, Leah Brown with Chevron, one of the big sponsors for a French Quarter Fest, and Jamie from the Audubon Institute. W what is the STEM Zone all about? Break the STEM Zone. <laughs> We actually have a scavenger hunt. We have several partners who are going to join us, Audubon Nature Institute being one of them. Um, parents can bring their kids out. There are a lot of science, technology, engineering, and math, hands-on activities for students to do. So, Which is make fun sure. and educational. Yeah, that's right. And, and you guys are always trying to, to, to stress that, that STEM can be fun and it really does help kids, you know, nurture that educational side. And tell me about these experiments you've got here. Sure. Uh, what we have here is an easy um, activity that you can make at home with your kids. It demonstrates some superpowers of Louisiana's wetlands. Um, so what I have here is um, a coastline and our waterways that has no wetlands. And here, because one of their superpowers is they act like a sponge to help protect our water and our land. A very elaborate setup here. So Absolutely. You guys, you guys, easy you guys spared cool. no expense. <laughs> Easy to make. Um, we're, we wanted to create something that that kids would be able to go back and make selves. And that's that's really good. And, and um, uh, what kind of lesson are you trying to teach kids here? Sure. So here, wetlands act like sponges, and they help protect our coastline during hurricanes. They help protect our waterways from um, pollutants going in, like plastic debris. And um, so here, it's it's. What happens if we have no coastline or no wetlands, and what it is like if we do? That's Super good. Simple. Good lesson there. Thank you much. And Leah, why is it so important for Chevron to help sponsor the French Quarter Fest? Because with big sponsors, it'd be hard to put on a big free fest like this. Yes. Yeah, so French Quarter Festival, um, it's about music, people, culture. It's also about economic development. So last year, the festival brought in more than 300 million in economic dollars for the city of New Orleans. And so that's an extremely important factor. We want to ensure that we're contributing to the areas that we live and work. Um, so that means sponsoring events like festival. It also means that ensuring that when we have these types of events, we're finding opportunities to educate. And it also helps the, the French Quarter Fest expand and grow because all this on the riverfront we're seeing is new. Yes, this year we do. they do have some youth stages, so we're really excited about that, that there will be some yuck performances that are going to happen down on this side. Um, they also have a culinary stage, um, so those are two new things, as well as the DJ stage. So there's something for everyone out here. And Jamie, how long has the Audubon Institute been involved with French Quarter Fest? I think for as long as, long as we've had the STEM zone, as far yes. as I'm aware. Yes. Yeah. So a very yeah. long time. And, and uh, now you'll have a lot more stuff at the, at the STEM Absolutely. zone at, at the fest Absolutely. than we're seeing here. Yes, we'll have, <laughs> <That's all right. laughs> we'll have um, a lot of information about some of Audubon's conservation programs. We'll have um, some hands-on, uh, we call them biofacts, but some hands-on um, activities and things uh, about native, uh, native wildlife that live in wetlands, um, as well as this activity that kids will be able to interact with. And Audubon's such a big part of the riverfront with the aquarium and the insectarium over there. So we're just glad to have you guys here. And Leah, thank you for, uh, for, for uh, you know, all the things you do for uh, French Quarter Fest. Jamie, thanks for coming in. Thank you. All right, Angela, where are we going? Great. To say it's
it's the first year Lufu India Serrano will be a food vendor at French Quarter Fest. Being there is really big honor for us. They're coming out the gate swinging. This is going to keep my role. This is Indian Chinese influence to our cuisine. This is thing we are doing out of the box, which is not in our regular menu. This is our keema samosa. This is the goat. This is what gave us our time. This is the butter chicken. We have fed a lot of people around the city. So I think this is going to be a different experience, but we are definitely strong. We are definitely ready for this, yeah. It's, it's insane. It's the four year at the festival for Southern, so they already know what to expect. Like we literally have a line the entire time we're open, and that's the award-winning chicken sandwich. That chicken sandwich is top of mind for many, but they're bringing back a cult favorite too. And that is our fish sandwich. We slice these cucumbers ourselves, marinate them, everything made from scratch. We made more than enough pies for anybody who wants to enjoy our famous century-old recipe. Seasoned French Quarter Fest veterans Mrs. Eats Meat Pies will be back again for the 40th year in a row. They'll have some festival exclusives too. Crab and artichoke, and then the shrimp and I do is kind of like a Cajun gumbo. Food is at the heart of everything they do, but it's the people that keep them going. Seeing my fam, uh, fast family and friends that I've built relationships with. It's kind of like a reunion every time we just to meet more new people, you know. That is the most biggest excitement for me. Leah McNeil, WWL, Louisiana. And our crime coverage, the way that we're approaching crime now. We look at things on the surface level. And when you look at the surface level, you tend to think, oh, well, if we just need, if we arrested the carjacker, then the crime would go down. If we would simply put people in jail, give stiffer penalties, then crime will go down. Well, obviously it's happened in the past in New Orleans and crime did go down for some again and shot right back up again. So at some point, our response have to be superficial and we have to ask the question, what is the cause of this? What's the nucleus of the problem? What's the thing that's right in of it that we're just missing? You know, we have to take a look back what we're doing wrong at why communities were disinvented, at statistically why more crimes happen in this community versus that one. Um, we have to take a look at what pushing people to do crime is it a pot you know is it income how do we level the playing field so one would want to commit a robbery there are so many different things we can give to this and i think that we've tried all of the ways or at least law enforcement has tried all that give you an immediate response which is let's arrest our way through this lock people up let's put them um, away or guilties or charging teenagers as adults. I WWL and our crime focuses on while this thing and while we do understand why some of those penalties are issued, we why it's happening and why particularly is it happening or with rather one demographic. Let's look at the overall issue and not just address what our you know, quick concerns. Well, first of all, Katie, Mike, and I have a combined 90 years of experience. So we know what it is to be in New Orleans, what it is to cover this town. And we have the most experience any station in this area. As I've worked at WWL over the years, things that I'm most proud of in the investigative unit is the fact that my stories make a change. That comes in the form of changing laws. That comes in the form of elected officials that ended up in jail because of the story we did. Um, that goes for myself, David Hammer, Mike Pearl. Three of us have done stories that have really made an impact in the community. And I think it's one of the things that WWL's legacy is of. It's being a part of the community. It's making a difference. It's being a voice for people who can't use theirs or don't have one. Trust me, uh, stories that appear on TV when it really has 
the personal impact. We stick people, those families, those institutions, some for years, and in my case, I can honestly say a life in New Orleans. Well, I'm from New Orleans. I grew up in New Orleans. I want to see this community do better. I want it to improving. So that's what motivates me at the end of the day. That gets me going every day to try to expose the inequities and in to expose the problems with our government and hopefully fix them. Presence is a backstop for so many th that could be going wrong. Sure, some things slip up momentarily, but there's a track record and we're the ones who follow those tracks. We really want to make sure, first of all, of course, that we're accurate. That's huge for us as meteorologists. We want to do a really good job with that. Of course, we want to get the information to viewers in a way that's really clear, understandable, and in a way that can really help you decide what. What we do here as a team at WWL, we trust of all that uncertainty so you can make the decision to uh, or do what you need to do for approaching storms or whatever the active weather may be. There are folks out there that have that instilled fear of severe the unknown of um, pop-up thunderstorms, tornadoes, as well as probably one of the biggest events in southeast Louisiana being her. And so I try and quell those fears by answering all of the questions the public may have about these events. The, you know, there's, there's avoid them usually, but if I can kind of answer those questions and put folks at ease, I've done my job. Really what motivates me to get up every single day is knowing people are safe and they know exactly what to do when Everything has a story. My father once shared a recipe with me. And outside of the actual recipe with bell peppers, he shares the story of being taught how to make stuffed bell peppers, talking about the family, connects back to St. John the Baptist Parish, you know, to my growing up in Edgar, Louisiana my grandfather growing up with Warden and just I think that everything connects a family and it connects us back to community that's through big you know whether that connects us back to Jermaine that's food that's through the architecture and that easy the clothing that we wear our slang where you at you know you know, being able to share all of those kind of New Orleans colloquial, those things that we say, the fact that we say Burgundy, not Burgundy, you know, the fact that we could give you words like Chapatula, connect all of those things uh, back to community and back to, so I think that in, in celebrating like the masking Indians and celebrating food and culture, it is honoring those that came before us and honoring the people who gave things either out of necessity or gave us these things because they were they just wanted to give something great. Right? We're out here at Spanish Plaza in front of the Love Louisiana stage, and we have music here at Spanish Plaza this morning. We had James Andrews in our mm -hmm. 6 o'clock hour, and we got some uh, students from Loyola in this hour. Yeah, they're performing on Friday on the Loyola stage. Esplanade in the Shades, you definitely want to check them out. But for a preview, we've got them now, the Kissing Disease, performing some of their own original music. It's all on the WWL TV app. Breaking news. We're following breaking news out of Jefferson Parish. Local weather. We are expecting an active weather day, so make certain that you are weather aware. Original stories. It's a story you'll only see on WWL TV. Impactful investigations. Changes are happening after a WWL TV investigation. The latest from the field. We are live in Covington. And the dome. And it was a high drama day in the Superdome. 
Download the WWL TV app. All right, thank you very much, Brandon. And yeah, we did. And, and uh, you know, we're thinking about the folks in, in Slidell, mm -hmm. but we're also here ready to start off one of the biggest free fests in the country, French Quarter Fest. Emily Madero, the, the, the CEO of, of uh, French Quarter Fest. Uh, you must have had some tense moments yesterday. We sure did. We were just really grateful that it was the day before the festival opened. We were able to anticipate, make arrangements to batten down the hatches, make all the stages safe. Did you have any damage or anything? You know, we had some minor damage just because the amount of water that the sites took in, but we had done a lot of preparation and we were most concerned about personal safety and yeah. crew members and staff members being out here. So um, we just pivoted everything a little bit later in the day and, and we're really grateful that we were able to load in on Time. Speaking yeah. of those crew, crew members, definitely had to put in some overtime, and I know that sort of shifted when they were setting up. It pushed it back. Also, you had some earlier setups. So for them, I'm sure they were putting in a lot of hours. Oh, yes. There's been a lot of moving chess pieces behind the scenes. Late night, early morning. Our food vendors have, have done a lot of work late night and early morning. You know, same with all of the vendors that we have here on site, whether it's sound equipment, stages, putting mm -hmm. signs up. So we're doing everything we can to welcome everybody at 11 o'clock right. when the music starts. And where we are here on the riverfront at Spanish Plaza, this is all new this year. This is something you're adding for the first time. Uh, at French Quarter Fest. I mean, we're thrilled. It's such a beautiful site. As you can see, it's a gorgeous site right on the riverfront. We've got, you know, the fountain behind us. I think this is going to be one of the most energized, activated sites that we have at French Quarter Festival. And the lineup at the French, at the Jack Daniel stage is just incredible Which is, this year. Yeah, to our left over by the river walk, to, uh, to our right, rather. I don't know why I left from my right. <laughs> uh, and then to the left of us is going to be the new food stage, which is really something new and, and kind of neat. Yeah, we have two new stages this year. So we're expanding musical genres. For the first time, we're bringing uh, DJ talent. So New Orleans has such a wealth of talent here and diversity of talent. So you can go to the PosiGen DJ stage right over here in front of the aquarium. And then on the other side of the aquarium, for the first time, we're showcasing our culinary talent. So Love Chef that. Kevin Belton will be interviewing. I've our heard of him. Vendor. Yeah. <laughs> I know you that should, guy. You should know Kevin. <laughs> He's That's a nice awesome. guy. It's going to be great. I mean, the food talent here is part of the reason why people love this festival so much. It's everything from street food to fine dining, and you can go and you can learn about the chefs, their culinary journey, the recipes, and all the dishes that you can try here at the festival. Yeah, we're looking forward to that. Even more food this year than last. I know. Always more food. Always a good thing. Calories don't count great. at festival. Absolutely. You get your steps in. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> I know. And, you know, when we're talking about the schedule, everything stands so people can still come out and enjoy everything just as it is. Um, you know, what do you think? You've been doing this so long. You said since 2017, the festival has a long history. What do you think is the thing that makes the French Quarter Fest so special? I mean, I I think it has really organically evolved quite literally from the streets of New Orleans. It's a big block party. It's a family reunion. It's very authentically New Orleans. It mm -hmm. features only Louisiana talent. You can take so many festivals in major cities and put them anywhere in the United States, but the only way that you're going to experience French Quarter Festival is right here in New Orleans. And for the city, it brings in a lot of tourists, a lot sure. of locals. Mm -hmm. A lot of locals sometimes don't get to come to the quarter that much or you know, because sometimes, you know, it's kind of hard to, to, to park and things like that. But I think everybody changes their attitude for French Quarter Fest. It's just, like I said, it's a really joyous family reunion. You're going to see friends that you haven't seen forever. You know, it's kind of like Mardi Gras. There's so many different ways that you can experience it, whether you like being out here on the riverfront, you like the funk bands, or you can find really quiet, intimate moments with traditional jazz. You know, we're for the first time we're producing at the BK House. It's a beautiful historical property. You can sit in the garden and enjoy some incredible music. And great for New Orleans, yeah. a great economic impact. Emily, yeah. thank you very much. Thank yeah, you. Thank you. And speaking of some of the great music that we have, we have some of the students that we are introducing you this morning from Loyola. They're going to be performing on Friday. Let's get to- On the Loyola stage. On the Loyola stage. So it's easy to remember. Let's get to the kissing disease. Take it away. Louisiana. What can you say? There's no worse like it. Brimming with history, overflowing with culture, a melting pot of beautiful people. Some generations deep, others still getting used to the humidity. It's waterways bustling with industry, it's streets alive with artistic expression, and the food, oh, the food. But what makes Louisiana great is its people. It's wonderful people, still standing, 
still persevering, still fighting. Because here's the thing, we got problems too. We own up to them. We're not scared of tough issues. We don't back down from tough questions and we aren't gonna run away when things get hard. Sure, we got problems, but WWL, that's why we're here. We uncover lies and find the truth, expose injustice and get people what they deserve, keep people informed and keep them safe. We dig deep, find solutions, solve problems and get stuff done. We tell stories and start conversations. We celebrate the good and try to fix the bad. We support local businesses and help them thrive. We work hard, do good, and have fun doing it. From Laplace to St. Bernard, Homer to Covington, Metairie to New Orleans, WWL-TV is now WWL Louisiana. We love Louisiana and fight for it. Hey, good morning. Yes, we are a little to the side here because I'm hanging out with the Kissing Disease uh, Loyola students who are going to be performing. Very excited because it is your first festival performance. Yes. That's very exciting. So you guys are gonna be on Friday. I wanna talk a little bit about how you guys got together. You guys are obviously all students at Loyola. Yeah. What was that process like? Um, basically, we were all in class together. I was in class with these two, and I just really wanted to form a band, so I kind of just went up to them and was like, hey, <laughs> uh, let's do something. I love it. And now you guys are creating uh, music, and you guys perform um, some covers, but mostly your own original music. Yes. Okay. Yeah. And so what would you describe your music as if no one's, well, they've been listening this morning, of course, tuning in, but how would you guys describe your music sound? Yeah, well, um, we're doing like an acoustic vibe right now, but we're mostly a pop rock ensemble, I'd say. Yeah. And I didn't even introduce anyone. Tell them your name. Oh, I'm Eddie. Eddie, okay. And you want to introduce us? Oh, I'm Maddie. And then who um, else do we have here? And then here? this is Dylan, and this is Spencer. Hi, guys. You guys sound great this morning. And so first, first festival, I want to ask, how does it feel? Uh, it feels really awesome. It's super exciting. I gotta say thank you to our school, Loyola, because they, they're really helping us set this thing up, you know? It's awesome. Super excited. And we don't have to go into detail, but we learned that you came up with the band name? Um, yeah. A little bit? Okay, I won't put him on the spot here. Are you excited to be performing at your first festival? Very excited. Yeah. yeah. French Quarter Fest is huge. Yeah. 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 You guys are going to be uh, performing on um, the... Tell me again, the, the Loyola stage. Well, what did we call it? Esplanade in the Shade stage. There we go. Okay, well, it was great talking with you guys, but we really want to listen to you. So I'm going to let you guys take it away, the kissing disease. Like a dead lover at night, I lie awake in the bed cold. Let the wood grow grass and the sheep. and coming to you live from the Love Louisiana stage right next to the Jack over here at Spanish Plaza and it is a French Quarter Fest 2024 and it is a gorgeous day the weather is perfect complete opposite to what it was yesterday I am here with one of my favorite DJs well he really is my favorite DJ DJ Raj Smooth and I know that a lot of y'all know who Raj Smooth is how you doing today I'm doing great okay so now you're not just out here enjoying the festival oh no we were just having a conversation about the DJ uh, stage that they the have Fozzie now the Gen DJ stage going yeah. on right in Spanish Plaza yeah you got Next that you were involved with that yeah I helped it out, you know, uh, curate some of the DJs and, you know, put the whole idea together. You know, I'm, I'm just happy to be a part of it with French Quarter Fest that we could bring some hip hop to the, uh, to the scene out here. You know what? And if, if guys don't know you, the young people may only see you at Ace. Younger people may see you DJing, mm -hmm. whether it's at the Pelicans games, whether it's at the Saints games. You are literally the DJ of New Orleans. You are everywhere. But you have a storied history. I mean, we go all the way back to cash money. I mean, even before that, like right. that was that was a decade in. You know, I started in junior high school. Shout out to all the Livingston Seagulls <laughs> out there. Uh, you know, but through junior high school, high school, college at Dillard, right. um, it's, it's it's been my life. It's been my career. Like I've I've never had a day job. Right. So you know, it's, it's been uh, an amazing experience, and you know, 30 plus years doing it, and you know, I'm just happy that I can still get on stages and talk to people. You know. Like this. Well, so. you know, I love the fact that I can see you everywhere. I mean, my, you know, I always give you a hug when I see you at mm -hmm. A's. I always recognize when, you know, when Raj Smooth is playing. 
trust me, he always gets the room turned up, whether it's a game or anything, you know, just you must particular touch. What is your secret? Is there like a Raj Smooth sort of DJ secret you have? It's just, just paying attention. That distinguishes you? Paying attention to the room and, and making sure, you know, you play the right song at the right time. Right. You know, like there's a, a lot of different, you know, vibes, genres, energy. Um, and just, you know, trying to find that, that middle ground and get everybody there having a good time and just loosened up. Well, I know that right now there's a big demand for different genres of music. So you have Afrobeats that's really getting up right now. Hot. It's getting a lot of people out there on the scene and on the dance floor. How do you keep up with all of it? Do you just kind of pay attention to it on the charts? Um, I don't really pay attention to the charts. I, again, I pay attention to the people, you right. know, like... What might I hear somebody playing when they're down the street? You know, what is it that uh, folks come and request? Like, what are the people that I'm around listening to? You know, what are some things that I happen to come up that I like? You know, because right. a lot of times the songs on the radio are not the records that go all the way up. Really? So, you know, just finding those, you know, the little niche songs that you play and people like, yo, like, I didn't know anybody else knew about it. Like, right. I appreciate you for playing that for me. Right. So, you know, being able to make those personal connections, even within a larger crowd, I think is very important. I, as a person who sometimes is on the club scene in New Orleans, the club scene in New Orleans is typically different mm -hmm. uh, than the club scene in other cities. Mm -hmm. So what is it different for you? Like, when you play and you DJ here, what gets the crowd moving here versus someone in Dallas or someone in New York City? I mean, every region kind of has its own style of music you right. know like you have bounce music and once you kind of get like 30 miles out to Orleans, you got like ratchet you know saying right, music right, and right. uh you know the jig off you know texas has their own style atlanta has their own style so you know a lot of that just comes from the culture and from the experience a lot of the music we rock to down here with the bounce music has a lot of you know jazz and brand right. influences in it with the rhythms and all the second line stuff so you know playing music that speaks to the that you're in front of so even when i would travel and you know be out of town doing stuff out of those cities you know right. what I'm saying and knowing what those people react to because uh like i'm there to play what the people want to hear right. that they can have a good time. Do you typically find yourself now? You're how many? How many in the game? Oh my goodness! Thirty-four. Thirty-four years in the game. Do you feel like you have served now as a mentor to other younger DJs that are coming? Because I I've, see a I've, lot of people in your way. I've definitely tried to uh, reach back. You know, like my dad um, is a is a jazz musician and composer and uh, an educator. You know what I'm saying? So it's like when. I was little, little, and people would be coming to the house, and he would be, like, schooling them and teaching them. And, you know, if, if there's nothing else I've tried to do to father, follow my father's footsteps was, right. you know, to uh, to be a mentor regard and pass on the knowledge and the things that I've learned to the next generation. Well, you told me earlier today that you had some involvement with the for the DJs mm -hmm. now. Um, you were also on the board for yes. French Quarter. So how did this conversation come about? Why did you think having your own stage was important? I mean, you know, I, I've been doing my thing um, in the city for a while, and uh, French Quarter Fest always, from my experience from dealing with them for this short amount of time, are very interested in expanding the experience and, right. and catering to different audiences to be more inclusive. Right. So, um, you know, definitely try to reach a, a younger generation and trying to figure out some ways to do that. and. Uh, you know, I guess the DJ idea had been floating around for a while. So, you know, coming into the mix, it was like, yo, let's, let's bounce this off a ride. We definitely need to do that. And it's, it's came to fruition. I think the conversation about inclusivity and all activities in Jazz Fest, whether it's French Quarter Fest, Jazz Fest, Armstrong Festival, whatever it is, I think that's something that's been at the front. And so having people like you at the table on the planning stages of it seems like it came to fruition what it is that you wanted. I'm, I'm just, I get to help put my people on. Right. You know what I'm saying? Like, yo, like, cut my people a check. Like, right. let's go. You know, put them on the platform. Uh, let's get everybody a chance to shine. And, you know, that helps stay in the whole experience, you right. know, and make it greater year after year. Is there something here that you're looking forward to? I know that you are DJing everywhere and you're consistently busy all the time. Mm -hmm. You just, he just ran down his schedule to me for this weekend and I don't see how he's going to give room for sleep. What do you look forward to this year? Um, I don't know. Like, I, I think what I was excited to see has already happened. Like, everybody is in, you know, like right. the opportunity has been given 
um, and people whose names are on the rule that haven't had a chance to, you know, like they might have been out here as a fan or a customer to kind of like see what was going on. Right. But now, you know, they have a chance to officially be involved as a part of the weekend um, and deliver that experience in fans out here. So, right. you know, having, you know, like Mahala back sent me a text earlier today. He was yeah. like, yo, like I'm done. You up next. Like, <laughs> I feel, you know what I'm saying? Like, I feel like I played a part in, you know, making sure he got an opportunity to be able to do his thing. You know, yeah. I'm doing it tonight. Tomorrow, um, the artist is going to be out here DJing, you know what I'm saying? I help get her plugged in. And right. uh, Hoss be out here with TBC Brass Band. Everybody get your zone. Sunday, <laughs> Bible Fly Girl and Poppy A is going to be out here on the Gumbo um, little set. Yeah. Uh, Flag Boy Gears and the Brass of Hollis is going to be playing. Oh. Water C is going to be out here doing their thing. It's like being able to be involved with all of my people out here and help to contribute. That's, that's what I look forward to, and that's right. what I'm happy about. And that's just why we need people like you table, though, so that we can get more of our people on the scene. Yeah, we, we here, you know, we represent. Okay, so tell me this. You're going to get on the stage. You're getting on the stage this weekend. I'm, I'm going on in like 10 minutes. Oh, he's going, time, no, time he's going on in 10 minutes. What's o'clock? I don't know. He's, what time you have 30 more minutes. Okay, it's 5 o'clock. 5 o'clock. Okay. He's going on to 30 minutes. But when you get up there, when you typically play a festival, I'll be different from playing a club. Give me the DJ secrets because I uh, – friend DJ Vintage I love him very much dog. but I always like joke with him when he's like I can easily do this and he said you wish how do you develop the souls I don't even know how to play the next song on my playlist it's just just a practice and experimentation like Is every there anything time that went bad for you first gig your first gig what my, was that my like? first my first DJ gig it was a 13 year old birthday party uh -huh. for my friend Carmen who used to live with the uh the 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 apartment from me in um when I used to live in town in the east. Oh yeah. So yeah. she moved uh you know up they got a crib out of East over. Yeah. And you know I was her partner so it's like I DJ'd her thirteenth birthday party. She went to Fantasy Williams right. and you know I'm young. I'm fourteen years old and I think everybody likes the same music I like. <laughs> <laughs> so when I go on this party, like I'm playing Tribe Called Quest and yeah. Ruby and like all of this backpack hip hop, New right. York East Coast stuff. Um, you know, I thought it went well, but then the, the next year, this girl, you know, we just happened to be talking um, at 35, the beginning of the first couple of days back to school. She was like, um, oh, you DJ comedy. And I was like, yeah. She was like, I heard you can't DJ. Oh. <laughs> Like, no. like just, ah. <laughs> so that was kind of like, you know, the, the early dawn on me that everybody does not like what I like. Right. And I need to find out what the people want to hear so that they can be like, yo, the greatest time ever. Right. So like after that, you know, I was off to the race. Like, let me see what, you know, then, I, then it was kind of like a, a science thing for me. Like, check this out. Like, right, see right. if this works and finding out what goes on. And then, um, you know, when I was at university, uh, like second semester of my freshman year, I started doing all of the events. So the basketball games, the parties, the poetry nights, like, oh, we just need some music in the cafeteria. Raj, come set up. Right. So, you know, it kind of had a laboratory to figure out uh, what people wanted to hear, how they wanted to hear it. Um, you know, and I'm still figuring it out now. Like every every gig is practice for the next one. Right. All right. People can see you on which stage? The Posigen stage in thir five right. o'clock. So if you're not here, Drive fast, get here, we're gonna do it. All right, and it's pretty good crowd out here, but it's not too, too packed, so people can still get here today, so yeah. you can check out DJ Raj's move. There should be some always. parking on it somewhere. Yeah, it's I'm positive. sure there is. Look, I love you so much, I've always appreciated you, and appreciate what you're doing, not only for the culture, but bringing in the culture into places where we don't typically see it. That's me excited. All right, so we know that you gotta go. DJ Raj's move, thanks so All good. much. Hi, I'm John Butte, here with my friends from Chevron and Mia X. We're getting ready for French Quarter, which features over 300 musical performances on more than 20 states. Chevron is proud to support the festival, a celebration of New Orleans music, culture, and cuisine. It all takes place April 11th through 14th. Get the schedule at FrenchQuarterFest.org and download free app today. Don't miss French Quarter Festival from DWL. Happy Friday, everybody. Colleen Seeley here out at French Quarter Fest here at Spanish Plaza. We are at the WWL Love Louisiana stage here with Zach's Kicks Ass. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. All right, tell everybody your names. What's happening, man? You go first. 
I'm Albert. Albert? I'm, I'm Alfred. And Alfred. Yeah. It's easy to get mixed up, people. Yeah, be careful. Right? Yeah, we look just alike. My dad does it, which is weird because there's some cosmetic differences. Between yeah, the bun. The bun, right? Yeah. It's, yeah. it's just the bun. Yeah, and the glasses. Yep. <laughs> That's the biggest difference between us. Exactly. Like societally. And I was in the bun too. But, um, yeah, so you guys are performing today. What time? Where? Uh, two o'clock at the Jack Daniels stage. It's gonna be right super, there. super. If dope. you can see behind us, there's a band up there right now on the Jack Daniels stage. That's where we'll be at 2:10. Yeah, so yeah. If you're on the couch right now, watching this on your Facebook, on your IG, or whatever, come on out here for 2:10. Yes. And Spanish Plaza. This is where we're at. Just left of the quarter, looking at Jackson Square. Now, tell me about how you guys got together. Good. Where were we? We were on the road, right? We were on the road. Specifically, Detroit is this. I remember where we really like kind of locked in and started chopping game. Um, he was formerly in uh, Tank of the Best. I opened one of those tours, got to got to know my man. We started like chopping game. I actually had the very first picture we ever took together. Aww. Um, and after that, you know, we just kind of started talking and we got in the studio, made some music, started laughing, and that's Kicks I was born. You just hit it off. So you guys met on tour, two yes. separate tours. Yeah, and like cool together. We were like, made the same jokes, kind of like enjoyed the same stuff and just kind of grabbed towards each other. For sure. And then uh, our manager, Tavia, was like, yeah, get together in the studio. So we get together in the studio and we make one song for like three hours, but we also laughed for like two and a half hours. True indeed. And made like 30 minutes of music. So it was really cool and it was a good fit. The manager obviously saw the three there between you two. Now we've had you both on the morning show before. Yes. What makes your shindig unique? You go. Ooh. What makes our shindig unique? Sh uh, unique shindig. Um, hmm. I have an alternate pronunciation for hey, shindig. Yo. Uh, Language of origin. Your duo. <laughs> oh yeah. Okay. Your okay. Our duo. It's actually really. I don't know, man. I think uh, sense of humor is very important to us, but we take our music extremely serious. You know what I mean? Like we're we're, we're musicians first, and uh, we kind of use sense of humor as a way to kind of like translate. Um, and so I think that's what kind of differentiates us from a lot of different bands. And uh, I mean, I'll just say it. We're like really, really good. High craft. And Alfred is one of the best rappers in the city and the world. And a good instrumentalist, so we bring that together in a way that is like, you know, a lot of hip hop right now is very programmed. And it's very excellent, and it's actually probably never been because more excellent people can share this stuff because of the Dude. democratization of distributing music on the internet. Um, but like, we have something unique to contribute because we have what combined like 40 years of live performance Pretty much. experience. <laughs> so we just have a unique thing with being funny, but also we're like, hey, let's be funny, but kind of with a point. This like elite level of craft and just like goofing around and it's like maybe say something um and you know what entertainment at all costs That's what I, yeah. and what's funny is that because you guys are so unique and if, for those who have not watched them before do so because they are not like any other band and you have original as well what that oh yeah yeah and i actually saw your saxophone videos and facebook feed i'm like how do we become friends this is before they came on the morning show we actually in a saxophone jazz workshop years ago <laughs> at Tipitina's and Hug harbor and met mutually through somebody else and then what 15 years later yes. i was like this guy looks familiar how do we know that this is a mutual friend and then we just met yeah. Udio, yeah we were yeah. At, we were at wwo and it was like that's colleen yeah. yeah i think you hit me up afterwards and i was like the last message was from like 2012. <laughs> <laughs> it's a timeline man oh yeah <laughs> oh yeah Indeed. Indeed. Uh, so with tank and the bangas have you performed with her too or was um you did it was albert oh together? yeah yeah i was in okay. that band for uh, almost 10 years like nine years yeah where we met, we were, he was opening for us, and we were on the road, and that's where we all met. Exactly. Okay, gotcha. And I heard that you got mixed up with one of her saxophone players. He's so funny, buddy. ATN's Duple, like, uh, you know, he's he's uh, he got his own thing going on now, and he's uh, he's uh, uh, you know, I don't want to put him on blast or make any statements. He's about, putting you on blast about his relationship status. Back in the day, when he was uh, a young buck, roaming wild, and so to speak. Uh, he would be on the dating apps and get confused with me for whatever reason. And this actually led to a hilarious incident where somebody messaged him. He was like talking to somebody or somebody. And then they went to my profile and I have a girlfriend and make it known and have for a long time, like six years. Are you still together? Yeah, not six years. It is six years. <laughs> Love you, babe. And he got hit because they went saw his they saw my profile based on his profile and they were like, why are you lying to me? Why do you have a girlfriend? You single and they was like, and he was just like, ha ha ha, that's a different person. And they were like, no bro, why are you, why are you trying to run game on me? And he was like, this is ridiculous. Like, so I don't know stuff, but it's happened a lot. He would walk out on stage um, when I wasn't tour with the band and people would be like, Albert, 
What's up? I don't think it's alike. so funny. We don't look anything alike. Beautiful men. Yeah. But we don't think alike. You know? So that's how he figured it out was, okay, I'm associated with him because you two were intertwined together. And, oh, I, that's how I must be getting mixed up with. I like to think maybe I helped him sometimes, not just hurt him. It sounds like I mostly hurt his prospects. Yeah, it's, just a little, it's a little crazy <laughs> angle. It's like, what? Hey, man, you hate me. Yeah, I know. I saw, I'm really no, just trying to relate facts, okay? That's what it's called. Facts kicks ass. Facts kicks right? ass. Facts, yeah. facts to facts. We're, yes, we're changing. And speaking of. April 15th, it's kicks ass. All right. Oh, well, <laughs> like we all know that. But how did you get involved in the music industry? Did you grow up singing, performing? Yeah, um, for me personally, uh, I started rhyming around six years old. My oldest brother, uh, Bangs, rest in peace, he um, started rhyming and kind of had a little bit of a buzz around the city. And so he used to kind of rhyme. My middle brother, James, he also freestyled a lot. So that's kind of why I got both of those skills from. In the last few years, I started writing, kind of creating my own style. And uh, at June 6, 2000, at the age of 17, I performed at the Dragons Den for the very first time. And uh, it was a live aspect. is just one of my favorite things. And you flash forward a few years, and the cover of Off Beat. Oh! All sooky, sooky now. The incredible, yeah. guys. And I had to laminate it and print it myself because Off Beat didn't anymore. Off Beat's fully digital. So Alfred Banks went to a print shop oh, himself, yeah, yeah. took screenshots, yes, and we did. didn't bring the collated booklet he made as if it was a magazine. That's incredible. But he did make his own magazine because he said, no, no, media, I'm bringing you back. 100%, man. So this is a very, very big honor, right? Absolutely. Was that a dream of yours to be on yes. print magazines? So this is why it's a big deal to get yeah. and be like, I'm going to be of course, on the of day course, cover. Of course. The thing is, this is our first cover together. I'm super excited about that because we've been working very hard for the past like year specifically to kind of get things going. And some of the love and energy we've been just so cool. So to see it kind of reverberate through the city and start to really make an uh, impact is beautiful, man. Because me and this man work very hard on our music and on our craft. This is really, really cool. Was it your dream to be making this face? No. On, I will say, when I first saw the picture, I was like, what? But I love it. for us? <laughs> yeah, I. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, and that's actually how you look in some of your videos. I've watched some of the music videos that you guys do. So we have, we have a weird dynamic. It's like, he's the guy go there, and I'm more the straight guy that's like, uh, I don't really want to. I'm trying to draw most of our relationship. Maybe what makes us unique, back to the earlier question, is um, me testing Alfred's boundaries and him resisting them. <laughs> a good put balance. Yeah, it's Big a tension. Facts. There's Big a narrative facts. built in. Take that for relationships. All right, so at what point do you feel you really became successful that you're like making it? Um, Has that happened yet? I mean, <laughs> we're, we're in the WWL. I mean, I feel like right yeah. now we made it right here. French Quarter Fest, baby, on, on Friday on the Jack Daniel stage at 210 Spanish Plaza, Queen, Come on, in the man. WWL 10 on it's the river. Up. So, so we made the it. And it's stuck. It's stuck. And it went. Yeah. And we're I feel like we made it. I feel like I've arrived now. Yeah. So tell us about what instruments you play. You're diverse. With I your play life. saxophone and piano and bass and drums and guitar. I played tuba in the eighth grade. I played bassoon in ninth grade. And uh, I've stuck a clarinet in my mouth before. Okay. All Any right. that you what? No, I, right. I think. I mean, did you actually? I tried. It didn't sound good. Okay. Oh. <laughs> you said what I play, not what I was good at. Ah, so what are you actually Saxophone all above? and flute. Okay, just sax. Yeah, no, the other ones are pretty bad. But <laughs> make it till you make it. Absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> and that's well, a montage that you posted recently, too, where you actually created multiple instruments, but it was all you playing. Yeah, I learned how to, um, I learned how to myself in, so I was playing, like, bass and drums and piano and some flute. Yeah. It's amazing. It, it was really, really cool. And I've been loving, I've been, like, really practicing the instrument. That's what I love to do. I've learned a lot about myself, especially over the past year, um, doing this project with Alfred, about what's actually sustainable for me. Artist, what do I actually like? And it's playing the instruments. Like, I live to just, like, play along to records with people I love, learn stuff, and compose music and record it in myself. I, I just love that. And it's, like, be happy. And it's, it's what I do. And so, like, I don't know. I just even describe it. It's kind of new to me to feel like I was so focused on like honestly like when I was in six I saw a great saxophonist named Kirk Whalem play for the first time and I was like I just saxophone or something and like tour the world and stuff and I and I did that three and then after that it was like oh shit like what do I do oh crap what now? and then I like I just was like well I gotta focus on the instruments I gotta know what makes me happy and that's the instruments and uh you know not using pro on uh wwl <laughs> thank you for that's that what makes me happy
makes me happy, you know? I, yeah. I, so I, yep. What are some of the places that both of you have trucked separately together? Oh, man. The world? Um, we recently just started kind of touring. Things kind of changed for us this past August of 2023 is when the Soviet kind of started making some noise uh, going viral. As it, and uh, so we just started touring. We just did our first Texas run together. I mean, you know, let's we're 30 year olds talking about virality on social media. It's pretty normal. Uh, but we did our first uh, Texas run. Uh, Dallas, I'm sorry, Fort uh, Austin, Houston. All those shows are really cool. We did the Midwest. We did uh, Chicago, Milwaukee, and Grand Rapids, Michigan. Those shows are incredible. Uh, we did Charlotte, Atlanta on a Wednesday night. And it was really, really cool. Um, an experience I'm sure both would never forget uh, as it pertains to some of the people in the crowd. It was fun. Uh, but now we're really starting to hit the road together. And, but separately, I mean, this man is media, right? Well, we're all over the world. And we're putting out a song every month. Every single And that's yes. going to actually increase us to be able to go out on the road. And you, maybe you can just make a lot of stations around the world. We are so looking forward to both of your success together. We appreciate the time to be with us today. And check them out 2 o'clock at the Jack Daniel stage. Max kicks out, baby. Thank you, Kyle. It's all on the Well TV app. Breaking news. We're following breaking news at our airship. Local weather. We are expecting an active weather day, so make certain that you are weather. Original stories. It's a story you'll only see on WWL TV. For investigations. Changes are happening after a WWL TV investigation. Latest from the field. We are live in Covington. And the dome. High drama day in the Superdome. Download the WWL. Welcome back to French Quarter Fetish Plaza. This is the WWL Love Louisiana tent, and we're so happy to be here. We were with Bon Bon Vivant, yeah. Abigail, Abigail, excuse me, Cosio, and Jeremy Kelly, of course, right. with us. Thank you so much for being here. Yeah. Because I know it's such a busy day. You play later this afternoon, Esplanade, yep. on that stage, which is an amazing stage. Kind of take through your day leading up to a big uh, festival performance because it's like a build up. It is. It's a lot of fun. Today was kind of fun because we got a chance to walk all the way across. We live just outside of Esplanade. Perfect. And so just walking through and everybody like sparking up and having fun. Yeah. And yeah. yeah. It's really great crowd out there today and the weather's awesome. I mean, the traffic getting here was incredible. I was like, oh, it's a pain for people trying to get around the city, but that means news. I think good. last year almost 900,000 people came out for the four days. This is 100% local talent. How important is that to you? That's a big deal for us, especially the local and the free. It's it's kind of really beautifully curated a lineup of bands that live and work in New Orleans yeah. and the French Quarter all around here. So I love that. And so many people come from out of town to see this homegrown town, and they remember, and then they kind of follow you guys around. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 We have a lot of who say, I, first time I saw you was at French Quarter Fest, and it's been years that we've been playing it, maybe 10 years. So that's that's awesome. I mean, you can't beat that. Yeah, wow. So, yeah, we started at the little stage by the boat, and kind of, you know, we ping pong around different stages every year. So. What's your favorite thing in 10 years? First of all, it's just been incredible to see the attendance, but what's your favorite part of this festival? Just, just... Uh, a lot of festivals change over time, and we go and play a lot of festivals and watch that happen. And I love that this festival is to stay kind of home. Yeah. And you know, it's like local indie bands that we play with on Friday night at BJ's or whatever yeah, are legends. here on the stages. Yeah. Next to Legends and, and the Hot Eight, and you know, all of these people are wow. Thomas. Yeah, it's, it's, awesome. it's a really good collection of music, New Orleans musicians. I think. And it's cool to see how many artists are in different bands. Wait, I just saw you on yeah. that stage. Now you're over here, and they're kind of bouncing around. So yeah. You can see all their elements. That's I, true. We, uh, we, we play a little bit with Charlie Halloran, the Tropicalis, or Tropicals, and looking at his schedule. Oh, yeah. Oh, he played in, like, bands, I think, over the next few <laughs> days. He, he's never going to put that trombone We're working, down. Yeah, which it's is amazing. good. He's working. When you, when you walk to and from stages, you see your friends on all the stages. Yeah. Very, very local in that way. Yeah. That's what I was gonna ask. Get along with most other bands. Oh musicians. yeah. Oh, we yeah. all kind of um, share players, and it's a really, uh, it's actually a very small community when you when you get down to it. Especially yeah. we're a Frenchman Street band. We played last night, and you know you know each other, and you see each other across the street at VA Spotted Cat. You think, oh hi guys. Nice. So yeah. Let's start beginning. If people haven't seen you play here for ten years, start with.
with how you got the name? Well, I, I knew the word bon vivant. It's French. It means to live well. It kind of uh, refers to a person who likes to enjoy a luxurious lifestyle. They like to drink and eat and dance and be merry. I thought for an ethos, that's a really good idea as a band. It's really just living well. And uh, we added the extra bon. It means time. So <laughs> double down. Perfect. Commitment. Yeah. <laughs> And actually married. How does that work out? Great. It's a wild time. It's a wild baby. time. We, we get, we got, we've gotten really good at spending lots of time in small places. Yeah. 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 Tell me about your other bandmates that are already out there getting the sound check and ready. So we got Deacon Marquin is an incredible drummer. He's going to be on the drum kit today. Uh, we call him our little Buddha. He's very, you know, quiet. Spoken, Unshakable. But yeah. Just like look to Bo look to Deacon to see what's going on. And we got Jason Jerzok on the sousaphone and electric bass. Okay. A lot of energy guy. He's Kid Kaboom. And on a trombone today, we have Ellis Cyber. Just a lovely tall drink of water. Great dude. <laughs> nice. <laughs> saxophonist. Yeah, yes. I, I play saxophone. And we're going to have a special guest, uh, at, uh, an MC called uh, Black Soul. That's coming to, up right. for a couple of weeks. We're really excited about yeah. Yeah. Any, Can you give us any more than that? or? kind of playing with them for years. At Negril, uh, he he steps up and does incredible off-the-cuff rhymes that are just I have to to stare at him while he does it because I gotta look cool, but <laughs> he's just being act like you've been there before, yeah. but you're really like oh my god. And I think I sat down and wrote, but he's just going off the cuff, and it's just an incredible art form to watch on stage. Yeah, we were playing we were playing with him a little. He was jamming with us a little bit last, and so we were like, we should come tomorrow. Yeah. We'll do the, do this again. So, See, I love so he's how that's here. That yeah. is so amazing. Yeah. And you, of course, write the songs. Yeah. But you yeah. kind of explain to me the process. Like you write it, but then you come together and put it all together. That's right. It's kind of like bare, bare bones. I sort of think of it like I put the bones together mm -hmm. of a skeleton, and then as a, we sort of put the skin and the hair and the whole, we build it up from there. As a, we're definitely a a little democracy of music. So it's yeah. So cool. Though. It's really fun because. Uh, Abby will come with an idea, uh, chords and lyrics and kind of a story, you know, something that she's wanted to explain. Yeah. And, you know, sometimes it comes out of the music as a ballad. Mm. And it's this beautiful ballad. And then we start to kind of play through it. It becomes an up-tempo dance song. Yeah. <laughs> but still, words and yeah. melodies are, are ballad-like. I don't know. It's really fun, it's fun to see how, what they end up to yeah, be. Yeah, I mean, that's collaboration. Is it, And you, I love to think I know what the song is and then give over to the band and watch it become an entirely different thing. Oh, so Sometimes you could probably get two songs out of it. Yeah. Though. You're like, yeah. this is what I really meant and this is what it turned their most beautiful. And we actually, over the years, we play some of these songs entirely different. Oh. Uh, we'll say, oh, tonight is this version or tonight's going to be this version of that song. So it's it's a, it's a really a, a joy. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I'm sure you get that feeling like, oh, this is going to be a big hit. Is it as you're feeling normally right? Hmm. I've been wrong. <laughs> no, that's Every like when time. somebody tries to predict the football game. I'm like, I know. Yeah, yeah. I mean, sometimes I, you know, I have to say, be my husband. He gets, he hears them all, and sometimes I'll be on the, you know, the living floor, and I'll say, hey, what about this one? And one time he did say, that is that incredible song, and then it is one of our headlines. You know, our, our hits. So you, baby. You got one you got time. There. <laughs> you and this is on tape, so that's fantastic. There we go. <laughs> yeah, it's funny. Sometimes um, we'll get in the studio, especially, attached to a song and really excited about it. And then, you know, once you record it and release it to the universe, you don't get a say on yeah. what people would like to hear and what people respond to. And it's fun, the ones that kind of fall off a little bit, and then unexpected songs that work for you really well and people yeah. want to hear them and they, I mean, like, man, I didn't see that one coming. I that with a fan that That's you right. have no idea, like, yeah. maybe they're going through that. Like, yeah. You have yeah. no idea, just really hits them. Yeah. yeah. Talk, talk to us about your genre, because we're getting great. French Quarter Festival. Presented by Chevron, it all takes place April 11th through 14th. Get the schedule at frenchquarterfest.org and download the free app today. From WWL, Louisiana.
I'm here with the legendary Irma Thomas. You're getting ready to perform tonight. We are having a beautiful day for this French Quarter Fest, aren't we? In my life, every day I wake up is a beautiful day. I love that outlook. <laughs> I love it. So tell me, what can people expect from your set tonight? What are we? What are you going to perform tonight? They're going to get Irma. They're going to get Irma. Yeah, okay. I don't. I don't work from a set list. My audience is my set list. Tell me about that. Are you speeding <laughs> off the energy? What do you mean? My audience is my set list. Okay. I come on stage, I sing a few songs, my audience yell out what they want to hear, and that's what I sing. Wow. So that's my set list. I feel like not too many people <laughs> can do that. You, I mean, you've been doing this a long time. I've been so doing just... it that way for years and years and years. Wow. Because I used to, I, I've never worked from a set list. Hmm. Because most of the time, my audience is a folk who've been around me for years, and they want to hear their favorite song. Since I can't read their mind, I sing what they want to hear. I love that. <laughs> we were talking a little bit about, uh, you know, Mother's Day. Things have changed a little bit since the pandemic. How have things changed for you in recent years? What, well, what we haven't done Mother's Day since the pandemic yeah. originally. And so other than that, I've gotten older and I've slowed down. Mm -hmm. I don't take as much work as I used to. And I just finished doing a gospel CD. And so yesterday I was in the studio till 8 o'clock last night. So, <laughs> wow. And we still have to do photo shoots and all that good stuff. So. And I just completed an album with Galactic, and it's going to be uh, Audience with the Queen is the name of the, the album. So, so two anyway. new albums we can expect from you soon? Huh? You said two new albums then that we can yeah, expect one, from you soon. Yeah, one, one gospel and one R&B. <laughs> wow. Because so I've covered, the, covered so the game. What was, why do both at once? Or what's, what's the answer? It, How do you do it, both it at just once? worked out that way because the people who involved were, are from Europe and they wanted to come while the French Quarter Festival was going on and, and be able to do two things. So mm -hmm. that's how it worked out. <laughs> so when are we gonna? When can we hear them? When when's the gospel well, album? Well, this one, out? the one that I finished last night, probably won't be out until somewhere this summer. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. You just performed at the Dew Drop In, the reopening of the I Dew did Drop the In. Can yes. you tell me about that? What that was like for you? Well, yeah, it was. It brought back a lot of memories. And I did a lot of the songs that I used to do when I worked the Dewdrop. Yeah. You, we're, we're talking 60 some years ago. <laughs> wow. What, what was that flashback like? It was fun. Yeah. It was fun. Are, are, are things, obviously the world is so much different, but are things at the Dewdrop in different? Are you glad to see it back? I think that they, they did a beautiful job remodeling it. And I think a lot of the younger people who will be playing there will appreciate what the Dewdrop was all about. Yeah. So hoping they bring a little bit of a younger crowd in and... Uh, well, yeah, because most, most of us old ones are gone. <laughs> so they're going to have to bring in a lot of the younger ones. But you're keeping that memory alive and, and you're going to perform I'm tonight. <laughs> I'm trying. Um, what, what is that like to appeal to the younger, the younger generation and see some new faces out in the crowd? It's fun. I, a lot of them have done their homework and they've, they've listened to some of my music and they yell out what they want to hear. And I'm honest enough with them to sit, tell them because I carry an iPad with all of my lyrics in it. And I'm, I'm smart enough and wise enough that if there's something I haven't done in a while, I let them know that I haven't done it in a while. And if it's in my cheat iPad, I'll look it up and sing it. <laughs> That's so <laughs> smart. That's so smart. I want to talk about French Quarter Fest because there are so many local acts here yeah. and new people on the scene. Yeah. What are you listening to right now or who are you hoping to see? I'm a game show network. <laughs> the game show number. <laughs> well, <laughs> I mean, but who at French Quarter Fest or any I, local artist? I don't have time to listen to anybody at French Quarter Fest because when no? I come out here, I'm on my way to go to work. Okay. And I and of course this interview with you guys, and of course by the time I get back, it'll be almost time for me to go on. So yes, <laughs> I don't get a chance to hear anybody. That's fair. Very fair. <laughs> All right, so you're gearing up to perform in just about 15 minutes yeah. here. My very um, first French Quarter Fest was played with Ronnie Cole. Wow. And what, when was that? Oh, a hundred years ago. <laughs> <laughs> they didn't even, at that time, there wasn't even a, a, a stage. We, we played from a platform, so. Yeah. Isn't that amazing how much it's grown oh, in that yeah, time? It has grown tremendously. Wow. Yes. Wonderful. All right, well, Miss Irma, thank you so much. It My was pleasure. wonderful speaking with you. My pleasure. And I, I, I know there's a lot of people very excited to watch you perform tonight, so we're going to let you go. Thank you. All right, thank you so much. Hi, I'm John Boutte, here with my friends Greg Rohan and Mia X. We're 
are getting ready for French Quarter Festival, which features over 300 musical performances on more than 20 stages. Chevron is proud to support the festival, a celebration of New Orleans music, culture, and cuisine. It all takes place April 11 through 14. Get a schedule at FrenchQuarterFest.org and download the free app today. Don't miss French Quarter Festival from WWF. Day two is the best day. We're at the WWL TV Love Louisiana stage at Spanish Plaza, which the French Quarter Fest has expanded to Spanish Plaza this year. It just keeps getting bigger and bigger. And I'm joined by People Museum. You guys, the first time you came on the morning show, we were like blown away. We weren't sure what to expect. And then it was like, they are so good. So first of all, introduce yourself and then we'll talk about how this came about. I'm Jeremy Phipps, and I play trombone for People Museum. <laughs> I'm Aaron Boudreaux. I'm playing drums and making my conducting debut oh, today. Oh, yeah. And I cannot believe this is your first year for French Quarter Fest. Yeah, excited. What took us so long to get you guys? That's a great question. I wish I knew the answer. <laughs> yeah. Who knows how the industry works sometimes, you know, but we're, but we're here. So, yeah. And it's you guys are going to be playing right behind us at the Jack Daniels stage coming up at 3.30. Cannot wait for that. You guys are so unique. You're so electro pop, and I had never even heard of that, but it just stops you in your tracks. Like, that is so cool. There's no bands like that around here, probably not a ton in the world. So, how did you guys even get into this? Um, I think that we just, I, we kind of like all collectively love pop music, and then we're just from Louisiana. So, like, okay. the things that we have access to are like tubas and trombones and like just like all, all types of influences so okay. that's that's what i think yeah and i mean there is definitely like a community in this city that makes this type of music for sure but um i think just the addition of the horns and like you know yeah. th especially when charles entered with the tuba and all this stuff i think that that's sort of what solidified our identity in that sort of electro pop with horns jeremy calls it future new orleans okay that's his that. like you know his coins <laughs> term which I, I love i think it's perfect so yep. how did you guys all get together though and how do you i always want to know like where did the name come from oh they, i i i came up with the name okay no no okay. big deal <laughs> <laughs> no um once i was in i was living in la for like a year okay and then out there they have the vmas mm -hmm. and at the vmas um a bunch of people stand outside the like the big stadium window and watch the stars like go from their dressing rooms and it's like a thing out there that I like I never seen before but I, I made a joke to a friend of mine I was like it's like a people museum because you're like <laughs> behind this glass or whatever and yeah. um, I don't know I just, just I thought stuck. it was funny yeah and I was like oh that could be a band name at some point but then like years later we um, we started the band I love it yeah and do you guys are you best of friends are you kind of like brothers where it's like all right dude i just need the day yeah i, I hate these to... guys it's the worst <laughs> they're the worst no we're, we're we're pretty tight yeah for sure you know everybody is cool i i look up to everybody in the band oh, i feel so like nice. i learn from them yeah you know constantly it just it, it keeps it keeps us all just engaged and it keeps me young as the elder of the band. <laughs> the elder. Charles you is look, the elder from Boutique. Oh Charles God. is ageless. Let everybody he know. Is, Charles yeah. has no age. That is true. He's, he's 80 he's, and 14 at the same time. For sure. Yeah. <laughs> oh, so you're an old soul, but you're also fun. And I love your glasses, too. I love the blue. Mm. Just pop. He's got the style. you got to tell me about the mustache, too. What is there to so say? Because it's so impressive. I, I mean, look. No, I'm asking, like, is it like a playoff mustache, or this is all the time? Uh, oh, my gosh. Yeah. Okay, let it, <laughs> let it be playoffs, known. Baby. <laughs> let it be known. This is I come from a long lineage of proud Cajun and Mexican men. Okay. This is genetics. This is not this is not a costume. <laughs> this is my a part of my identity. It's a way of life. I so. love it. I love it. And talk a little bit about Claire, who's not here right now because she's getting ready for y'all's performances pretty soon. Oh, yeah, Claire is the singer, so she writes all the lyrics and she also helps produce and she is an amazing singer, amazing person, and she's from Monroe, Louisiana. Ups. Yeah, we're all from <laughs> Louisiana in some way. I'm from New Orleans, Boutte, yeah. Laffey, respective, respectively. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, yeah. yeah, so yeah. And um, you and Claire actually got together originally. You were writing together, and then the whole group kind of came about. Yeah, um, okay. it, it started off with me and Claire. It was like in the Tremay neighborhood. We, uh, I met through a, like a friend of mine, 
and like yeah we just started writing songs the same day that okay. we met um and then we started the project like immediately and so like we kind of like grown as friends awesome. as as doing it and then yeah and all of us have grown as friends like doing this really um, and at what point i mean you guys are such a big deal now like when did that happen because we'll have people on the show um and it's like oh my god we just blew up last night like yeah. what was that moment for y'all that people ri- you were like oh people know who we are now you know i, I don't i mean it, it would be really nice to say that there was like this thing that happened but I don't know, it's just being a part of a scene, being a part of community and yeah. playing shows with other bands and sure. kind of sticking to what you do and growing. And, and I mean, Jeremy and Claire had other iterations of this band before we were in it. So there was a lot of morphing and I don't know, it'd be cool if there was like one singular like, oh, we were in a Amazon commercial, yeah. but I don't know, we're just, we're still growing. And, and um, if you stick with something that you believe is is great and you stay true to your the heart, the then, then it's gonna, Eventually, people will take notice of that, and, and we, we're lucky to have a good crowd of people who support us. So, yeah. Of course, we're at the French Quarter Fest, but what was it like last year getting that call to play Jazz Fest for the first time? Oh, that was amazing, because yeah. Jazz Fest Incredible. is like, I've been watching Jazz Fest my whole life, so it, it was a bucket list thing for me, personally. Awesome. Um, yeah, it was cool, because we also were on a little kind of northeast and the west coast tour and jazz okay. fest fell right in the middle nice. so we was been like gone. <laughs> yeah we've been gone for weeks and we came home played jazz fest and then took off again the next day wow and you guys are going to start touring again late summer tell me a little bit more about relic i know this is something you took your time on you had been working on it since after hurricane ida was that sort of the whole inspiration behind it or it was just like the timing you had some downtime yeah i would say that was definitely a part of um a, a part of the inspiration because the whole album the theme of it is like flood and like rebuilding and re- rejuvenating um, and yeah so I would say yeah, yeah I mean re- yeah th- that that whole time of being like split up and sort of I mean ev- everybody went through it you know it was crazy um, that was definitely a big inspiration Claire always says it's kind of a love letter to New Orleans and we always we always talk about New Orleans as being this place that we like love so much but it's like it's challenging. It's it's like an uncle that you have that's like you love him, you know, but but he shows up to some of the functions. Maybe maybe it's a little chaotic, you know, but okay. but you can't help but love, you know. That's the relationship people tend to have in South Louisiana where they're from because of the weather and um, but yeah. So that was Ida was the big start of, of that whole process and then coming back together and finishing it was really fun. And so, you yeah. told me that's the fun part actually writing. I mean, yeah, for making music and performing music is I know that probably sounds obvious, I don't know, to people who are musicians, but well, we know there's so much behind the scenes and yeah. it's gotta be so hard to like turn it on every night. Because you know everybody's got a bad day, but you can't have a bad day. Like this might be the only time this fan comes to your concert, so you have to give it hundred and ten percent every time. Yeah, thank you for wrong. saying that. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it must be like physically exhausting, but also mentally exhausting. And you guys do such a good job, though. Yeah. Thank you. H- tell me, like, give me the lowdown. Like, who's the class clown? Who's the person who's gonna show up after? Aaron's the, the first class clown. Okay. Who's be there it is oh, not. Oh, that yes. Oh, oh wait, you got it. You already. Got oh it. my God, you you just figured us all out so fast. You did your research. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, Claire will be. We'll, we will beat the sound engineer at to the venue. Loading in it. itself, which, by the way, itself. is way better than being late. So we, that <laughs> sure. is not that is not a flaw. That's a feature, and we love it, and it's it's great. It's all about time. But Claire's oh, always right. punctual. I guess I'm a bit of a clown. Charles is the goblin. Charles will just start. We call him. He has goblin energy. When he's in the van on tour, we'll just get on some crazy discussions. And yeah. He, he's that's the, he's so awesome the energy. You guys all the time. You know what I mean? We do. I really yeah. feel like the genuine care and the yeah. um, And I did want to mention your. You do some about like um, on your album, the voice of your father. What is that? Explain that to me. Oh yeah, so it w- that was that was Claire's idea. Um, okay. But I just recorded my dad talking. I asked him, and she had a list of questions I asked him, and um, yeah, and it was just like. It, it was funny because like my my dad we we don't the things that she asked it was stuff that I had never even asked him so it was why she why he was explaining to him, I was like wow I've never heard you talk about that so it was it was a very interesting like beautiful experience for me as well 
um, I felt like closer to my dad in some ways. But then, um, yeah, we we chopped that conversation up, and yeah, and we put it on. And he's also like a really big People Museum supporter. Oh, um, he, he comments on all the uh, <laughs> social media and posts. So yeah. he loved it just as much as you did. Yeah. I, he, well, he. At, well, and I do think we have a reporter position open if Claire's interested. Oh, you know, she could do oh. both. Yeah, I mean, okay. she sounds like she really pulled it out of it. Oh, yeah. I mean, That's yeah, the magic yeah. of Claire, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> There's a funny story, though, about Jeremy's so dad with here. the... With Oh yeah, no. So I, it, I was like, I'm not gonna tell them until we release the album. And then we released it. And then I was like, Dad, you heard of, you heard the album? And he was like, Oh yeah, I heard it. And I was like, Did you notice anything? Like, <laughs> and I was just like, He was like, Wait, what? It was like, That's you talking. And he was like, That's me. And, and like, <laughs> he probably like he never heard his voice. Okay. Yeah, he never heard like oh, he, he hasn't heard no any clue. like recordings of his voice. So he didn't even know it was him. <laughs> and then so he was like, Oh, I gotta go listen again. And then you know he was like bragging to his. Um, to his friends and stuff like you know he's like on the album oh, but yeah awesome. it was funny <laughs> i did not expect that out of we, all the we were on tour at a mexican restaurant in the middle of like tennessee or something <laughs> and jeremy's on the phone he was like y'all never believe this my dad did not know that was him he was listening to that's so funny you remember exactly where you were at yeah these are those moments when you guys are in the hall of fame you're gonna be like remember that time yeah. <laughs> behind the music baby yeah there we go speaking of which like where do you see you've grown just so fast where do you see you guys in a year and 10 years? Ooh, that's such a good question. Actually, it was two. I, I have an answer. <laughs> so let's say next year this time, uh -huh. we'll still be, we'll do Prince Porter Fest, we'll do Jazz Fest, but maybe we all do Bonnaroo, Coachella. Oh, hey. You know, maybe we pop over to Europe, do a couple of those festivals. Okay. You know, we'll have a couple pockets like in LA where we can kind of fill some big rooms in New York. You know, handpick some cities and grow Sure. Grow some community. Because it's such a, you, you guys are so talented and it's so unique. I think that would definitely, you need to hire somebody full time to be doing that for y'all. Oh, we, yeah, we have a great team. We do have a great team okay. of people okay. working with us that, yeah, <laughs> definitely with UTA and, and um, our whole crew is really great. Yeah. Um, but yeah, Los Angeles, those cities, we, we've kind of like built up some, some audiences outside of Louisiana and we're going to try to just like, you know, cater to those cities, the people who, who've showed up on tour and, and awesome. do that. And yeah, Europe would be great. I mean, we've always wanted to you know, our take the show over the pond. Former co-anchor, she was in LA. I'm sure she would have you guys on the morning oh, show. Yeah. Come on. Yeah, we need to set Come that on. up. We need to yeah. set that up, up. Sheba. We need you always coming back. Of course. That's one thing about this festival, French Quarter Press, over 300 performances, 1,800 different artists, all local, 100%. That's insane. That's so awesome that they make it a priority to do that. Yeah, yeah that's awesome. I agree. You know? Yeah, that's incredible. Yeah, um, yeah, it's so unique to New Orleans. I mean, we have so yeah. much talent here. It's like I know. insane. Sometimes when you think about it, it's like, man, it is like. But there's so many different venues. Yeah. I mean, we should have that much talent. There's so many awesome places to play yeah. here. Yeah. Yeah. What do you want people to know coming out 3.30 this afternoon? Um, Which is pretty quick. Oh, Thank yeah. you guys so much for your time. Oh. Go, yeah. I want you to know that we all had coffee. We <laughs> all ate. We are ready to We're ready. give you a show. Yes. 1,000%. Awesome. <laughs> yeah. You're at home watching this. You, you got time. You yeah. can make you it out. You definitely have plenty of time. Yep. I think we have, we played outdoors since last year's Jazz Fest. Oh yeah, no, it's been a while. Oh, wait, yeah. I'm so been sorry I didn't bit. think to ask you about the challenges of the venue. Oh no. <laughs> <laughs> it's such a beautiful day. It's it like is a gorgeous pretty much day. indoors. And people yeah. can hear the music from afar and come up and sure. discover, you know. That's I know you're going to be fun. pulling people from the French Quarter. Yeah, everybody coming over here to Spanish Plaza. Just so you know, it has expanded to Spanish Plaza this year. Jack Daniels stage, it's an amazing, amazing stage. Thank you guys so much for your time. Yeah, People's you. Museum, they are fantastic. If you don't know anything about them, crawl out of that hole you're living in and definitely yeah. stream their music because they are amazing. Louisiana, what can you say? There's no way like it. Brimming with history, overflowing with culture, a melting pot of beautiful people. Some generations deep, others still getting used to the humidity. It's waterways bustling with industry. It's streets alive with artistic expression. The food? Oh, the food. But what makes Louisiana great is its people. It's wonderful people. Still standing, still persevering, still fighting. Because here's the thing. We got problems too, and we own up to them. We're not scared of tough issues. We don't back down from tough questions, and we aren't going to run away when things get hard. Sure, we got problems, but WWL, that's why we're here.
We uncover lies and find the truth, expose injustice, and get people what they deserve, keep people informed, and keep them safe. We dig deep, find solutions, solve problems, and get stuff done. We tell stories and start conversations. We celebrate the good and try to fix the bad. We support local businesses and help them thrive. We work hard, do good, and have fun doing it. From Laplace to St. Bernard, Homa to Covington, Metairie to New Orleans, WWL-TV is now WWL Louisiana. We love Louisiana and fight for it. To say it's the first year, Lu Fu Indian will be a food vendor at French Quarter Fest. Being there is a really big loss. They're coming out the gate swinging. This is going to be the Kima role, is Indian Chinese influence to our cuisine. This is something we are doing ours, which is not in our regular menu. This is our Kima Samosa. It's this goat, this is what gave us our trademark, the butter chicken. We have fed a lot of people around the city, so I think this is going to be a different experience, but we are definitely strong. We are definitely ready for this, yeah. It's, it's insane. It's the fourth at the festival for Southern, so they already know what to expect. We literally have a line the entire time we're open, and that's the award-winning chicken. That chicken sandwich is top of mind for many, but they're bringing the crowd favorite too. And that is our fish sandwich. We slice these cubers ourselves, marinate them, everything made from scratch. More than enough pies for anybody who wants to enjoy family's century old recipe. Seasoned French Quarter Fest veterans, Miss Eats Meat Pies will be back again for the 40th year in a row. They'll have some festival exclusives too. Crab and artichoke, and then the shrimp and I do is kind of like a Cajun gumbo. Food is at the heart of everything they do, but it's the people that keep going. Seeing my fam, uh, fast family and friends that I have relationships with. It's kind of like a reunion every time we do this. To meet more new, you know, that is the most biggest excitement for me. Leah McNeil, WL, Louisiana. And speaking of food, one of my favorites, one of my favorites, Robert Harrison is joining me. Yes, and I'm does. saying he's my favorite. Malik knows why I'm saying he's my favorite, right? Yes, he does. He does. It's so awesome to be out here with you today. You, you know what? If you don't know Robert, you need to get to know him. He is of Loretta's Authentic Pralines. And let me tell you, Miss Loretta, thank you, um, you know, thinking of her, obviously. And you've now taken the helm and you're moving this forward. Yes. I have to say, you have some of the most unique pralines in the city of New Orleans and the unique beignets, by the way. Yes, we have our crab beignet. We have our famous Pauline beignet. And this was all a, a legacy. My mom, we wanted to continue it. And she took two things that were so New Orleans right. and she mashed them together. You have the Pauline filling, Pauline ice, and then we have the nerve to do powdered sugar on top. Oh, yes. It's yeah. so amazing. Look, you know, one of my favorite things is sweet potato cookies. Oh, yes. Yes. And we have that out here. We also have our shoe sole, our Pauline cookie, and our original Pauline. I would tell you this. Now that you guys are moving forward, I know that you're very busy, staying really yes. busy. Any major changes that are happening right now? Something new you introduced to the menu that we'll see at French Quarter Fest? So we also have our Pauline shoe sole, which is a flat pastry made of cinnamon sugar, a little bit of pecans and cinnamon on it. We also bought out our world famous, pictured here, Ooh. stuffed crab meat beignet. Okay. And we do that with lump jumbo crab meat, a uh -huh. little bit of awesome sauce. Okay. And we just throw the holy trinity in there. It's just you know so what? awesome. You make sure you stop by and you get you some, Robert. Thank you so much thank for you. joining us and taking a picture over at the WWL yes, Love Louisiana yes, yes. State. Tell everybody to come on out. Oh, please come on out. First quarter <laughs> fest 2024. The all right. It's all on the WWL TV app. Breaking news. We're following breaking news out of Jefferson Parish. Local weather. We are expecting an active weather day, so make certain that you are weather aware. Original stories. It's a story you'll only see on WWL TV. Impactful investigations. Changes are happening after a WWL TV investigation. The latest from the field. We are live in Covington. With and the Dome. And it was a high drama day in the Superdome. Download the WWL TV app.
All right, thank you very much, Brandon. And yeah, we did. And, and uh, you know, we're thinking about the folks in, in Slidell, mm -hmm. but we're also here ready to start off one of the biggest free fests in the country, French Quarter Fest. Emily Madero, the, the, the CEO of, of uh, French Quarter Fest. Uh, you must have had some tense moments yesterday. We sure did. We were just really grateful that it was the day before the festival opened. We were able to anticipate, make arrangements to batten down the hatches, make all the stages safe. Did you have any damage or anything? You know, we had some minor damage just because the amount of water that the sites took in, but we had done a lot of preparation and we were most concerned about personal safety and yeah. crew members and staff members being out here. So um, we just pivoted everything a little bit later in the day and, and we're really grateful that we were able to load in on time. Time. Speaking yeah. of those crew, crew members, definitely had to put in some overtime, and I know that sort of shifted when they were setting up. It pushed it back. Also, you had some earlier setups. So for them, I'm sure they were putting in a lot of hours. Oh, yes. There's been a lot of moving chess pieces behind the scenes. Late night, early morning. Our food vendors have, have done a lot of work late night and early morning. You know, same with all of the vendors that we have here on site, whether it's sound equipment, stages, putting signs up. So we're doing everything we can to welcome everybody at 11 o'clock when the music starts. And where we are here on the riverfront of Spanish Plaza, this is all new this year. This is something you're adding for the first time. Uh, at French Quarter Fest. I mean, we're thrilled. It's such a beautiful site. As you can see, it's a gorgeous site right on the riverfront. We've got, you know, the fountain behind us. I think this is going to be one of the most energized, activated sites that we have at French Quarter Festival. And the lineup at the French, at the Jack Daniel stage is just incredible Which is, this year. Yeah, to our left over by the river walk, to, uh, to our right, rather. I don't know why I left for my right. <laughs> uh, and then to the left of us is going to be the new food stage, which is really something new and, and kind of neat. Yeah, we have two new stages this year. So we're expanding musical genres. For the first time, we're bringing uh, DJ talent. So New Orleans has such a wealth of talent here and diversity of talent. So you can go to the PosiGen DJ stage right over here in front of the aquarium. And then on the other side of the aquarium, for the first time, we're showcasing our culinary talent. So Love Chef that. Kevin Belton will be interviewing. I've our heard of him. Vendor. Yeah. <laughs> I know you that should, guy. You should know Kevin. <laughs> He's That's a nice awesome. guy. It's going to be be great. I mean, the food talent here is part of the reason why people love this festival so much. It's everything from street food to fine dining, and you can go and you can learn about the chefs, their culinary journey, the recipes, and all the dishes that you can try here at the festival. Yeah, we're looking forward to that. Even more food this year than last. I know. Always more food. Always a good thing. Calories don't count great. at festival. Absolutely. You get your steps in. <laughs> there you go. I know. And, you know, when we're talking about the schedule, everything stands so people can still come out and enjoy everything just as it is. Um, you know, what do you think? You've been doing this so long. You said since 2017, the festival has a long history. What do you think is the thing that makes the French Quarter Fest so special? I mean, I I think it has really organically evolved quite literally from the streets of New Orleans. It's a big block party. It's a family reunion. It's very authentically New Orleans. It mm -hmm. features only Louisiana talent. You can take so many festivals in major cities and put them anywhere in the United States, but the only way that you're going to experience French Quarter Festival is right here in New Orleans. And for the city, it brings in a lot of tourists, a lot sure. of locals. Mm -hmm. A lot of locals sometimes don't get to come to the quarter that much or you know, because sometimes, you know, it's kind of hard to, to, to park and things like that. But I think everybody changes their attitude for French Quarter Fest. It's just, like I said, it's a really joyous family reunion. You're going to see friends that you haven't seen forever. You know, it's kind of like Mardi Gras. There's so many different ways that you can experience it, whether you like being out here on the riverfront, you like the funk bands, or you can find really quiet, intimate moments with traditional jazz. You know, we're for the first time we're producing at the BK House. It's a beautiful historical property. You can sit in the garden and enjoy some incredible music. And great for New great, Orleans, yeah. a great economic impact. Emily, yeah. thank you very much. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. And speaking of some of the great music that we have, we have some of the students that we are introducing you this morning from Loyola. They're going to be performing on Friday. Let's get to on the Loyola stage. On the Loyola stage, so it's easy to remember. Let's get to the kissing disease. Take it away. Hi, I'm John Butte here with my friends Bro from Chevron and Mia X. We're getting ready for French Quarter Festival, which features over 300 musical performances on more than 20 stages. Chevron is proud to support the festival, a celebration of New Orleans music, culture, and cuisine. It all takes place April 11 through 14. Get the schedule at FrenchQuarterFest.org and download the free app to me. Don't miss French Quarter Festival from WWL. Louisiana, 
What can you say? There's nowhere else like it. Brimming with, flowing with culture, a melting pot of beautiful people. Some is deep, others still getting used to the humidity. It's what industry, it's streets alive with artistic expression, and the food, all oh, the food. But what makes Louisiana great is it's, it's wonderful people. Still standing, still persevering, still fighting. Because here's the thing, we got problems, and we own up to them. We're not scared of tough issues. We don't back from tough questions, and we aren't going to run.